Oof. All right. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Loading the Discord real quick. What's good, family? How's everyone doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. What's good, Puck? What's good, God's child? What's good? What's good? Uh, Queen Lily, what's good? Ah, I'm blessed I'm not complaining. I'm blessed I'm not complaining. Hello, L. hello. Samika, hello, hello, everybody. Um, I'm blessed I'm not complaining, family. Got a good one for us today. Good morning, good evening, Jay, good evening. Uh, we got a good one for us today. I've been, I've been finishing this up all day. I ain't gonna lie, I'm teaching today. I ain't preaching today. Is that okay? I'm teaching today. I ain't preaching. I've been um <laughs> I've been I've been working on this all day. All day. Literally. Literally. So, like I said, like I said, um it's we are we are going to be preaching today. Preaching today. Preaching today. I mean, no, 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 teaching today, teaching today, teaching today, <laughs> sorry, we're going to be, we're going to be teaching today, um, I believe that this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, this is a study that I've been wanting to do for a long time, that God has been preparing, preparing my heart for it for a long time, I really just didn't know how I was going to go about it, didn't know how I was going to structure it, I'm out still studying up a little bit, and, um, and like I said, studying up a little bit, but we're here. Without, uh, without further ado, we are here today. And I truly believe that today's message is very important. Very important because remember, I was telling you how God been t calling me to go back to the garden. God been calling me and uh, telling me to go back to the garden. So today's message is uh, we're going back into the garden, understanding a lot in the garden. And um, we're going to be touching about touching on a whole bunch today. But it all is going to tie in in the end. It's all going to tie in in the end. Hold on. Let me plug my phone and it's going to pause real quick. Oh, come on. There we go. So, yeah, uh, we're going to be touching a lot today. Uh, we're going to be touching a lot today when it comes to about the things in the garden. And I truly believe that today is going to be... There was a word that I was going to say what today is going to be enlightening, enlightening. That is the word, enlightening. Today's message is going to be enlightening. That's the word. That's the word I got for what the message is going to be today and what to expect. So make sure you guys like the live. Like the live. Let's get this live to 2,000 follow, uh, 2,000 likes. Let's get the live to 2,000 likes. Um, we're going to get started in about two to three minutes because I ain't going to lie, bro. <laughs> I ain't going to lie, bro. I got 10 pages. I got 10 pages worth of notes, and that's a lot. I got 10 pages worth of notes. I got 10 pages worth of information. I got 10 pages, so I may just, like, in the end, I may just, I may just have to send the notes into into the discord i may just have to give you guys a note but um i want you guys to take notes right i, I do want you guys um I, I do want you guys to take note of what sticks out to you guys and like i said i will i will if i need if need be i will uh drop the notes in the document inside the discord if need be if need me so welcome 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 everybody 89 hours worth of teaching um, I think I can get it done, though. I ain't gonna lie. I think we can get it done if we start in the next two minutes. If we start in the next two minutes, I think we can get it done. Like I said, um, this 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 is a very important conversation to have. This is a very um, this is a very important uh, message to hear tonight. And I truly believe it is going to be enlightening to our understanding. Um, 
because uh, sin is a big problem that we face today in today's church. And um, yeah, what verses is it? You're just going to have to wait and see. Wait and see. You're getting a little excited there, buddy. What's the topic? When sin comes in. When sin comes in is the topic. When sin comes in. When sin comes in is the topic of today's is today's message and today's, like I said, live. I will be teaching today. So when sin comes in. So we got about one more minute. One more minute. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Today is day 54. 54. Okay, today is day 54. And um, of the live -a man, we made it 54 days of consistency. I truly believe that consistency is probably one of the greatest things that you're going to have to understand about your walk. Uh, one of the most important things you're going to have to understand with your walk, because if you can't be consistent um, in showing up for yourself, you're not going to be consistent in showing up for God. So you, we, ha we have to learn to be consistent. We have to learn to, to show up. To show up when God shows up, right? And um, that's what we have been practicing habitually every single day here. Coming here at 6.30 or whatever time it is for you. We have been showing up every day. We have been working on our consistency. And believe it or not, you showing up here every single day is going to help you be consistent in er other areas of your life. So if we can show up and be consistent for God every single day, if we can show up and be consistent for God, man, we can be consistent for the gym. We can be consistent for work. We can be consistent for our health. We can be consistent for our spiritual health. Like we can be consistent in every single area. So uh, like I said, consistency is something that we have to work on as a body of Christ. And if you have been showing up here every single day at the same time, man, subconsciously and habitually, you have been working on your consistency, um, whether you believe it or not. So, you know, that's the beauty of doing things. That's the beauty of doing things. But without further ado, bro, we got to get this going because I got a lot. I got a lot for us today. <laughs> I got a lot for us today. I ain't, I ain't preaching today. I'm teaching today. That's what we're doing. So um, that's what we're doing. I'm going to pray us in here. We're going to get this show on the road and we're going we gonna to go. So Father, uh, let us pray. So Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we just thank you for the preparation of this message, Father. We thank you for the depth of this message that you have given us, Father. I just ask that this message enlightens everybody's understanding who is under the sound of my voice today and for everyone that shows up, Father. More of you and less of me today as we deliver this message, Lord. Uh, protect this life. I plead the blood of Jesus over this life, Father. <coughs> plead the blood of Jesus over this life, Father. And I just ask for your hedge of protection to be in charge, your angels to be in charge, your hedge of protection to protect this life and everybody under the sound of my voice, Father, where no hexes or no vexes or no witchcraft or sorcery can come against um come against or come upon anybody under the sound of my voice, Father. And we just thank you for ultimately just covering us with your blood, Lord, and keeping us protected, Father. Like I said, more of you and less of me as I deliver this message, Father. And I just thank you for giving me this and putting this upon my heart to deliver to your people, Father, because these are your people. Prepare, prepare their hearts, Father, uh, to receive this word, Lord, and stretch their understanding today, Father, as we go de into the depth of your word. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. So look, okay, the title of today's message, the title of today's message is when sin comes in, when sin comes in. Like I said in the beginning, family, today I'm not going to be preaching. I am going to be teaching. So I need you guys to get your notepads and your pencils out right now. This second, I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now that you got your notepads and pencils ready to go, I need you guys to um, write at the top of that. When sin comes in, okay, we're about to be breaking this down. We are about to be breaking this down uh, from the beginning, okay? And the first thing that I want to address is God's greatest problem, okay? The first thing I want to address is God's greatest problem. And in the lives of many people today, there is a constant fight, a constant war, and a constant struggle that is taking place in the lives of many believers or unbelievers today, right? Whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, there's a war. Whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, there's a fight. We are all fighting, right? So believe it or not, this fight is God's greatest problem. It's God's greatest problem. It's the one thing that he sees that his children is dealing with, right? And God's greatest problem is summed up into one little word. 
one little word, and that little word is called sin, okay? God's greatest problem is sin. And if you pay attention to what is going on, what is going on in the world around us today, if you pay attention, you can see that there is more hell on earth than heaven on earth. And one thing I need you to understand is that is a problem to God, a, a big problem, because it's never been his intention for it to be that way. And if there is more hell on earth than heaven on earth, that means somebody is not doing a job that somebody is talking about us. That means the church ain't doing its job, okay? So it's very important for us to understand that there is more hell on earth than heaven on earth today, okay? And what this has done is put heaven in an in a emergency state, an emergency state. The sirens is going off in heaven saying, problem, problem. Earth ain't what it's looking, earth is not what it's supposed to look like right now. Earth is not what it's supposed to look like right now, and the children of God need to wake up. The children of God need to stand up. The children of God need to step into their position because they have fell far away from God's original idea. They have fell far away from what being a ruler, what being a king, a servant king, a royal priesthood is supposed to look like on earth. Okay, so now <clears throat> heaven is in an emergency state because sin has invaded the human race and the moral universe. And I believe that it's time for believers to stand up and rise against this problem. Because if us believers do not lock arms and rise up together to fight against this problem, what's, ain't nothing gonna happen. Ain't nothing gonna happen, right? But one thing we have to understand that in order for us to rise up against this problem, in order for us to stand up against this problem, we must first understand the problem, right? We must first get the knowledge about the problem. We must first get the wisdom about the problem. We must understand what we up against. You can't go up into any fight not knowing who you up against. You can't go into any fight not knowing your enemy, right? So it's very important for us to understand the enemy that we are up against and then what we are dealing with in our constant fight because the enemy and what we are dealing with is working hand in hand to destroy you. And this is the reality that we are all facing every single day. Every single day. Like I give you guys this picture every single day. You got ding, ding, ding. You went spirit in this corner. Ding, ding, ding. Flesh in this corner. And you have this constant fight and you're having to choose between the spirit and between the flesh. And most people, they flesh wins that day. Some instances, your spirit wins that day, right? It just depends on the day, honestly. It really just depends on the day. Uh, it really depends on the day. But honestly, our spirit should always be winning. Our spirit should always be winning, which is why we have to, which is why we need to understand certain things that we are going to understand today. Now, if we do not understand sin, it will ultimately lead to the decay of your relationship with God. Okay, if you do not understand sin, it would ultimately lead to the decay of your relationship with God. Sin has been the reason why the church is not fruitful. Sin has been the reason why the people in the church are not effective in their life. Now, we are talking about effectiveness. Okay, family, we're not talking about you just believing in God. Right, because there's a difference between a belief of God, a believing in God and actually being effective. All right. There's a there's a difference between you believing in God and you actually bearing fruits in your walk with God. There's a big difference. All right. So don't just the Bible says faith without works is dead. Many people have faith, which is a belief. You have a belief, but there ain't no there ain't no working. There ain't no effectiveness. All right. And that's a huge problem to God, because if you are not effective, that means there's a there's, you are perishing for the lack of knowledge. That means that there is something that you don't understand because it is your lack of knowledge that is leading you to the point of where you are at right now. OK, so one thing that we have to understand that sin is a bigger problem than Satan. Sin is a bigger problem than Satan. Most people ain't even dealing with Satan. You really just dealing with your sin. You really just dealing with yourself. And you truly just don't understand. Because Satan truly has no power over you unless you give in to the power of, uh, if, unless you give in to sin. Unless you give in. Okay? Greater is he that is in you than anything that is in this world, than the sin that is in this world, than the devil that's in this world. So if you give power to your sin, you give power to the enemy. 
Okay, so it's very important for us to understand that sin is the reason why most people is not effective in their walk with God. Now, sin is the root to all of your problems that you are facing in life. Okay, sin is the root. And if you don't get to the root, you will never, you, if you don't get to the root, sin will continuously, to, uh, sin will have a continuous grow effect in your life. It will continuously grow if you don't up, if you don't pluck out the root, if you don't take it from the root, because you can, you can, you can, you can take off the leaves. You can start taking off the fruit. But here's the thing. If you don't pluck it from the root, the leaves and the fruit will continue to keep on growing in your life. So you have to unpluck it from your life in order and unpluck it at the root in order for it you to actually see true change for real for you to actually see true change you have to unpluck the root of sin from your life okay now where sin is there is disconnect all right where sin is there is disconnect and many people today in the body of christ are disconnected from their purpose their identity, their calling, and their heavenly assignment on earth. And that is a problem. That is a problem. If you are disconnected, if you are disconnected from your calling, your identity, your purpose, and your heavenly assignment, then you're not going to know what you're supposed to do here on this earth. Which is why the body of Christ today is not effective. Okay? It's not effective. So... If we do not take care of our sin problem, you will never step into the fullness of who you are. If you do not take care of the sin problem, you will never step into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is very important for you to understand. Because if you can't experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit, then you will never truly be fruitful the way God intends you to be fruitful. Very important for you to understand because it takes the fullness of the Holy Spirit dwelling in you for you to understand your purpose, your identity, your calling and everything that God intended for you to be. All right. Very important for you guys to understand. Like I said, I'm not preaching today. I am teaching today because it's very important for you guys to understand what we are talking about. When sin comes in, you are disconnected from everything from God, everything from God completely. All right. So Romans chapter five, write these down, please. Someone put this in the chat for us as I'm going through this, because I'm about to be moving at a pace that I'm going to need you guys to help out. So Romans chapter five, verse number 12, Romans chapter five, verse 12 says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all sinned. Now, the Bible says that sin entered through man. And when sin entered, death entered. Okay? When sin entered, when sin entered, death entered. And now this idea was, or this problem, I should say, was introduced to man. Now, when sin came in, it brought upon death to all of mankind, meaning there is no innocent man. There is no innocent man because sin, <laughs> we're going we gonna to talk about this later too. We're going to talk about this later as well. But there is no in innocent man because we all fall short from the glory of God because of what took place in the garden. Right? I'm going to break that down. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to break all of this down as we begin to break this down. Okay, let me just get through this intro and then get into the teaching. Now, if, if, okay, no, hold on. I truly believe, I truly believe that we must study exactly what took place in the garden in order for us to understand this life that we are currently living right now. Okay, I truly believe that we must understand God's original idea of what he intended for us in the garden in, or, in order for us to understand how to live this life right now. We must understand God's original idea of the garden and before the fall to understand our purpose in life. If we want to understand how to defeat sin and escape death, 
I truly believe that the answer is found back in the garden before sin came in. If sin entered through man, then we must go back to the entry point when sin came in. So let's go back to the Garden of Eden, okay? Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Now, if you have subtitles to your notes, if you have subtitles to your notes, I got this all subtitled up. So the next subtitle we have is Before Sin Entered the World. Before Sin Entered the World, okay? Now, before sin entered the world... It's very important for us to understand that God had an intention on what was supposed to take place here on this earth. Okay, <laughs> very important for us to understand. If you don't understand God's intention and God's idea and God's purpose of why he put us here, bro, I promise you, that every, it's not going to make sense. This is why a lot of people are not fruitful today in the church, because they don't understand the garden. If you don't understand the garden where God's original idea, concepts, and precepts were given to us, if you don't understand that, you're not going to understand the purpose of Jesus. You're not going to understand the fullness of what God has called you to step into, which is why we have to go back and study the garden. Now, God had a plan. He had an, and an objective. And he had a purpose behind all that was created. Everybody say God had a plan, an objective, and a purpose. Okay? A plan, an objective, and a purpose. Because this is what God had in the garden. And he was very clear. God basically wrote the, wrote the Bible like this. He said, listen, if you never got past Genesis chapter 1. If you never got past Genesis chapter 1, if you just only open up the Bible to read Genesis chapter 1. The good thing about God is like. You know everything now. You know all you need to know about his plan, his objective, and his purpose. You know everything about your plan, your objective, and your purpose. You know everything because everything was found right there. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, everything was found right there. And that's the beauty of the way this book is written. The way the book is written is so beautiful that if you start from the beginning, if it is our history, if the Bible is our history and Genesis is the beginning, is our, uh, the beginning meaning our origin story, where we originate from, where we come from, right? If the Bible is the, be I mean, if Genesis is the beginning, why not start in the beginning so we can understand the beginning of this life that we are all living right now? See, see, we're taught, we're taught by man. And see, that's the problem. You done listen to man and look where you at right now. <laughs> but we are we are taught by man. We are taught by man to start in the Gospels. We're taught in man, by man to start in the Gospels. But if you do not understand, I truly believe in my 23 years of walking with God. I truly believe. If you do not understand the, if you do not understand what took place in the garden, you won't understand the gospels. You won't understand the purpose, the plan of, the, and the objective of the gospels. You will not understand it. You will have you will have made up your own conclusion about what it's supposed to mean. You would make up your own ideas of what it's supposed to mean. And see, when you go to the Bible with your own preconceived ideas, thoughts, concepts, and precepts, okay? When you go to that, when you, when, when, when you go to the Bible with your own preconceived ideas, ideas, thoughts, concepts, and precepts, you run the risk of misinterpreting the Bible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And see, this is why many people that are trying to disprove the Bible... Right. They go to their they go to the Bible with their own preconceived thoughts, ideas and concepts and precepts, which is why it leads them to not understanding the Bible, which is what leads them to taking scripture out of context, because one, they don't even know the true context. Right. So this is why we see so much error today. OK, now. If you don't understand God's plan, objective and purpose, OK, of what he wanted to do. Here on this earth, you, you will abuse, you will, you will abuse what was created, okay? You will abuse because you were created. Now, you would even abuse you. So, so you would abuse what's created because, because 
you're also in that creation. So many people, many people are abusing themselves right now because they don't know God's ideas, concepts, or precepts. They're abusing themselves. And remember, abuse is just the abnormal use of anything. The abnormal use of anything is abuse. That's all abuse is, is abnormal use. Many people are abnormally using themselves. And this is because, this is because where purpose is not known, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So where a lot of people don't understand their purpose, they go around living their life, abusing their life. Treating their life as if, <laughs> who knows? You see it, right? But listen, let's get to it now. God's plan and God's objective and God's purpose, okay, is found in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. Write that down. This is where God's plan is found. So after God, after God done created everything, after he done created everything, he's like, okay, okay, here we go, right? Because remember, God done just, he just created everything, right? Go, go, go read the context. He done created everything. And now he's getting to the point where now that there's creation, let me, my final, the final form of creation, the most important aspect of creation. Come on, here's the idea. Boom, right here. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Listen, in your Bible, in your Bible, you need to highlight in red dominion, dominion. Okay, you need to highlight in red dominion. That's a very important word for you to understand and for you to break down in your own time. Very, very, very important. Okay, so highlight dominion. Okay, he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bird, uh, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seeds. You, <laughs> to you it shall be your food. It should be your food. <laughs> so we wasn't even supposed to eat meat anyway. Do you know that like the eating of meat literally was the result of sin? Like a lot of people don't even know that. Like, like, like the eating of meat was, was because sin entered the world. Sin entered the world. Hold on. And we're going we gonna to prove this right here. Watch. Watch this now. Watch this now. Verse number, verse number 30. He says also to every beast of the field. To every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. That means every animal, every animal was supposed to survive off of the life that God has put on this earth. Because God, what God created in the beginning was a sustainable ecosystem which would live off itself which will live off the glory of God and the life of God, which was the plants, the trees, the herbs. Like, like, like God's ecosystem of life was sustainable within itself. Where they didn't have to go outside of the ecosystem. They had to just follow the design. Because if man just would have followed the design, do you understand? They would understand life. They wouldn't have... Like, they would literally be living life right now. Literally. Living life. Living lavish. They had everything. God done put the resources around them. All right? Very important for you to understand. And it was so, verse 31, Then God saw everything that, had he, that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. It was very good. 
Okay, it was very good. So in the evening, in the morning of the, uh, so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So that's very important for you guys to understand. Okay, just those little, just those little, you know, just some food for thought right there. Is is it's important for us to know what God said was gonna keep us alive. What God said was gonna keep us alive. Right. And this is why when you when you when you look at the system that we live in today, everything that is put into the system is 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 fake, is is man, man, you factured, literally, literally man <laughs> created it and uh, manipulated our food system so we can be sick, so we can have disease, so we can fuel the uh, medical field, right? Because in the herbs, listen, he, there's healing in the herbs, there's healing in the uh, in the fruit, there's healing in the leaves, there's healing in everything that was na naturally made by God. Healing in every single bit of it. Every single bit of it. So, so in God creating this ecosystem, I, even even the food, see, there would be no sickness. There, there literally would be no sickness because all we're eating is good. There would be no sickness in the garden. There was no sickness in the garden because everything was good. God said it was good. Okay? Very important for us to understand. Now, now it's very important for us to understand that God will not create an earth, okay? He will not create a earth, a earth with life on it without managers to manage the life on earth, okay? So God's original idea and what we are reading right now, this passage was God's idea, and I want you guys to understand that when you guys read Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 31. Now, this is God's idea. It's his idea. Okay. Just, just understand that right there. This is God's idea of what he wanted to happen. Okay. And he's talking, he's talking amongst himself. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son. He's talking amongst himself when he is saying this idea. Let us make man. In our image. Yeah, it's a good idea to make man in our image. We done created all of this. We need we need some managers, right? Now, so God's original idea, plan, and objective for mankind was for man to exercise, exercise their God likeness, being made of the image of God. Now, we have creator abilities aka creative abilities okay and out of those creator abilities we are called to dominate to govern to rule to manage the life that god has placed here on this earth okay that was god's idea for us that's what he wanted to be done here on this earth now our sole purpose was to ultimately cultivate the earth and the resources God put here on the earth to make the earth look like heaven. Now check this out. God's idea of earth was for the earth to be the physical extension of a spiritual kingdom. In other words, the earth was supposed to mirror the image of the kingdom of heaven. That was the whole purpose of earth. To be the image of the kingdom of heaven because there was no image yet. The kingdom of heaven was in the unseen. You could not see it. Now, God's idea was not for him to come down to earth and do it himself. Why? Because he's already king of a spiritual kingdom, which is heaven. So instead, what he's decided to do out of his nature of love that we all know he is, he decided to create mankind to be the rulers, a.k.a. kings, here on this earth 
which is why he called us to dominate as the scriptures say. So us being made in the image and the likeness of God makes us kings, a royal priesthood, makes us like our father, literally. So God decided to share his rulership with us. And this was his original idea for us, was, was for him to share his rulership with us. So we can get his plan and his vision and what he wants to be done here on earth. That he is spiritual. He wanted to stay spiritual. And he wanted us to be the manifestation of his spiritual being. His whole idea. That's all he wanted. He wanted to stay spiritual. He didn't want to become physical. So he said, you know what? Boom. I'm going to create, I'm going to create many physical means. Many physical means where I will dwell inside. I'm moving ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Teaching is fun. Now, so God's idea was for him to share his rulership with his spiritual children in a physical world. Okay? Now, this is very important and very essential for you to understand and your understanding of this entire story, because it is a very beautiful story, honestly. As much of a book it is, it's a story, and it's, I love stories. Stories are a pretty good thing. Now, so man was essentially the bridge between the spirit realm and the physical realm for God to execute his plan. Man was that bridge, and I need you guys to understand that. Basically what that means is, in order for, hey listen, in order for God to get anything done, he said, you know what? I'm going to create man. I'm going to create man so I can live in man to get my plan done. Literally. Literally. Right? And this is why, this is why to see a great move of God, like even today, even in today's society, how does God get things done? Through man. God gets things done here on earth through man. Through man, because if God physically, if God physically wanted to come down here and get things done by himself, he could, right? He, he, he really could do that, right? But the last time man, I mean, God physically came down here on this earth, he frightened man because of his glory. Because of his glory, he, fr he, he frightened man. Man wasn't even ready to comprehend. Man couldn't even comprehend how glorious God was. So instead of being in awe and oh my gosh, they were like, oh my gosh, that is a scary, is that whatever I'm witnessing is scary. It's scary. For real. Okay. Now, it's important for us to understand that man was created for the spirit of God to rule into uh Man was, hold on, hold on, it's important for us to understand that man was created for the spirit of God to rule and to reign in the heart of man through the spirit of God, okay, through the spirit of God, through the spirit of God that rules the heart of man, man would understand the plan of God through their constant fellowship and relationship that they had with one another. Man's fellowship with, with God was essential for man to know how to have dominion here on this earth. Without the fellowship, without the relationship with God, man would not know how to rule, would not know how to dominate, would not know how to govern will not know how to manage. And we know this is truth because look what happens after man disobeyed God. Look what happens after Genesis chapter 3. It's right there in plain sight. Man did not know what to do when death entered, when sin entered. They didn't know what to do because there was no connection to God. There was no connection to God. So they didn't know how to do this life. So all you see is a whole bunch of man, godless, and living aimless. 
aimless, trying to figure this life out without God, essentially. So, God's idea. So, before the fall, God's idea and objective was for man to live on earth exercising their godlikeness amongst the life that God resourcefully placed around them, bringing fruitfulness across the earth. And now this is how the kingdom of heaven was supposed to come to earth. Okay, That's how the kingdom of heaven was supposed to come to earth. That was God's plan. Still is God's plan. Don't get it confused. Just because we're reading this now and sent into the world. No, that's still God's plan. That's the same exact plan that God wants us to execute today. Today. Okay? Because you can either be like after the fall, meaning what they tried to do without God, or you can get with God, be in relationship with God so you know what to do. Right. Because a lot of times we don't know what to do because we ain't in relationship with God because there's still a disconnect. OK. So God's idea. OK. God's idea. His original idea was found in Genesis chapter one, verses 26 through 31. Now, God then execute his his idea to start his plan to fulfill the objective in Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 8, when he physically formed man. Okay? So his idea is found in chapter 1, verses 26 through 20, uh, 31. Then the execution, the execution of that idea was found in chapter 2. Very important for you guys to understand. Okay. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 2. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 9. Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 9. It reads, it reads, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord, made, uh, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil was also there as well. Now, it is very important for us to understand, very important for us to understand this right here, that when God breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of man, after the formation of the body, the breath of life that he breathed into the nostrils was the release of the Holy Spirit into the temple of man. Very important for you to get. Okay? Because the Bible says that... The Bible says that... When God breathed his life... Uh, breathed the breath of life... Man became a living being. Man became a living being when, when he breathed the breath of life. Now... Without, without the Holy Spirit in the temple of man, there is no life in the man. The Holy Spirit is what brings life to this fleshly life. Okay? Because it was only when, the, when God breathed life into man was, for that, was when man was alive. Only when the breath of life came in, the Holy Spirit came in, okay? And the reason why we know this is because, I gotta find it, but in Acts, chap, in Acts, in Acts, when God came back, uh, when Jesus resurrected from the dead, 
And before he left, he said, I have a gift for you. I have a gift for you. All right? He said, I got a gift for you. He breathed upon them. He breathed. Exactly. Good job, Shanti. He breathed upon his disciples. And he said, receive. Receive. Same thing that took place in the garden. Same thing that took place in the garden. So, so we are we are seeing God doing do repeating himself, repeating himself over and over in the Bible, so we can get it. Because he says, "For those who have ears, let them hear. For those who have eyes, let them see. Right? Let them see and witness the glory of God." So, at this point of man's life. He only knows life. He only knows life. And he only knows what is good. Sin and death is still unknown to man until God gives the instructions, which was in verses, uh, I believe, chapter 2, uh, Genesis chapter 2, 15 through 16. Okay? So before I go on to the next section, is everybody following? Is everybody following? Is that very clear? It's God's original idea and original plan and what he wanted to be done on this earth very clear because, I mean, it should be just complete clarity. <laughs> it should be complete clarity of what we need to understand. Okay? That's clear? We good? Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Next subsection. Subsection. The next subsection is, is called... The introduction of death through instruction. The introduction of death through instruction. Okay? That's the next subsection for us. Let us read Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 16. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 16 reads, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And... The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, very important for us to understand as well, that when God is giving man the instruction, he is speaking to mankind as a whole because in Adam, he holds mankind. In Adam, he holds seed. So when God is giving man in instruction, he is speaking to everybody. Everybody. He's not just speaking to just Adam, although Adam is just there. Inside of Adam is the potential of mankind. Inside of Adam is the potential of woman. Inside of Adam is every single seed. So, so he is speaking to our entire race of mankind. Okay. Now, we moving at a good pace, good pace. Now, this is the passive, passage of scripture. Now, in this passage of, passage of scripture is where God introduces man to the idea of death. Through instruction. And one thing we must understand is mankind was made in the image and in the likeness of God. We were modeled after God to exercise our God likeness here on this earth. And now in God and in God's model of who he was, is there is free will. There is free will. And he is the author and the creator of making decisions. Okay, he's the author and creator of making decisions, which means in God holds the standard of what good and evil is, the standard of what right and wrong is. Okay, and one thing we must understand about God's standard is God's standard is righteous and he will not break the standards, the standards that he has set. He will not trespass his own standards. What is righteous to God is righteous to God. What is evil to God is what evil is what evil is. And what God's expectations of us is for us to is to respect his standards, right? Respect his standards, operate within the boundaries of righteousness. 
exercise our God likeness within the boundaries of righteousness, because within the boundaries of righteousness is life within the boundaries of God's instructions. And when he says, do not do this and do this is life. Right. And that's what God wants us to understand is he says, listen, you know, God brought God, um, you know, God brought something back up to me. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. So, <clears throat> so back in Genesis chapter two, verses seven through nine, um, verse number nine, in the end of it, it says that man is, mind you, he's this foreign man. He's not placed in the garden just yet. And he says the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Now, what that means is evil exists already. Evil exists. The, 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 the knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil exists. OK, it exists. And we're going to break down. We're going to break down. We're going to break down. Why is that so? Why is that so? OK. But I just wanted to keep that. I just want you guys to keep that in your mind. I wanted you guys to keep that in your mind. OK. So in this passage, what we see is God laying the standard of what man can do and what man can't do. OK. For the purpose of man understanding that he has a choice. Understand that when God is giving man instructions, right? He is telling man, listen, you have a choice. You don't have to listen to me as much as I want you to listen to me. You have a choice. I'm a loving God and I'm giving you choice. I am giving you free will. Because you were made in my image. You were made in my likeness. And you wouldn't be made in my image and likeness if I took away your free will. So I have, I, me being the author and the creator of free will, I have given you and I am blessing you with this opportunity to choose and to decide. So when God gives man instructions, he is saying, this is basically what God is saying right here. I summed it up. In my own way so we can understand. This is basically what God is saying to man and telling man right here. All right. I have given you this. And you may freely have the things in which I have given you. But this you may not have. This is not for you. Be aware of it. But it's not for you. It exists, but it's not for you. And if you choose to take from the very thing that I tell you not to choose, the connection and the fellowship that we have now will be cut off. Because you have chosen, you have chosen with your own free will to rebel against my instructions. And because you have chosen to rebel against my instructions, you shall surely die. You shall surely die. So, when God gives man, when God gives man the instructions, he, he's literally telling them what it is. He's telling them what it is. Right? Because all we see, all we see is what's in the, in the text. Who knows the conversation that man really had with God? And if he's a father, listen, I look at him telling man just like this, just like this, because all we read is the text. Right. And there's so much that was said. That we have to we have to literally understand that there's so much that was said, but that's not in the text. Right. But the text gives us an understanding of how God was thinking. The text gives us an understanding of what God's intentions actually was. Now, check this out. To God, to God, OK, to God, death enters man only if he chooses to go against the instructions. So in the garden, God introduces us 
to life and to death through instructions. Check this out. Life, he's saying, Adam, life is choosing to obey the instructions of God. And death is choosing to disobey and rebel against the instructions of God. That's it. So God in the garden is introducing man to life and death. Listen, life and blessings or death and curses. Just like Deuteronomy 18 says, God, God brings it up over and over and over. You can choose which life you want to live, a life of blessing. That's what he's telling. He's laying down right here. Adam, listen, you can choose life and blessings or death and curses. It's up to you. And life and blessings is found in you listening to me and being obedient to my instructions. Because I know what's best for you. And I know what is worse for you. Right? And death and curses is disobedience. Now. Now, life. Life. Was God's original idea and plan for what he wanted man to live in. Understand that, family. Life. He wanted us to be alive. In his presence. He wanted us to be alive in abundance. He wanted us to be alive amongst the resources that he has placed around us. Life was God's original experience for us. It's crazy. Because that was what he wanted us to live on this earth. That's what he wanted us to experience was life more abundantly. The Bible says that Christ came for us to live life more abundantly. Why? Because he came to restore what was lost in the garden, which was life more abundantly. Which is why if you don't understand what happened in the garden, bro, it won't make sense of why God came to give us life. Why Jesus came to restore life more abundantly. I'm telling you, we had everything in here. We had everything in the garden, family. Everything. We even had gold in the garden. Read the Read it. We had gold in the garden. We had silver. We had onyx. We had every precious stone in the garden for us to build, for us to work, for us to tan. We had everything, bro. Everything. We had life more abundantly. Beautiful. Beautiful for us to understand. Okay. So, God wanted us to experience Life more abundantly here on this earth. Now check this out. Death was just an option. Death was just an option. And in death being an option, that means we didn't have to choose it if we didn't want to. For real. That means we didn't have to experience what death was like unless we, uh, if, unless we wanted to. See what I'm saying? Like man had the choice to choose death. Man had the choice to choose death. It was just an option. It was just an option. So God said, listen, Adam, you have life and blessings, life more abundantly, or you have death and curses and more death and sin. So it's important to note that God created man in life. In life. He placed man in life. The resources that he placed around man was life. For the purpose of cultivating and creating more life. Our physical bodies weren't, it was not even created for death or sin to be our experience. It wasn't even for us. Literally. It wasn't even for us. Our bodies were created. For the spirit of God. To dwell within us. So we would know. How to create. And cultivate. More life. Here on this earth. Come on bro. Exactly. We already had internal life, meaning, bruh, we were living forever. We didn't have no expiration. There was no expiration at this point in the garden. There was no expiration. We didn't have none. 
Life, life in the garden, like a lot, like the garden, the, the garden of Eden, I truly believe is the ultimate experience of the presence of God. I, I, I truly believe that because God is life. God placed Adam around everything that God is. So I truly believe that the presence of God, which is why Eden today, which is why Eden today is not found. They look, they try to look for Eden. Oh, we found Eden. They'll never find Eden. Because Eden was the true presence of God and the, 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 the true presence of God, the most purest form of the presence of God here on earth. It was an environment filled with the presence of God that only life was there. Life was there. Earth is so tainted today that it's, it's hard for the presence of God to even come down here because he's so holy. Why do you think in the Old Testament he says he says be holy for I am holy? Why do you think when they try when they try to come to God, when they try to come to God, God says, "Yo, clean your hands off. You got too much blood. You got too much blood on your hands. You dirty. You dirty." So people are trying exactly. Shanti brought up a good point. He closed off his presence. Think about it. He closed off his presence. And man is now outside of the presence of God. Don't know how to operate. Don't know how to live. So the Garden of Eden was essentially an environment that only promoted and produced life. So what that means is the Eden experience. If you are a true Holy Spirit filled believer, that means the Eden experience could be in your bedroom. Because it's just an, it's, it's just an environment where God is dwelling. Where God is dwelling, where God is moving, a place that is holy here on this earth. You are, a, you are able to experience heaven on earth because you have the Holy Spirit within you. And you can experience heaven on earth right now. Right now. But remember, the presence of God is a holy place. Is a holy pleasant, uh, present, uh, yeah, presence. And you must be holy to experience the fullness of it. The fullness of it. Now, we're talking about the tangible fullness of the Holy Spirit. You must be holy. I'm just a messenger. The Bible says it very clear. Very clear. Okay? Many people are not experiencing God in their life because... You have too much residue of sin in your body. You have too much areas of darkness that is unseen, that is untreated in your body. So you're not able to experience the fullness of God. The fullness. Most of y'all is only experience the partialness of God. <laughs> the partialness. Y'all ain't even experienced the fullness yet. The fullness. We're talking about dominion on earth. We're talking about dominion on earth. All right? Okay. Just needed you guys to understand that Holy Spirit having his way today. Amen. I hope this is good. I hope you guys are learning because like I said, today we are teaching. Today we are teaching. Okay, and I like I like to teach. I like to teach. I put my put I put my professor beanie on. You feel me? I put my professor beanie on. And we get into professor mode. <laughs> Kingdom University classes in session, my friends. Now, okay, does that section make sense? Does that section make sense? Okay, do you guys get it? Do you did you guys get the instruction? Y'all got the instruction, right? You got you. Do you guys understand how instruction, God's instruction, led to uh, God's instruction was Him introducing life and death? Okay, cool, cool. All right, the next. The next subsection in your notes, the next subsection in your notes is when sin comes in. When sin comes in. Ha, watch this. Watch this. Remember, remember that the knowledge of good and evil existed, right? The knowledge of good and evil existed. That means there was good and there was evil. God had a standard of what good and what evil was. And truly good is obedience to God. Obedience of God, stepping into obedience and walking in obedience of God. Evil was anything that rebelled against God. That's essentially what his standard was. That's, that's essentially what his standard was. <laughs> now, 
Now, it's very important for us to understand that before man disobeyed the garden, there was one who disobeyed God before man. Who was? What was his name? So before man even disobeyed in the garden, there was one that disobeyed before man. Okay, and his name was Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan. Right, but before Satan, his name was Lucifer. Now, 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 now. Lucifer was the first spirit being to disobey the instructions of God. He was the first one, which led to him being cut from God, cut from the presence of God. So Lucifer was the first person, was one of the first uh, beings to experience the presence, to experience the present, to experience the fullness of the garden, the environment of God, right? And he was the first, no, he was the first to experience what the disconnect felt like. He was the first to experience what the disconnect felt like. <laughs> and because he was the first, he was mad, bro. I ain't gonna lie. He had a personal vendetta against God. He really did. He had a personal vendetta. He's like, okay, <laughs> you want to make me the first? Okay, right? And 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 that's why he was. That's literally why he was mad. He was he was literally the first one to ever get in existence. So of course he's mad. And he and the Bible says that he was so mad that he was able to convince one third of the angels. To go with him. Now, 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 to be able to convince one third of the angels to go with him, do you know what that means? That means he had influence. There was things that he understood. He was so close to God, being the light bearer to God. The Bible says the morning star. The Bible also says the light bearer. He was so close to God that he was able to, to take God's loyal angels away from him. That's wild. That's wild. When you really think about it and you try to comprehend it, like, dang, bro. Like, he really took, he really took angels with him. So he wasn't just by himself. He took a whole bunch of angels with him. And that's crazy. That's crazy when you really just sit here and just, just marinate on that thought that Lucifer was so wise. That he was able to take one third of the angels with him. Now, now, let's continue. Let's continue because it gets it gets deeper. It, 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 it gets deeper. Okay? So, in Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Jesus is replying to his uh, disciples. He says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He was the first to fall. Okay? Before man fell... He was the first to fall. Okay. Let's talk about it. Luke, I mean, Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 9. Uh, ver Ezekiel chapter 11. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ezekiel chapter 11. Wait. Am I reading that right? Hold on. No. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 28. My fault, family. I had a typo in the scripture. I'm like, where's the chapter? I see the verses, but where's the chapter? <laughs> I couldn't find I couldn't find the chapter. Couldn't find the chapter. I'm like, that don't look right. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 19. Now, Ezekiel heard a word from the Lord. The king of Babylon at that time, the king of Babylon, Tyre, uh, Tyr, 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 Tyr. He was moving. God began to tell him, Ezekiel, that he was basically moving like Satan. He was basically moving like Lucifer. So when we are listening to this word, God is comparing Lucifer and this king because they had similar, they had similar motives. 
They have similar objectives. Their attitudes were similar. Who they were was similar. And honestly, the king at this time was getting influenced by, um, by, uh, by, by Lucifer. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 19. Follow me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came upon me, came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. <laughs> oh, that's a word right there. Watch when we break that down because that's a word right there. That's a word right there. Y'all going to get your mind blown when we talk about that. Every precious stone was your covering. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, turquoise and emerald with gold the worksmanship the, the the workmanship of timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day that you were created you were an anoint you were the anointed cherub who covers who covers i established you you are on the holy mountain of God. See, the crazy thing, when, you are, when we are reading this, you're beginning to understand that Ezekiel, listen, the Ezekiel is getting the word of the Lord that's coming upon him, and God is speaking straight to Satan in here. Straight to him. By bypassing who bro is, for real. He says, Satan, I see you. I see you. And, and, and this is what's going on right now. He's speaking, straight, he's speaking straight to the spirit that is at work. And that's how God tackles this. He's speaking straight to Lucifer. It's wild. Let's continue. He said, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence. And you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing. Out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub. O, o covering cherub, from the midst of firing stone. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You became prideful because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom. He said, I have given you all this wisdom, and you corrupted your wisdom. For the sake of your own splendor, I cast you to the ground. I laid before you kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled sanctuaries by the multitudes of your iniquities. By the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. And it devoured you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth. In the sight of all who saw you. And all who knew you. Amongst the people. Peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror. And you shall be no more forever. So he was speaking right, right. He was speaking to both of them, honestly. He was speaking to both of them because in the end, he, he's telling Tyr how you done defiled the sanctuaries. You done, def you, you, you. listen, I done put people amongst you and they're seeing you defile the sanctuaries. 
Right? So he's speaking to them both. He's speaking to the spirit at work and the physical who's partnering with the spirit. Right? So we can learn from this. We can learn from this, okay? We can learn from this. So 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 let's break this down. Let's let's truly break this down so we can truly understand this. The first thing, uh, so what can we learn from the verses about Satan and his fall? What can we learn about this? Number one, that Satan was created perfect with tremendous wisdom and beauty. He was created perfect with tremendous wisdom and beauty. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 12 says, you were... The signet of perfection. This is the ESV I'm reading. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. <laughs> when God looked at all he had made during the creation. Okay. When God looked at all he had made of creation, he said it was very good. It was very good. And when God said it was very good, this includes the finishing of Satan. The finishing of Satan. Satan was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. He was good, just, and righteous. So, so understanding the you must the first thing we must understand about our adversary is in the beginning he was he was perfect. He he he, he was perfect. He was perfect, and with tremendous wisdom and beauty. With tremendous wisdom and beauty. Okay? Number two. Now Satan was in the Garden of Eden. Now this is this is this is this is very important for us to understand. We're gonna think right here. We're gonna we we gonna really think right here, family. Really think right here. Okay. So in this verse, uh let me go back to the verse real quick. In the verse, it says, remember. It says in verses Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 13. Verses 13. It says you were in Eden. The garden of God. You were in Eden. The garden of God. Now. This could refer to the earthly garden. Or. The angelic garden in heaven, which the earthly garden probably partnered at, or was patterned after, right? Because remember, remember, everything that was on earth, the original idea was in heaven. It already existed in the spirit. It already existed in the kingdom of heaven. It already existed. So, so the garden of Eden that God planted here on this earth was nothing new to God. It was nothing new. Which is why I tell you guys, it, is his, it was his presence. His presence at his most pure form. An environment that was only filled with good. And with life. Now. The Bible talks about. Heaven. Has many things. Which earth, which the earthly things. Are patterned after. Okay. Including the tree of life. The tabernacle. The temple. Uh, the temple. And Jerusalem. Right. And Hebrews, Hebrews, okay? Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 says about this about the earthly temple. It says this about the earthly temple. The place where they serve is a sketch and a shadow of the heavenly sanctuary. Just as Moses warned by God. As he was about to complete the tabernacle. For he says, see that you make everything according to the design 
shown to you on the mountain. Okay? And I want you guys to understand that Ezekiel 20, uh, chapter 28, verse 13, is seeming to refer to a time before Satan's, Satan's fall. Okay? Before Satan's fall. And this is most likely referring to a heavenly garden. A heavenly garden. This is not even referring to the Garden of Eden. On earth. Where Adam and Eve was dwelling. Okay? And 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 this is this is this is that's important for us to understand when it comes to the devil. When it comes to the devil, okay? Because this is why the devil knew what to do in the Garden of Eden when man was placed in the garden. This is why the devil knew what to do. He already convinced one-third of the angels. And if he convinced one-third of the angels with his cunningness and with his, with his, with his wisdom, with his wisdom, look what he did. Look what he did to Adam and Eve. Look what he did to mankind. If he got the angels to follow him, he's like, okay, sure. He, he was really feeling himself. Let's just put that, put, put that up in there. He was, he was feeling himself. He was probably on top of his world for all. Like, he's like, hey, at least I didn't leave here alone. At least I, at least I brought some with me. Hey, you, you're all knowing God, huh? Yep, all knowing God. At least I got some with me. Now. Number three, number three, number three, number three. Another thing we have to understand about Satan was Satan was glorious. Glorious, clothed with all types of jewels and possibly instruments, which may reflect his, pre his previous priestly role in leading other angels in the worship of God. In the worship of God. He had a role. In his role, he had like a priestly role. He, he worshiped leader. The Bible says he had instruments inside of him. That man was built different, literally. That, that's how you explain it. That man was built differently, right? Now, many of the stones that were part of Satan's being and his covering were included in the high priest of Israel's breastplate. And you can find this in Exodus chapter 39, verses 8 through 14. So, 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 this is why we say Satan had a quote-unquote priestly type of role. Do you think that's why he's involved? Of course. In the music industry? Of course. Of course. Because music is worship. That's what it was designed for. Music was designed for worship, not just a slap. Not 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 just a slap. Music was just uh, music was designed for worship. Now, uh, the verse is Exodus, Exodus chapter thirty nine, verses eight through fourteen. Exodus chapter thirty nine, verses eight through fourteen. He led the worship. Yeah, he led worship. Yep, he led. He led worship. He had a leadership position over the angels. He had a leadership position over all the other angels. Okay. In Revelations chapter 8, verses 3 through 4, an angel in heaven offers incense with the prayer, the prayers of the saints to God. And perhaps Satan performed a similar priestly role just like that. Just like that. Just like that. So, so it, it, it's very, as we are trying to understand this, we have to we have to reflect upon the whole Bible that gives us the information about this dude, this being that we are all up against today. Okay, number four. Satan, number four is Satan was anointed to serve God 
in a special way. He was anointed, literally anointed. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 14 says, you were anointed, you were an anointed guardian cherub. That sounds like a that sounds like a priestly role to me. That sounds like that sounds like a place of authority to me. He says, I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. In the midst of in the midst of the stones of fire, you walked. There were stones of fire. There was a wall of fire. And, and when it's talking about these stones of fire, I want you to I want you to think about a kingdom. OK, in today's kingdom, in the today's kingdom that are built today, they have moats that go around the kingdom to protect, to protect the kingdom, to protect the kingdom. They have these moats that is filled with water. God's moats was different. God had rocks that were on fire, fiery stones. That were on fire. Essentially a wall of fire. That guarded his kingdom. Crazy. Crazy to think about. Like that's pretty cool. Right? So. In the Old Testament. The priest. And the, the prophet and the king. Were anointed. Since Satan might have had, since Satan might have had second in authority under God. And he possibly functioned in all of these roles. That's how anointed he was. That's how gifted he was. Says something to think about. Which is why he knew so much today. Which is why he knows how to influence and have wisdom. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is how much power God gave. He, bro, it was good to give him this. That's the crazy part. It was good. God said, listen, Satan, here you go. You are anointed. You are guardian. And this is for you. And you are going to govern all these other things. You're going to make sure everything's in order so I can sit on my throne and be God. And, and he willingly gave it to him. Willingly. Entrusting him with all this power. All this power and all of this influence. God trusted Satan with this. Being on the holy mountain of God and walking in the midst of the fiery stones probably, rep probably represents how Satan dwelled in the presence of God. How he dwelled in the presence of God. He was on the holy mountain of God. He, he, he was walking in the midst of the fiery stones. And as anointed and as an anointed cherub, he would have guarded God's presence, worshiped God, and led others in worship to God. And God said he was beautiful, perfect, wise, and anointed. Hmm. So Satan was anointed. He was anointed. His position and his role is very important for us to understand in the falling of man. His position and his role is very important for us to understand the work that we are up against today. If you do not understand the position and the role that Satan had in the kingdom of heaven, you will not understand what you are up against today because the power that we are up against is not a foolish power. It, 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 it's not a, he is not a foolish power. He is not no dummy. He is not. He is not. So do not play him like he's a fool. 
Okay. Number five. Number five. Mm. Satan, Satan, though he was perfect, sinned against God by becoming prideful and instigating a rebellion in heaven and was therefore punished. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 5 through 19 says, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. In you. So it was the heart of the matter. It was the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it was his heart. The unrighteousness and the iniquity that Ezekiel was talking about was found in him. In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your midst and you sinned in your heart. In you. Your trade, what is trade? In the abundance of your work. In the abundance of what you're doing. In the abundance of what I have created you for. Think about it. In the abundance of what I created you for, iniquity and unrighteousness was found in your heart. Hmm. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God and I destroyed you. O oh, guardian cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones, your heart was found, listen, your heart was found proud. Or, or your heart was proud. Because of what? Hold on. Hold on. Your heart was proud because of your beauty. Mm, 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 mm. mm. Because of your beauty, because of your anointing, because of your gifts, because of what I created you to do, your heart was found because of your beauty. He became vain. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground and I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you by the multitude of your iniquity in the unrighteousness of your trade. You profaned your sanctuaries. So I brought fire out from your midst and it consumed you. I turned you into ashes on the earth. In the sight of all who saw you. All who you know. All who know you among the people. Are appalled at you. For you have come dreadful. You have come to a dreadful end. And shall be no more. So remember. He is talking. He is talking to the king of Tyre. But he's also speaking to the devil. Because the same thing that the king of Tyre. Is going through at the time. As he is. Being the king of Babylon, it's, a, it's the same thing. The same thing is taking place. Same thing. Okay? Now remember, in this section, Ezekiel is alternating between God's word to the king of Tyre and Satan. Going back and forth, giving us a picture Satan was initially perfect until he became proud because of his beauty. 
which corrupted his wisdom. And it's crazy because, you know, it is it, what causes people to be br proud today is their beauty. It's their beauty, which is why there's such thing as a beauty industry, a beauty industry. Hey, a industry that is focused on beauty. How about how about how about the fashion industry? Remember, Satan knows just how to distract you. How about the music industry? Satan knows what's going to lure you away from God. He is not a dummy. He is not a dummy. Come on, bro. We got to wake up. Satan was initially perfect until he became proud because of his beauty, which corrupted his wisdom, which corrupted his wisdom. Mm. You becoming vain and proud, okay? You becoming vain and becoming proud can corrupt your wisdom, can cause you to use your wisdom in another light. That's why you must be careful. The curse, the one who he has enmity with is truly the women. Satan has, God put enmity between Satan and woman, which is why the beauty industry is just for women. It's really just for women. But see, this, but Satan's spirit that is at work is causing men to go into the beauty industry. Actually, is causing men to transform to women to go into the beauty industry. It's right in front of us. It's right in front of us. The very thing that corrupted the heart of Satan is the very thing that he is using to corrupt the heart of man today. Most, pe most people... They use the excuse of, well, I like beauty. I like beauty. I like makeup. I like beauty. I like makeup. So what happened? You just, you just don't like how beautiful you are in your natural skin of how God created you? We like, to, we like to justify the very thing that ends up corrupting our actual beauty. Because the reality is... The beauty industry was a plant by Satan to get you away from your identity of who God calls you to be. Because when you do your makeup, for the most part, you come out looking a whole different person. For some people. Some people keep it as natural as possible. But for some people, whoa. They hop in a pool and like... Hey, you want the, <laughs> you want the, like your whole tone, your whole skin tone different. Oh, so your cheeks ain't naturally that red? <laughs> telling you, bro. I'm telling you, this is real. Whether you want to see it or not, whether you want to accept it or not, it's the very thing Satan is using the very thing that got him kicked out of heaven. He's using the very thing that kicked him out of heaven against you. Now all I'm saying is there ain't no problem with a little bit of makeup. There's no problem with it. Don't allow it to corrupt you though. Don't allow it, don't allow it to mask who you truly are. God created you beautiful the way you are. Created you beautiful the way you are. 
There was a comment that said, when you have the Holy Spirit truly, there's going to be a godly glow that's going to come upon you. Godly glow that's going to come upon you. So like I said, do your due diligence before you actually continue something. Do your due diligence, man. Because all of you ladies are beautiful inside and out. And true beauty truly comes from the inside in general. Yeah. What we learn is when sin enters, the body decays. That means we all look old and wrinkly in the end. And there ain't no makeup that you can put on them wrinkles. All right? So, at the end of the day... There's an expire. There's an expiration day now. There's an expir expiration day. So, let's get back to it. Don't be confused. Don't be confused, okay? Now, other verses tell us more about his pride. Other verses tell us more about Satan's pride, okay? Go check out... Um, you can go check out Isaiah... Chapter 14, verses 12 through 17. Okay. Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through 17 explains. Explains. Uh, some of the words within Satan's heart. Okay. And Isaiah chapter 14, verses 13 through 14, specifically describes the evil one's prideful words, which led him to his judgment. And it says this, Isaiah chapter 14, 13 uh, through 14 says this, I will climb up to the sky above the stars of El. I will set up my throne. I will rule on the mountain of the assembly, on the remote slopes of Zephyr. I will climb up to the top of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. So Satan want, so Satan said in his heart, in, in his heart, that he wanted to be above the stars of El, referring to God's angels. He wanted to be above everybody else. He wanted to be above everybody else. He wanted the power. He wanted the dominion. Verse 13 says, says he wanted to rule on the mountain of the assembly, sitting on the place of glory and attention. So he wants the glory and he wants the attention. Look at every single industry we in today. Beauty, music, fashion. What is it all about? It ain't about, oh, I like to do this. It's about attention. You do it all for attention. I'm telling you, the root of all of it is attention. Whether you accept it or not, bruh, that's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. It's all for attention. Everything that is in the system of this world. Listen, Satan is offering you the same thing he offered Jesus when he was when he was tempted. He said, you can have the kingdoms of this world. You can have the kingdoms of this world. You can have it if you bow down and worship me. He said you can have it. And many people are bowing down willingly and saying, I will worship you, Satan. I will worship you, Satan. When you look at the, when you pay attention to the fashion industry, you begin to realize how dark it is. Like I've literally, I literally came across this fashion show where it was literally humiliation to the people who are walking. It's like, it's like, 
for me, is, does, anybody, does anybody else notice this about fashion? Is when when the when the models are walking out, it's like they are it's like they are trained to like be like be robots. It's like they are trained to be like like not even straight face. They look lost. And they look broken. Like they look lost, they look broken, they look hurt. Like there was literally a fashion show that I seen where the fashion was the uh, the the models are walking and the people in the crowd is throwing trash and coffee and things at these people. And that's what they call fashion. Straight humiliation. The target, do you understand the target who, who, who the enemy is targeting is the weak because it's the weak that fall in the trap of these industries. It's the weak minded that fall into the trap of every single aspect of the industry. See, the thing is that this is the thing. Many people, many people. Many people, okay, many people have fell into the trap of the industry. So you're saying if you like Barbary Balenciaga, it's all people who follow Satan as well. I'm saying that the people behind those brands are not people. There are spirits at work behind those brands that operate, that, that, that sold out, sold out to the devil. They sold out to the devil, which made them billionaires. Which made them multi-billionaires. That's what I'm saying. The people behind the brand ain't normal, bruh. Ain't normal. They done sold their entire life to it. And the crazy thing is, we buy their stuff because we want to fit in to their trend. We want to fit in to the image that they said, if you don't live up to this image, you ain't, you ain't drippy. <laughs> if you don't got this, you ain't, you ain't about it. You don't got no money if you don't dress in this. All for self, all for attention. You get it? Uh, look up MK Ultra because put it in the chat. I just said it. Put it in the chat. I'm not gonna say it again. I'm not gonna say it again. Put it. Put it in the chat because that's what it is. Y'all talking about mind control? Look it up. Look it up. Look it up because it's getting used. It's getting used. It's get. It's getting used for everybody right now. Everybody right now. Look it up, bro. Look up what it is. Because it was a military tactic. Military tactic that now they're using on regular civilians. It's in your music. It's in, your, it's, in the, it's in the makeup industry. It's in the commercials. It's in everything. It is in everything. Everything. The media was set for us to be just like Satan. <laughs> Do you guys understand? I'm covered by the blood. We are covered by the blood and there is no banning this. I promise you. I promise you. They wouldn't stop this if, if they could. <laughs> we protected. We done talked about a lot in the last 51 day, 54 days. And if they wanted to, they could have been did that. Could have been did that. <laughs> they ain't stopping us even if they wanted to. They wish. But I'm telling you, understanding the devil is very important. Very important. Because, because, because remember, everything that Satan experienced in heaven, he is, he is, he is getting us here on earth to say, listen, listen, this is what it's like. <laughs> this is what it's like. If, if You can experience heaven on earth right now. If you just bow down and worship me, I can give it to you all right now. 
I can give it to you all right now if you bow down and worship me. Verse 13 says he wanted to climb to the top of the clouds, which represented glory. God's glory. <laughs> God will appear in glory in his glorious, glorious form. Listen, God will appear in his glorious form, okay? In Exodus chapter 16 verses 10 and verse and and Exodus chapter 40 verses 34. So understand, God will appear in the Bible, in the Old Testament, he will appear as a glorious form of a cloud. And he said and Satan says he wants to climb to the top of the clouds. Because why? He wanted to be glorified. He wanted the attention He wanted to be like God. And as he declared, I will make myself like the most high. So what Satan is doing right now in this generation, what, what we are all living in right now, what Satan is doing is he is trying to be like the most high. This is his attempt to be like the most high, which is why he creates all of these industries to distract you from the most high so you can become the most high and this is where people are deceived people are deceived because you fall into these industries you fall into these traps and you're only thinking about you you're only thinking about you what you look like how you dress how you make money how you do it's all about you it's all about you and what people don't understand is when you partner with these things, it opens up legal access for the enemy to have his way in your life. And he can have his way in your attitude, in your mindset, in how you think, in how you talk, in how you approach people. And people think, people don't think, oh, oh any type of partnership gives access to the enemy to come into your life. Any type of partnership. Anything. Anything. Pride. Pride. Led him to seek the glory and obedience of others. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 16 says... In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with the violence in you were in the abundance of your trade. You would you were filled with violence in your midst and you sinned. Now, if you pay attention. He's talking about that today, what that looks like is social media today. If you pay attention to the words that was just spoken. In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence. In the midst. In the midst. And you have sinned. You are seeking to be glorified. <laughs> you are seeking to be glorified. And followed by other people. Which is why social media. Social media. Has been a big, a big usage for the devil. To get his work done. Big usage of the devil. Big usage of the devil. Do not. Do not. Do not. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Now, okay, <laughs> now that you understand why Lucifer failed, we can now understand why he went after man. All of that to tell you why he's going after you today. Literally. <laughs> Literally. All of that to tell you why he is after you right now. You are the glory of God. You are the glory of God. 
Why do you think he wants you? <laughs> I believe that Satan saw man's God likeness and envied it and envied it. He was mad. He said, okay, God, oh, you want to create some beings like you? Say less. Say less. And Satan being so close to God at one point of his life, he saw that if he can get man to rebel against God, he can have what he's always desired. What does he always desire? To be glorified? To have dominion? To have influence? To have worship? He said, if I can get... Satan's little devious plot in his mind was, if I can get man to disobey Disobey God, which I know how to get man to disobey God because I got one third of the angels to disobey God. So he's walking back and forth, back and forth. OK, OK, you want to create this? You want to create this man after your image? huh? Hmm. I've already got I've, I've, I've already got one third of the angels to rebel against you now. And if I can get one third of the angels, which were your creation, that means. I can get any of your creation to rebel. All I need is a plan. <laughs> All I need is a plan. All I need is a plan. Okay, what's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? And he came up with a plan. And all he knew he had to choose, all he knew, uh, and he knew all he had to do was get man to choose to go against God, literally. He didn't even have to touch him. All he all he he knew that all he had to do was get in their mind, get in their thoughts, find the areas of weakness and man, which is why he didn't approach Adam, which is why he did not approach Adam. He said to get Adam to fall, I got to approach the weak link. <laughs> the Bible says that woman. It's the weaker vessel to man. That's why he didn't approach Adam. Adam knew better. Adam knew better. Eve was still naive in certain areas. She was still naive in certain areas. It was Adam's job to cultivate. It's Adam's job to do his job. So, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, was the beginning of Satan's plan, which was to steal, kill, and destroy the life between man and God, which was disconnecting, which was the disconnecting of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and man. It was the disconnecting. Because remember, Satan knew, all I have to do is disconnect man and God and I can have my way all I have to do is disconnect man and God and just like I fail from God in the presence of God therefore they will fall from the presence of God family the Bible does not say it's an apple so stop thinking it was an apple please don't think it was an apple <laughs> the Bible said fruit the Bible said fruit, spiritual fruit. And there's nowhere in the Bible that says it was an apple. It's just fruit. That's all it is. That, that's, that's all it is. <laughs> Literally all it is, fruit. That's what the Bible says. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Here we go. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had God has made. 
Okay? So here we go. We see Satan transforming. Satan transformed into something that was light, which was a snake. It was a snake. Snakes were good, created good. So, so, so Satan transformed into a because Satan is a is a spirit. So what we see here is Satan's ability to transform into light. Which is why Satan <laughs> can be anything and anybody. Because he has transformative power. And he said to woman, and he said to woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And when the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse number four. Then... The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. You will not surely die. For God knows that the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food. That it was pleasant to her eyes and it was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate it. She also, she also gave to her husband with her. The Bible says he was with her. So the conversation was had with Eve while Adam was with her. So they were both deceived. <laughs> they were both deceived. <laughs> and her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Why he ain't speak up? You know, that's a very good question. Because what they saw was good. Do you guys not get it? What they saw was good. He came as something that was good. He came as light. So they weren't able, they weren't able to even discern what it was. But the conversation happened, the conversation happened with the weaker vessel. The conversation happened with the weaker vessel, not with Adam. Adam was there, but the conversation happened. Now, one thing that you have to understand that this the Bible does not yet clarify that this is that the, that the serpent talked like verbally talked. The enemy speaks to us in our mind. This conversation could have happened in the spirit, spirit to spirit. The. When, when have you seen when have you seen a snake talk? When have you when have you seen a dog or an animal talk, bro? They don't. They don't. He approached Eve because Eve was the weaker of the two. He was the weak she was the weaker of the two. Adam knew the word. Adam knew the word. He knew the word. 
one with the word. But Eve, Adam had to teach and cultivate the word inside of Eve. It's the responsibility of Adam. Eve was in lack because of Adam. But you have to remember that Satan knew the word. Satan knew the word. And it was in the error that he found in Eve that he was able to deceive Eve. That he was able to twist the words and force them to what? To think. He forced them to think, family. Just like you guys today. Think about it. How do you fall today? The enemy comes in your thought patterns. The enemy's not coming to you physically for real. Whenever you fall into temptation, it's because what's going on right here? What's going on in here? It's the same thing. Same thing that took place in the garden. It was, it was mental. It was mental. God not share equal knowledge. Understand that there's a order and there's a process. The Bible says, the Bible says that Eve was the weakest of the link. That means there is things that she did not understand because it was man's job to cultivate. It was man's job. To give the word, the commands, to relay the instructions. And honestly, we all been there, man. We've been, we all been infatuated with a woman's beauty before. Where it blinds you. Where it blinds you. <laughs> and if Eve was good. I believe she was at the most purest, the most innocent, the most beautiful. Adam ain't never seen anything like it. They sitting there naked. And he's like, Whew, man, this is me? Okay. <laughs> he ain't all he seen was animals, bro. All he seen was animals. All he seen was animals. So think about it. When Adam seen Eve, he sees whatever you want, baby. <laughs> Eat this fruit. <laughs> what was God's word again? What was, what, what was God's word again? Did he say I can eat this stuff? Ah, oh, sure. I don't. We don't. Uh, why you don't got no clothes on, bruh? Hold on. Why do I know? You don't got no clothes on. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's what happened. <laughs> Get the leaves. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's very important for us to understand what took place in the garden. Very important for us to what important important for us to understand what took place in the garden. Okay? So it's vitally important for us to understand how Adam fell. Okay? <clears throat> to understand present human depravity, we must first define depravity. Okay, everybody say depravity. I don't know if I just gave you a new word for your vocabulary, but depravity is a word. <laughs> D-E-P-R-A-V-I-T-Y. Depravity. <laughs> so I don't know if you just learned a new word. Word, but there you go. Add it to your vocabulary because it's very important to understand the depravity. Now, depravity 
means the failure to meet an existing standard. Depravity means the failure to meet an existing standard to fall from a place of original perfection. Depravity means to the failure to meet an existing standard and to fall from a place of original perfection. Depravity. Adam became depraved into two ways, okay? Depravity is D-E-P-R-A-V-I-T-Y. D-E-P-R-A-V-I-T-Y. Depravity, okay? Now, Adam became depraved into two ways, okay? Into two ways. His soul first failed to obey God, okay? Meaning his soul first fail, failed to meet God's existing standard. Okay? Good night, auntie. You going to sleep early tonight? Okay, good night, auntie. It's a good word, but it's okay. It's, just a, it's a good word we have in here, though. <laughs> we, we'll send you the notes. Send you the notes so you can get it. We're going to make sure you take care of auntie. Okay? Now, <clears throat> so his soul first failed to obey. Oh, it's Halal. Oh, 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 hey. Welcome, Auntie. I'm glad you made it. Good night, lad. Okay. Good night it is, Auntie. It's a very good night. Very blessed night. Very, very blessed night. <laughs> very blessed night. Oh, this word is good. <laughs> This word is good, Auntie. I'm telling you, it's a good word right here. God is moving. Welcome. Welcome. Got you. Got you. We, we, we learning, Auntie. I, I, got you. I just learned something. Just like we just learned a new word, depravity, we just learned that good night from the Caribbeans means good day. Ha <laughs> ha! Good day. Hello. Got you. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Now, so... Adam became depraved into two ways. Into two ways. His soul first, okay, lock in, lock in. His soul first failed to obey God, okay? So his soul first failed to, uh, to, to obey God. Then his body began to fail. The first depravity was moral. The first depravity was moral and was followed by the second, which was physical. Okay? Caused by Adam's self, and the physical was caused by Adam's selfish choice. In spite of the clear warning of the penalty of God, you should eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Okay? These two depravities caused two kinds of death. Physical and spiritual. Although these are linked, they are not the same thing. They are not the same thing. Death. Um, spiritual. Uh, wait. Oh, death. Death is the state of separation. Understand that. Okay? Understand that right now. Death is the state of separation. So when God is in introducing the idea, the idea to Adam, when he gave the instruction, okay? When, 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 at, when God is introducing the idea of life and death, he's saying, Adam, if you disobey me, you will be separated from me. You will be separated from me, Adam. If you disobey me, it's going to cause separation. So death is the state of separation. Spiritual death is the state of separation from God. So spiritual death is the state of separation from God. 
and essentially to live in sin is to be spiritually dead. To live in sin is to be spiritually dead. This is why you guys hear me call it the walking dead. What are people doing today? Walking dead because they are spiritually dead. Okay? And physical death, physical death is a death, is a death separation from the material world, meaning the, the, the physical world, which essentially means instead of living forever eternally, your body decays and now you have an expiration. So he's saying, Adam... You have life. You have life, Adam, which is connected to me. And I've given you life. He's saying, I'm gi I've given you to all, uh, all of it. Adam, you're in connection with me right now. To hear these instructions, you're in connection with me right now. He's saying, you can. I have freely given you everything that you need, my son. Everything that you need. Okay? But... You see that tree right there? Yeah, you don't touch that tree right there. That is the tree. Of, that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do not touch that tree. Why, Adam? Why don't I want you to touch that tree? Because you have everything good. <laughs> you already have life. You already have everything you need. So, so you honestly don't even need that tree. But I just need to let you know. Listen. Don't touch that tree. That tree exists. What I want you to do, Adam, is I want you, I want you to live. I, I, I want you to live and be able to walk amongst every single tree and say, wow, look at all those trees. That is good for food. That is good for food. That is good for food. But then I want you to be able to walk past that tree and say, eh, I don't even want it. That's what I want you to do, Adam. I want you to desire the things that I have already given you. I want you to des desire the things that is already yours. But don't have no desire for that tree right there. Don't even look at it for too long. Okay? So, but Adam, you know, if, if you do though, if, if you do eat of that tree that I tell you not to eat from, if you do eat from that tree, well, what's going to happen is you see this fellowship and this relationship we have right now? Yeah, that's going to go bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's going to go bye-bye. Like, you're not going to have me. You're not going to know how to dominate here on this earth. You're not going to know how to manage. You're not going to know, like, like and then instead of, like, Adam, instead of you living forever, you're going to have an expiration date now. Like, you're going to be, now you're going to die. <laughs> You're going to die now, Adam. So, like, come on. Choices. Choices. God said red pill, blue pill. <laughs> red pill, blue pill. Red pill, life and blessings. Blue pill. Death and curses. Red pill, blue pill. You choose, Adam. What you want. Okay? So, when man chose to disobey God, this is what happened. They ultimately failed to meet the standard of God. Which essentially, which was essentially life and righteousness. They chose their own way and they chose, and the path that they chose was death. Okay? And remember, they failed to meet the standard of God because it was influenced by the one who first failed to meet the standard of God. That's why they failed. They failed because there was one that already failed. There was one that already had a vendetta against God. There was one who already had a... Already had it. And I can agree, it was a big test. It was a big test. It was a big test. So, at the end of the day, 
We have to remember that when, like I said, when God gave man the instruction, he told them, listen, and when God formed man and created man, they were made in the image and the likeness of God, which means they had free will. They had choice. Being made in the image and the likeness of God means you have free will and you have choice. Okay. So, so understand, understand that God was giving Adam a choice. He was giving Adam a choice as if God already knew he, the enemy was going to come. Think about it. He was giving him a choice as if he already knew the enemy was going to come. He says, listen. Life and, life and blessings or death and curses is in your power, Adam. It's in your power. There's evil amongst this world. The knowledge, the tree of knowledge and good of evil means there's evil in this world right now. Meaning there is evil lurking. And, and the evil that is lurking is a, is a spiritual evil. Is a spiritual wickedness. Oh, wasn't physical it was a spiritual wickedness that manifested in the in the in the form of a serpent very important for you to understand okay very important for you to understand so does that make sense are we following because we're almost done here we're making some good time i thought i would be here longer but Hey, we making some good time today. I ain't gonna lie. We making some good time. Okay. Now, this is what is t this is everything that has taken place in the and I'm so excited to give this message because I wanted to give this message for so long, bro. So long, so long, so long. And now finally is the time. Now, now, now finally is the time that that, that I'm giving this message, which I pray. That tonight has really enlightened your understanding to this point right now. I pray that God has given you clarity. Clarity of what today's topic is about. Okay? Okay? I pray. That's my prayer for you. And for all of those that have been here and tuned in, that you guys got some better clarity. Alright? So... The next subsection, whatever it's called, subsection, subtitle, I don't know, is when sin enters, when sin enters, death follows. Okay, when sin enters, when rebellion, remember, sin is rebellion. Right, sin is rebellion. Okay, sin is disobedience. So when you rebel, death follows rebellion. So don't ever think. When you sin, <laughs> you get in the way because death is right around the corner. Just saying. You chose it. You chose it. You can't be mad at nobody but yourself. You can't be mad at nobody but yourself, though. That's the reality. So when sin comes, when you, when you choose to sin, when you choose to sin, death is right around the corner. Right around the corner. Okay. Very important for you to understand. Now, now that sin entered the world through Adam's disobedient or disobedience. Now that sin entered the world since Adam's disobedience. It's important for us to understand that not only man and woman were cursed to death. This is this is this is interesting. Because many people forget this aspect that not only man and woman was cursed to death, but because of Adam's disobedience, it led to the ground being cursed. That means that means everything that comes to the ground, the trees are going to experience death. Grass will experience death. Plants will experience death. Water will dry up. When it's not supposed to dry up. The ground was cursed. So, it, so when Jesus came to restore, not only was he restoring man, but he was, he's also coming to restore the ground. 
He's also coming to restore everything. I'm telling you, bro. So much that took place just because man chose to do their own thing. Just because man chose to do their own will. Let's talk about it. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 19 says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you have cursed more than the cattle. Okay. Because you've done this, you curse more than the cattle. So that means that the, even the cattle is cursed. <laughs> even the cattle got to experience death. So that, the, bro, the, they're not even supposed to be getting chopped on the block right now. Them poor cows. Them poor pigs. Like, they ain't even supposed to be getting chopped right now. Okay, it says, it says, you are, he says, so the, uh, so the Lord said to the serpent, he's speaking to the serpent here, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. Okay, so he's speaking to the spirit within, within, right? He, he's speaking, he's speaking to the spirit within the serpent. Just like he just like God was using Ezekiel to speak to Satan in tear. Same thing. Same thing. More than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. But he's also cursing at the actual serpent because the crazy thing is the serpent actually had legs. That's where they get the dragon from. The serpent had four legs. That's where they get the dragon from. Crazy. Do your research, bro. On your belly, you shall go. And you shall eat dust. You shall eat, you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Do you know, when you, I watched enough Animal Planet to, to know this, right? Because, you know, in my days, I really used to like Animal Planet, for real. Interesting, animals are interesting. But when you, do you know that Snakes, the only way they see is from the eating of the dirt. Like, 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 like their, their vision is impaired. They only can see so much. They only can see so much. They only can see so much. They can't see. They can't see a lot. And their tongue, their tongue, that's why they go, tss. Because they're trying to get a sense of what of what's going on around them. Of, of, of what's around them. Of what direction to go. But it's the tss, tss. It's also the eating of the dirt. <laughs> so, he says, and... Okay, so he cursed he cursed the snake, right? Also cursed Satan though. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. So this is why the devil hates you so much. Okay? This is why the devil hates you ladies so much. Sorry, but because of disobedience, the enemy hates you. Which is why you experience a lot of hell on earth. Sorry. But you can blame Adam and Eve. Okay, okay, the enemy hates you. <laughs> this is really what it is. All right, it's really what it is. The enemy just don't like you. It's, he hates you, man. So, he says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He says, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He's speaking about what he's speaking about right now is the redemption. So, 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 although, although God is cursing them, he's basically saying, yeah, you may have cursed them, but I, I already have a redemption plan in order to get it, in order to get back. 
So, so that's what's going on right here in, in this, in this conversation that they're having. Well, the enemy is just listening, actually. In this, in this monologue, not dialogue, monologue, as he's giving him, <laughs> just telling him what it is, right? This is the redemption plan. He says, he shall bruise your heel and you, sh or he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. Yeah, so your sorrow goes across the board, ladies. Across the board. That's why y'all, that's why y'all so emotional. I promise you. <laughs> Read the book. Read the book. Conception. He says sorrow and conception. So sorrow and conception. And. So that means that's the reason for y'all being so emotional. That's why y'all always crying. That's why y'all that's why y'all always crying at what y'all crying. Right? But conception, he's talking about when you're giving a birth. Can you believe there was a time? Can, 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 you, can you believe that there, that, that there was a time where you ladies, you, wouldn't even, I, you weren't even in pain when you gave birth. Can you even imagine that for all the mothers out there? Could you even manage to imagine that? Like, you wasn't even in pain at one time. <laughs> wasn't even in pain, bruh. But due to sin, now you have to experience pain. It's tough. It's tough, but that's just the way it is. Since the worst pain, yeah, that's why all the videos, that's why all the videos, every every woman is just screaming like, ah. I'm not just playing with y'all. <laughs> Love y'all, man. Um, he says, in, con uh, in your conception, in pain, you shall bring forth children. In pain, you shall bring, bring, um, bring forth children. You shall, you shall. Oh, your desire shall be for your husband. Your husband. And he shall rule over you. No, there was no children here. There's no children here. Uh, it's just Adam and Eve. There's no children here until after they sinned. Then they had Cain and Abel. Verse um, verse 17. So that was to woman. That was the curse to woman. Now the curse to man. Okay. Then to man, then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, because you ain't listened to me and you listen to her. And have eaten from the tree, which I have commanded you saying, you shall not eat of it. Here it is, right here. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth. For you, even the even the ground feels pain. Even the ground feels pain. Mm, even the ground feels pain. Thorns and thistles is pain to the ground, to the earth. It was never God's intentions for it to take place. Never God's intention. That's crazy. There was just a huge dropout. Like we were just at 150 views and there was just a huge dropout of views just went straight down to 46. It's crazy. That's crazy. There was just, I just witnessed a huge dropout between a lot of people. A lot of people just got kicked out this live, bro. And that, that wasn't normal. That wasn't normal at all, at all. I just, I just, I just peeped at. So for everyone that's still here, the 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 enemy, the enemy is moving because the word was getting quick. the 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 word was moving. People were, 
For everyone that's still locked in, man, let's keep it going. So, so both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face, you, sh you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. So right there, he was just saying, literally just saying, that there was one point that you had life, but now that you disobeyed me, now that you now you have an expiration date. Now you have an expiration date. Now you're gonna have to go work for your food. It's, it's no longer it's no longer going to be provided around you. Now you have to work for your food. Now you gotta now you have to do. Now you have to do so much now. <laughs> Man's disobedience. Man's disobedience led to life on earth. Uh, oh. Man's disobedience led to life. Man's disobedience led to their life here on earth and earth experiencing death. So what that means is not only... Did Adam and Adam, which is mankind, right? Not only did Adam and mankind experience death, experience death. Life, I mean, the earth did too. The earth experienced death in a way that it should not been, it should have not experienced death at all. Death was something that God never wanted us to experience. But because... But because God stands on business, but because God is God, because God is a God of his word. If he says, if you disobey his instructions, he will cut you off. Then that's his word. And he has to go by his word. He has to go by his word. But it's crazy because. It, it's, it's crazy because, you know, even when God gave the word. Right. He gave his word, which was his word. He's telling them the curse. He still told the serpent that, listen. I know you had a huge doing and what took place in my presence. I know you had a good doing what took place here. But check this out. There's going to be there's going to one there's going to be one that's going to come greater, greater than you. There's going to come one that's going to stomp and have authority. Over you. So have fun right now. In this moment of time. Have fun right now. In this moment of time. But there's going to come a day. There's going to come a day. Where one's going to come greater than you. And trump you. Now this is beautiful. Because. The time. Yeah, Holy Spirit Recompense Clapback Program. That's what it was. He had a Holy Spirit Recompense camp Clapback Program. We love it. We love it. Now, what's dope about this is in this time, in this time, in the time where God sent Jesus, well, in the time where God sent Jesus, it was in a time where they would where they understood kingdom. The reason why God didn't send Jesus in the Old Testament is because they barely knew anything about kingdom. They barely understood how kingdom operated. How they didn't know about kingdom. So this is why they he sent Jesus in that Roman Empire. Because the, do you understand that the Roman Empire understood kingdom? Understood kingdom. They understood how kingdom actually worked. And that was the closest to kingdom that we were at in that time. In that time. Is this scripture or you? Read the book. Read the book. <laughs> read, read, read the book. Read the book. It's right there. Read the read. The encounter with Jesus in the Roman centurion. Go read the encounter. Read the read the encounter between the the centurion and Jesus when when there was when his son was sick. 
They understood how kingdom they they understood how kingdom end. <laughs> Read it. It's right there. It's right. It's literally right there, bro. So good though. So now, if you now check this out. So now that there's now that there's sin that entered the world. If you truly pay attention, if you truly pay attention to the Old Testament after chapter three, what you will see is man experiencing death here on this earth. What you are going to see is man try to live without God. You are going to see how unsuccessful man was at cultivating a life without God. You're going to see wickedness, which is the fruit of sin. You're going to see it. And you're going to see life play out throughout the Old Testament. So now that you see it, now that you see it, pay attention. Because the entire Old Testament is man trying to get to God. Man trying to figure out the spiritual void which is inside of them. They're trying to figure it out. Which is why the Spirit of God was so limited in the Old Testament. The Spirit of God was limited. The Spirit of God was only available to those who were holy. Holy. You had to be holy to step into the presence of God. The presence of God was so powerful that you could not have no sin. No sin. That's how wicked man was. So wicked man was. Man was so wicked, they weren't even able to step into the presence of God. Man was so wicked that even, even, see, here's the thing. When it came to the prophets, the spirit of God never dwelt inside of them. He only came upon them. Look at the Bible. Read the Bible. When you read the Bible, you are going to see that the spirit of God came upon all of his people. Came upon the Spirit of God only came within God's people. Only came within God's people in the New Testament when Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, listen, while Jesus was alive, the Holy Spirit was trapped inside one body who was Jesus Christ. But when Jesus died on the cross, when he died, he said it is finished. It is finished. And it is finished means now I am restoring you back to who you are. Holy Spirit, unlimited. Now we all, we all have access to the Holy Spirit. We all have access to the Holy Spirit. We all have access to him now. Now, there is no excuse no more. There is no excuse. So, read your Bible. Because when you read your Bible, you're going to be like, gosh, that boy... That boy's being some facts there. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. Now, but now that we understand this, okay? Now that we understand this, okay? Because now we live in a generation where the Holy Spirit is unlimited. Now you have no excuse. No excuse. Back then, they could make up all the excuses they want. Well, God, he's limited. God, he's limited. I'm not holy. I'm not holy. Now you got no excuse, bro. Okay? Now you got no excuse because you need to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand right now right now so for you to choose to partake in sin you're choosing death i just want you to understand that for 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 you to choose sin you're choosing death okay and where sin is is disconnect between you and god disconnect between you and god so that's something that you have to understand that as long as sin is present inside of you as long as there is little word inside of you, you're disconnected in areas where you should be connected. Meaning, this is why people, this is why people can have a belief in God, but be void of power. This is why people can have a belief in God and still get cast down into the fire. John chapter 15, you don't want me to talk about it. <laughs> you don't want me to talk about it. I talk about it all the time. I talk about it all the time. That you can have a belief in God and still get sent into the fire. Lord, Lord, for people, listen, listen. Lord, Lord, many, many people's gonna come to his name and say, 
Lord, Lord, for I did this in your name. I did this in your name. I did this in your name. Basically what they are saying, basically what they are saying is, well, God, in my mind, I bared fruits. <laughs> in my mind, I thought I was doing what you called me to do. But God is going to say, depart from me for I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Whoa. Whoa. He said there was there. See, see, there was you was paying so much attention to your actions that there was iniquity in your heart that was working. Mm. Mm. You was paying attention to so much that you were doing. That there was iniquity in your heart. Huh? Which is why. Which is why God measures us by our heart and not our outward appearance. He measures us by our heart and not our outward appearance. So family, iniquity is sin. It's essentially what iniquity is. It's the mystery. Of, the Bible talks about the mystery of iniquity. And the mystery of iniquity is the mystery within you that is keeping you disconnected from God. It's keeping you disconnected from God. He measures those good intentions. That's good because he definitely does. He definitely does. Definitely does. God measures everything. So hold on. Let's talk about it, though. What is sin? What, what is sin? Remember, family, we're talking about getting to the deep rooted issues. If you don't take the root out, the tree will still grow. If you don't take the root out, the weeds will still grow. If you don't uproot. If you don't uproot the sin out of your life, it's going to still have power in you. And the enemy's still going to have his foothold, which is why it's so easy for you to fall back into temptation, which is why it's so easy for you to backslide. Yes, a righteous man fall, a righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up. See, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people who don't get back up. There's a lot of people that fall and say, man, I fell. Might as well just keep falling. So we have to get back up. But see, when you get back up, you were a righteous man will fall. But when he gets back up, he says, OK, what is the root to my problems here? What is the root? What is the root to what's going on here? Because a righteous man says, I want to continue to be righteous, God. I, I, I want to continue to walk in the ways that you need me to walk in, God. I, I don't want to be here. I, I don't want to be in this place. I don't want to be this worker of iniquity. God, so show me. Reveal to me the areas of darkness that is in my heart. Show me. Because, Father, if I don't know it, if I'm losing in the battle of the unseen, Father, if I don't know, I'm going to continue to keep on stumbling, Father. And I don't want to be the righteous man that falls seven times. Father, one is enough. One is enough, Father. One is enough. Father, you sent your Holy Spirit to lead me, to guide me, to teach me. Please, Lord, show me. That's how your heart needs to be towards God. If you want to be a wise man, a righteous man, a righteous woman, a wise woman. That's how your heart needs to go. That's how sincere you need to be. But see, now... Now you have to be willing to go into the depth because the depth is ugly. I tell you, <laughs> oh boy, is the depth ugly when you start to realize how ugly it is. Oh man, is it ugly? It's ugly, bro. It's ugly, but it, it may be ugly, but it's necessary. It may be ugly, but it's necessary. All right, that pruning process, it hurts. It hurts. The wind is cutting off people. Wind is cutting off family. Wind is cutting off drugs. Wind is cutting off addictions. When is it ever? When, when is it ever easy? There's sin that is condemned into our flesh. What that means is, family, if sin is condemned in our flesh, that means you can't run from it. <laughs> that means you can't run from it. You have to learn how to suppress it. 
You have to learn. You Listen, you have to learn how to fight it and how to win the battle. And the Holy Spirit is the way. He's the only way. He is the only way that you are going to win in this world. He is the only way. Go ahead and try to beat. Go ahead and try to beat sin and fleshly temptations within your own power. Within your own power, your own will. You're always going to backslide. Exactly. You can't. You need God. You need God. Everybody put in the comment section, I need God. Because the Bible says that you need God to bear fruit. So if you don't have God in your life, you're going to need him in your life to bear fruits. You're going to need God. <laughs> we can't do nothing without him. I need God. I need God just as much as y'all need God. We all need him. We all need him. We just have to get to that point where we say, Father, I'm nothing without you. Father, I'm nothing without you. <laughs> nothing without you. Come on. What is sin? Let's talk about it real quick. Let's talk about it. I'm going to end it off with this for you guys. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this sin problem. I ended with this. I didn't give you guys enough information tonight. I know you guys are at information overload. But I believe that tonight was necessary. Um, tonight was necessary and this word was necessary because like I said, we did cover a lot. But like I said, you should understand the beginning now. It's like, you, like you should understand the beginning now. <laughs> like if you, if, you don't, if you don't understand the beginning now, then... Boy, you gotta go watch the you gotta go watch the recording. You gotta go watch the recording. You gotta go look at the recording. Gotta listen to it again. Listen to it again. But see, see, it's when it makes sense is when the truth will set you free. Woo! It's when it makes sense. Most people ain't free because the truth don't make sense. I promise you, most people ain't free from the bondage in their life because the truth, the truth, it it ain't hit yet. <coughs> it ain't hit yet. It ain't hit yet. But when the when the truth comes in, when the truth comes in, boy, it's gonna set you free. It's gonna set you free. And you will no longer be workers of iniquity. And you will be workers of righteousness, peace, and joy. Because that's what the kingdom of God entails. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Exactly. Those shackles will be broken. Telling you, it's a beautiful thing when you are able to walk in the fullness of God. Like I told you, most people are not walking in the fullness of God today because they are still dabbling. They're still dabbling with areas of darkness in their life. In some way, some shape, some form, they're still entertaining the devil. They're still entertaining the devil. And I'm, that's what I'm telling y'all, bro. Stay in this place because there's so many things to learn. But like I was telling you guys every single day for the last 54 days, is we are in a season of acceleration. Now, we are in a season of acceleration where God wants to take you from like this. Right? You only can go as far as your understanding, but check this out. You only can go as far as your understanding, but here's the thing. We all must get discipled, but you only can truly go as far as the one that is discipling you. If, we, if discipleship is necessary, if discipleship is necessary, then you only can go as far as the one who's truly discipling you. Because you can try to do it by yourself. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can try to do it by yourself. It may take you longer. But you'll get it. It may take you longer. But I'm telling you, find a mentor. Find a teacher, a pastor that you trust, that you see the Holy Spirit illuminating through. <laughs> That you see the Holy Spirit illuminating through. Because that's the key. The Holy Spirit must be speaking. <laughs> and uh, hey, listen. Spirit testifies the Spirit. Real talk. Spirit testifies the Spirit. Okay? And like I said, even I had to be discipled. To even get to this place, I had to be discipled. Okay? Find somebody. Most of you guys, y'all is already here. Welcome to Kingdom University. I'm your professor speaking. I'm here to teach you everything you know, need to know so you can get accelerated to the next level in your life. Real talk. <laughs> Most of y'all is already present. 
Ain't God good? He said, he said, look no further. Look no further. Because you have arrived. You have arrived. You have arrived. You have arrived. So, what is sin? What is sin? Very important for us to understand. Sin is described in the Bible as transgression of the law. Okay? Sin is described in the Bible as transgression of the law and rebellion against God. So, so sin, the law, hold on, boop, backtrack. The law, it's very important for you to understand that the law is the standard. <laughs> the standard, okay? The law is the standard, family. Okay, the law is the standard of what God expects us to live by. Now, if we fail to meet God's standard, then we fail God. If we fail to meet God's standard, then we fail as a product. If God is the manufacturer and we are the product and we fail to do what a product is supposed to do, then it's time for us to get recalled. And if we get recalled, for the most part, we get thrown away. We get torn apart for parts <laughs> and used for a new product. So don't get recalled. Telling you, don't get recalled because that fire boy, hey, is that is that fire going to be not good, not good. So don't get recalled as a product. Sin had its beginning with Lucifer, who was the most beautiful and powerful of the cherubs of the angels. Okay, and we learned about this. We learned about this. Not. Lucifer wasn't content with his position. He desired to be higher than God. And that was his downfall. The beginning of sin. So sin entered and sin was in its beginning because of Lucifer. And that's why there was knowledge of evil when God gave him the instructions. He said, don't eat of the tree. <laughs> don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because evil existed. Because Lucifer, he started it. He started it. And it all, it all happened right here. In his heart. It all happened right here. Very important for you to understand. Okay. Now, it was the beginning of sin. Lucifer was renamed Satan. And now his identity changed. Remember, Lucifer was his beautiful name. <laughs> Lucifer was the name given to him by God in his most, that was the perfect name for him. Beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> but Satan was his damn name. <laughs> that was his reduced name. His reduced to dirt name. Stuff. Stuff. That was his name. That was his name. That, that's the name that hold no power for real. <laughs> he brought sin to the human race in the Garden of Eden. Okay. He brought sin to the human race. He, 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 he brought it there. Literally. Came as. Came at, remember, he came as the serpent. Brought it to him. Did God really say that? Did God really say that you cannot? Did God really say? I mean, so he had a mission. He brought sin. He brought the rebellion to them. They didn't even know what rebellion was, bro. He brought it to them. He brought sin to the human race in the Garden of Eden where he tempted Adam and Eve with the same enticement, with the same, the same, Temptation. You shall be like God. You shall be like God. That's a great question. If Satan was never created, would there still be sin? It's a great question. I ain't gonna lie. That's a great question. More than likely not. <laughs> More than likely not. If Satan wasn't created, there wouldn't be a rebellion. 
There, would, there wouldn't be a re rebellion. <laughs> so, he said, you shall be not, you shall be like God. And Genesis describes, Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3 describes Adam and Eve's rebellion against God and his, rebe and his rebellion to the com command. Since that time, sin has been passed down through generation to generation to generation and the generations of mankind. Adam's descendants have inherited sin from him. Very important for you to understand. So then we wouldn't have purpose. No, we would have purpose because God created us before. Be, God created us with purpose in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. That was the purpose. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and have dominion. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. <laughs> now, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Romans chapter 5, verse 12, tells us that through Adam, sin entered the world. And so death was passed down to all men because the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, though if you choose to partake with, if, if you choose to partake with sin, it is equivalent to death. Is it, is it a, it's equivalent to being dead. So don't sin. Through Adam... The inherent inclination to sin entered the human race, and human beings became sin by nature. When Adam sinned, his inner nature was transformed by his sin of rebellion, bringing him to spiritual death and depravity that would be passed down or passed on to who came after him. And the reason why it was passed down is because since his, since his inside and his spiritual was transformed, remember, Adam holds the seed. And man is the seed. So every single seed that was inside of Adam, thousands, millions of them, millions of them, all marinating, marinating in Adam. It, it, it's, just, it's just marinating, marinating. Right? So, so those seeds is just marinating in sin. And that's how sin is passed down. Because the sin is in you. And so, it, and so, and so is the seed. <clears throat> now, we are sinners because we sin. And we sin because we are sinners. This passed on depravity is known as inherited sin. Just as we inherit physical characteristics from our parents, okay? We inherit our sinful nature from Adam. King David lamented this condition of fallen human nature. In Psalms chapter 51, verse 5, and it says, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. It's crazy. It's crazy. Nobody is innocent. When your mother conceived you, you were already a sinner. Not even babies. Not even babies. From disobedience. Babies ain't even innocent. When a baby comes out the womb, he is tainted by sin. Generational. Generational. We inherit sin as soon as we come out the womb. As soon as we come out the womb. What if you sin, what if you sin so much then God won't forgive? It's possible to lose your salvation. If you sin so much, you're not even of God. You're not even of God if you sin too much, if you sin so much. You don't even love God. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commands. Gotta keep it. If you, if you say you love him, you gotta keep it. Hey, that's just the way it is. 
We all live in the same gener we all live in the same world. That's just the way the world is. It's our fault. Not our fault, but Adam's fault. Really, man's fault. Right? So one of the first type of sins that we have to understand is inherited sin. Inherited sin. So that's something we got no control over because we just inherited it from Adam. Okay? So that's why evil be happening in this world, bro. That's why evil happens in this world. That's why we go through what we go through because there's inherited sin. So as long as there is inherited sin, then tough. Okay. Another type of sin. An another type of sin. Another type of sin is known as imputed sin. Imputed sin. Imputed sin is the result of our uh, is the result of our imputed sin is the result of our having been credited with guilt of Adam's sin. To impute is to take something that belongs to someone and credit it to another to another's account. Okay. Adam an imputed sin is Adam's guilt attributed to or credited to uh, us. All human beings are counted as having sin in Adam and thus deserving the same punishment for sin as Adam. After Adam's sin, everyone, because remember, in Adam was everyone. In Adam was everyone, mankind, everyone. After Adam's sin, everyone was subject to death even before the Mosaic law was given because of imputed sin, which affects our standing before God. Now, God used the principle of imputation to benefit mankind when he imputed the sin of believers to the account of Jesus. Who paid the penalty for the sin uh, for that sin, death, sin and death on the cross. Imputing our sins to Jesus, God treated him as if he was a sinner, though he was not. And had him die for the sins of the entire world. John, first John 2, 2. First John chapter 2, verse 2. It is important for us to understand that sin was imputed to him, but he did not inherit it from Adam. He bore the penalty of sin, but he never became a sinner. His pure and perfect nature was untouched by sin. He was treated as though he were guilty of all the sins ever committed by the human race, even though he never committed one. God then imputed the righteousness of Christ to believers and credited our accounts with his righteousness just as he had credited our sins to Christ. Credited our sins to Christ's account, to Christ's life. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse, tw uh, verse 21. Hope you guys are following. That's imputed sin. Imputed sin. Okay. A third type of sin. A, a third type of sin. Okay. Here we go. A third type of sin is personal sin. Personal sin. That which is committed every day by every human being. Every human being. Because we have inherited a sin nature from Adam, we commit individual personal sins 
everything from seemingly innocent untruths to murder. Every day. Whether it's innocent, whether it's the worst of the worst. Every day. Those who have not placed their faith in Jesus Christ must pay the penalty for these personal sins as well as inherited and imputed sin. However, believers have been freed from the eternal penalty of sin, hell and spiritual death. We now also have the power to resisting sin. Now we can choose whether or not to commit personal sins because we have the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, what gives us self-control. Sin control. You have control over your sin now. At one point, you didn't have control over your sin. Now you have self-control, which is sin control. You can control that desire. You can control that nature. You can control that flesh, which you weren't able to do before when you were not of God. So self-control, sin control, found in the Holy Spirit, controlling your body and your temple. When we do sin, the Spirit convicts us. Okay? You know you're sinning. Because the Spirit is telling you, hey, you better cut that out. So you know you're sinning. The Spirit's going to go, hey, you better cut that out, bro. That's not good for you. That's how you know you're sinning. The Spirit going to tell you. It's going to tell you. Okay? Once we confess our personal sins and ask God for forgiveness for them, we are restored to perfect fellowship and communion with him. He restored what was lost in the garden. In the garden was perfect fellowship and communion with him. That was in the garden. Perfect fellowship and communion. We lost that. Now you are able to have perfect fellowship and communion when you confess your sins. When you give up your old ways. When you choose God and not the devil. It's a beautiful thing, honestly. Jesus was the... I want you guys to understand that Jesus set the standard. And he showed us that it's possible to live sinless. Jesus was the standard and he showed us that with the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to commit sin. So although nobody is perfect, you should still strive to perfection. Real talk. Like perfection should be what you are striving for. If you are not striving to perfection, then what are you striving for? If you are not striving to the place where God wants you to be, like, like do you understand that, that, that perfection is where God wants you to be? Like a lot of people look at the scripture where God says be perfect. When Jesus tells him, tells him to be perfect. They say, I can't do that. Jesus is telling you to. <laughs> Je Jesus is telling you to be perfect. Like, like he's saying it's possible. It wouldn't be in your word if it wasn't possible, family. Come on. We have to believe that it's possible because he wouldn't tell us to do the impossible. Because all things is possible through the Holy Spirit that is working within us. And it's either the Holy Spirit that is working and doing the good work in you. Or it's the work of iniquity that is working in you and doing its good work. You know when you are wrong. You know when you are wrong. You know when you, when you are walking in sin. Choose to do right, family. 
choose to wake up every single day to do right, to do, to do better than who you were yesterday. You should wake up every single day and say, I wasn't. I wasn't who I am. I, I, I fell short yesterday. And maybe it's in the little things, like your attitude, the way you was thinking, some of the choices that you made, how you treated people. Doing better in your emotions. Choose to do better. Choose to do better because when you when you do better, you get better. When you when you do better, you get better. And if you want to get better results with your life, remove the sin from your life. Truly, truly. If you want to do better with your life, bro, choose life. Choose life. Life and blessings or death and curses is in, the, is in the power of your decisions that you make every day. Every day. That's what it comes back down to, family. Life comes back down to the choices that you make. So you have to choose to make the better decisions. You have to choose to be better in decisions. Life, life or death is in the power, as much as it's in the power of your tongue, it's in the power of the decisions that you make. And the decisions that you make is more powerful than your words, bruh. Because you can say, 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 God, I love you, 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 but your actions show your love. Your actions are the manifestation of the love that you have for God. And if you're choosing sin, do you love God? Truly, like, like for real. Really think about it. If I am choosing to willfully sin, how can I truly say I love God? When God hates sin. So, so we have to, we have to choose better. That's it. That's all it comes down from, family. That's all it comes down to. We have to choose better. And see, when we, when we choose to be obedient to the instructions, family. Adam failed to obey the instructions. God laid out, Adam, choose life or death. Adam, I have placed you in abundance. I have placed you in the I have placed you in life and now you have the opportunity to choose. The same decision that God has given Adam is the same decision that God has given you every single day you open your eyelids. Every single day you open your eyelids, God is saying, my son, my daughter, choose life or death today. Choose life or death today, my daughter and my son. You know, this is up to you. What do you want? What do you want? Family. 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 If we confess our sins... God is so faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. And see, the one thing that you have to do in your walk with God is to look, go to the bathroom or wherever there's a mirror. Look in the mirror and say, God, I've been the problem, God. I've been the problem, God. I've been the issue. You have, like, you have, like, I've been the problem. I've been the issue, Lord. I've been it. It's been me. It ain't even been you, God. I'm sorry for putting the blame on you. I'm sorry for putting the blame on Adam. I'm sorry for putting the blame on everybody else around me. I'm sorry for putting the blame on my environment. I'm sorry to put the blame on my parents. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Father. I understand that I'm at the more I'm at the moral age where I can make moral decisions and I can choose life and death. <laughs> I can choose life or death, life or death. And Father, 
You do see my heart, Father, but also, Father, you see that 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 iniquity is working within my heart. And Father, you see that that there is there is deceitfulness that is working in my heart, Father. You see it. And I'm not going to use that I'm not perfect that you see my heart, Father, to could for me to continue to keep on sinning. I'm not going to use that, Lord. I love you too much. I love you too much, Lord, to stay where I'm at right now. I love you too much not to be bearing fruits. I love you too much just to have a belief but not being fruitful. I love you too much, God. Show me, show me the darkness that is inside of me. Show me, show me what I got going on. Father, because I, I, I want to humble myself. I want to humble myself under your mighty hand. Because if I don't, I won't experience everything that you want me to experience, Father. Father, it's taking so much out of me to get to this place. It's taking so much out of me to get to this place of humility, Father. This is so beyond me. This is, so, this is not like me, Lord. But Father, I trust you. I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. I trust you. Father, I failed myself. I failed you. I missed the mark. I missed the mark. I fell into sin one too many times, Father. I know a righteous man falls seven times. Father, but I don't even want to fall once, Lord. Father, you give me, you, you, you give me the power of the Holy Spirit that comes to dwell in me. Father, I just ask that you teach me how to stay away from this sin. Father, I just ask that you show me, show me what I need to do. Show me what I need to do to get rid of this. Because in this state of sin that I am in, that I am in, I don't want to be here no more. I don't want to be here no more. Father, without you, I am nothing. Without you, I am nothing. It don't matter all this stuff that I done built up in this world. It don't matter the followers. It don't matter the fame. It don't matter the fortune. It don't matter my career. It don't matter anything. If I don't have you, I have nothing. I have nothing. If I have nothing. We have to be willing to put it all at the feet of the cross. We have to be willing to put it all. Are you giving him all of you or just part of you? Are you coming to God sincere in heart? Because he sure does see your heart. And for us to try to manipulate God. You're working out of the iniquity that's in your heart. If you try to, if you try to, if you try to manipulate God, you are working out of the darkness that is in you. So you must go to God and ask him to reveal to you the mystery of iniquity that is inside of you. Because it is, it is working in you. It is working in you. And you have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. I'm telling you, this is the only way to get to the next level in your relationship with God. There is glory that God has for you. God has a plan for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. And plans to give you a future. Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a plan for you. And so does the devil. So does the devil. The devil has counterfeit for you. The devil has selfish desires. Your selfish desires have to change to be. Listen, there's a difference between godly ambition and selfish ambition. What do you want to do to further the kingdom of God? God didn't put a vision inside of you. He done put a plan inside of you. And so did the devil. The devil's plan for your life is for you to seek yourself and for you to chase after your own desires. 
that are not pleasing to God. Your own desires that is not bringing fruits, that is not bringing the kingdom come. That is chasing after. I'm telling you, boy. Telling you, bro. Most of us have selfish desires that we are trying to mask as godly desires. We have to change it up. Most of the desires we live in, remember, family, remember, we live in a sinful world. We live in a broken world. Most of the ideas that were given to you that were planted in your mind to say, go this way, go that way, go this way. This is the best for you. This is this. Chase this. Chase this. That was all planted in you by the devil. By the devil. Most of the things that you desire, <laughs> the godly things that you can de desire, is truly, is truly going to be found within the spirit that is inside of you who is the Holy Spirit. We live in a system that does not want you to have a relationship with God. We live in a system that is designed for you to fail. A design that is designed to distract you from the will and the purpose of God for your life. We live in a system that is designed that way. And see, your purpose is not found looking at career paths. No, 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 no. Those were distractions. Why do you think they've been indoctrinating us since the beginning of school? Those are distractions. Those are misdirections. The world and the system of this world teaches us we have to go outside to find purpose. We have to, we, it's found, purpose is found looking outwards. But see, your purpose is, has always been trapped within you. It's always been there. See, the beautiful thing about God is he always placed the purpose of a thing within the thing. A fish didn't have to go take swimming lessons to learn how to swim. Its purpose was already designed and built within it. A bird didn't have to, to go to flight school to learn how to fly. Its purpose of flight was already built in it. A tree didn't have to go to tree school, however, whatever the tree school is called, gardening class, gardening program, whatever, to learn how to become a tree. The purpose of the tree was found in the seed. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is purpose is found within you. He said, I had to go to military school to receive my first spoken word. You can believe that to be true. But I don't believe it. I don't believe that. I just believe that's just the path that through the choices you made, through the through the through the hand that you was dealt, that's where God led you to. But I'm telling you where purpose is found. Purpose is found on the inside. Most people are growing up in environments that wasn't able to cultivate the purpose in them, which is why you took the path that you took. I'm telling you, it all comes back to environment. Environment. Your environment shapes the decisions that you make. See, people, people think that I that this had to be it. This had to be it. No, no, it didn't. You think though. You think so though. You think so. But that's just because the environment you was raised in, that's the path that God took you in. You didn't have to go there. You didn't. If you had the proper environment and the proper discipleship and the proper teaching from your parents, you would have ended up somewhere a lot faster. <laughs> environment is everything. Most people are products of their environment. Most people... Had to had to break, break, break past the environment. 
Most people, see, see, God took you in that direction because he knew you wasn't able to hear a word of God in your environment. You wasn't able to hear the word because your environment was choking the word. So he had to separate you from your environment. He had to send you somewhere else so you can hear him. Because your environment was not a place of growth. Your environment was not a place of cultivation. I am the way I am. I understand what I understand because of the environment that God placed me in. I was blessed to come from a single family household. No father in my life to teach me the ways. God fearing mother to show me how the Holy Spirit is my Abba, is my father. <laughs> like I said Your beliefs is your beliefs It is what it is You are where you are for a reason The reality is It is what it is It is what it is Your life shows The truth People's life shows the truth God is calling us to make impact God is calling us to bear fruit in our life. The way that you, the way or that you are produced shows the level of where you are supposed to be and where God needs you to be at. So at the end of the day, I don't argue with people about what is truth, what is not truth. We look at the lives. We look at the lives. How impactful are you when it comes to bringing the kingdom to the earth? What are you doing to make an impact? Because the reality is you only can go as far as what you know. If you truly understood and was hearing the voice of God, most people will be farther in their life right now. Having impact. Having impact. This is reality. It's just a reality. Most people will be farther. Most people say, I was hearing God. I had a belief in God. I had a relationship with God. But like I said, the Bible says this too. The Bible says this too. There, there, there's evidence of the Holy Spirit in our life. I'm saying there's evidence of the Holy Spirit moving in our life. And it comes with, it comes with impact. It comes with movement. It comes with whew, power, bro. Power. That's what it comes with. It comes with known power. Look at the life of Jesus. When he was moving in the fullness of God, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, in the most pure form, he had crowds after crowds after crowds, crowds after crowds after crowds. <sighs> I'm telling you, the impact of what you are supposed to make is greater than what you think. It's greater than what you think. It's just there is a lack of understanding, so you haven't experienced the greatness yet. No, you you haven't ex you haven't experienced you have you barely experiencing what God really wants you to experience because there's things that is not yet cultivated within you and that's all it is that's all it is there's levels to the walk with God levels to this walk with God everybody is at their own levels. And like I said, your life is a demonstration of what level you are at. But I'm here today to tell you that I did not have to go through <laughs> the system of this world to figure out what my purpose was. You don't have to go through that. You don't have to go to, through the system to figure out <laughs> what your purpose is. You don't have to go through the options that they tell you <laughs> to know what your purpose is. I'm just keeping it honey. You don't have to. You choose. You choose. Choose to obey. Choose to listen. And choose that. Everybody serves a different purpose. Like I said, many are called, few are chosen. There's some that make great impact for the kingdom of God. For real. There's some that make great impact in their name. Just look at Solomon. His name went throughout the nations. 
throughout the nations. There's people that are called to make a national impact. And there's people that are called to make a city impact. Or their family impact. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, not everybody is called to be king. Not everybody is going to be king. Not everybody is going to be queen. But you could be the king in your thing, in your assignment. And, and that's just the reality. Everybody's purpose is different. Some people's purpose is to go to a doctor. Some people's purpose is to be the light in the doctor field, to be the light in the military, to be the light in the um, wherever career path people say God lead them to. I'm not God, so I can't tell you where he leads you to. But all I know, we are all royalty, though. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's not what I'm saying. We are all royalty. But what I'm saying is our royalty is demonstrated differently between our assignments and what God believes that we can hold. I'm telling you, we all have, we all, we all hold it. We all have the, I, I'm, what I'm telling you is, is every single one of you have the potential to make national impact. But most people won't. Only few. Everybody has the potential to go outside of their purpose. I mean, not outside of their purpose. To, to expand into their purpose on a national level, on a global level. But a few people, well, only few people will. You have the potential too, but your level of obedience... And the level of what you understand can take you there. That's it. You only can go as far as what you understand. You only can go as far as the level of word that is inside of you. And the level of obedience that you have. I'm telling you, we all have. We all have it in us to do it because the Holy Spirit is unlimited in us. We all have it. But few step into it. Few step into it. And see, I can't, I can't, I can't limit myself to my city. I can't limit myself to my state. Because what God has called me to do is on a national level. Because that's what I want to believe. There's people that don't want to be king, don't want to be queen. No, no, no. I know God has placed me on this earth to make a global impact. Global. Impact. National impact. But it all comes back down to your ideas. Your beliefs. And what you got. That's up to you, family. Your purpose is found within the cultivation of... Of your relationship with God, man. It, it truly is. It truly is. The more and more you begin to sit with God, the more and more he will lead you into direction. Open up the word. You say, I'm shy though. I was too. What's your point? I, I was shy too. I was shy in this walk. I, I was shy. I... I never knew I was going to do this. But it took me spending time with God to get to this position, to get to this place. It truly did. It truly did. And when you know who you are, and when you know your purpose, and you know your identity in Christ, when you don't care about what other people think, because like I said, once this shuts off, down to business. Once this shuts off, once this live shuts off, I'm still doing my purpose. I'm still planning the impact within the states before I can go national to a global level. So, like I said, revival is here. Revival is here for those who want to step into it. You have to step into the spirit of revival that is coming upon us. You have to step into it. God is trying to revive those who have been dead. And all you have to do is submit to the will and submit to God. 
Many people's fires and lights has been dimmed. And all you got to do is step into the will and for the, in the purpose of God and be obedient. So family, it all come, this walk comes back down to your level of obedience. And this walk comes back down to your level of discipline. Hmm. Choose life and blessings instead of death and curses, family. Because when sin comes in, death is right behind it. When sin comes in, <sighs> death follows, man. Choose life starting with today. Choose life starting with right now. For you being here on this live, choose life. Choose life. Choose God. Only in, in obeying the instructions of God will life happen for you. Don't be walking dead. Don't be walking dead. Because walking dead gets you nowhere. Nowhere. Do not, do not build vainly. Do not build. <laughs> do not build up selfish desires. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Chase after the heart of God. Chase after the heart of God. And you guys got it. You guys got it. You guys got it. You guys got it. Choose God today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Life is too short for you to wait. Life is too short for you to play and entertain the devil. Way too short. Way too short. Stop playing with your eternal life. Family, just look at what happened. I know you guys noticed that Instagram was down. Facebook was down. I hope you guys noticed. Look around us. Preparation for things is going down. What if the internet goes down? Now what? What you doing? If the internet goes down, do you lose your life? If, you're, if the internet goes down, if we go into a global EMP, if we go into a global EMP and the internet goes down, what happens? Because many people, many people is going to be forced to panic. They're not going to know what to do. Because some people, for some people, the internet is their life. I'm telling you. Be aware of what's going on right now. Be aware of what's going on right now. Because things is moving. What we do. Prepare. You better learn. You better learn basic life skills. You better learn. You better start to learn basic life skills. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, how to survive. How to survive. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. One thing I learned is there's going to come a day that we may experience, we may not experience. Where the Bible is not going to be present and you're only going to be able to depend on the voice of God. You make sure you're ready for that day. You, you, you make sure you're ready for if you hear the voice of God tell you to go, <laughs> you better move. You better move. There's going to come a day. It's already written. It's already written. Many people are too comfortable in where they're at right now, in this little life that they have built. But when there's a shakening going on, how are you going to, when there's a shakening going on in life, 
What's going to happen? What you going to do? The Bible says to write the word on the tablets of your heart. Bind it around your neck. Most people, you only know the Bible because you just got it on your phone. <laughs> Most people only know the Bible because you only got it on your little pocketbook. It's time to prepare. It's time to prepare. I don't, I don't say that to put fear in you because the spirit, listen, the spirit of God don't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So I don't put this to put fear in you. I put this for you can be aware and so you can wake up because you've been sleeping for too long. You've been sleeping for way too long. Because when it comes to the day of persecution, when they put that to your, what you gonna do? You gonna renounce? Or you gonna say, go ahead, do it? When they put that, what you gonna do? You gonna say cut? Or are you gonna say I don't believe? When they come to you and say, Oh, you don't got it? Oh, oh you, you don't got it here? Oh, you can't buy no groceries. You you can't buy no groceries. Oh, you're not, you're not marked? You're not stamped? Oh, you can't shop here. What you gonna do? The church is sleeping. The church is sleeping. Sleeping. Wake up. Wake up, family. Wake up. We have a mission to do. Kingdom come is the mission. Kingdom come is the mission. You have a heavenly assignment that you are called to live out here on this earth. Don't think you're just here to just have a belief in God and wait until you go to heaven. The Bible says that the end is not coming until the kingdom, the world... The kingdom of God is preached throughout all the nations. Many people haven't learned the kingdom of God yet. Many people don't even know the kingdom of God yet. Many people don't even understand the kingdom of God yet. All they know is about the kingdom. They don't know the kingdom. The kingdom of God ain't, ain't really taught here in our church. It's not taught in our church. It's not taught in the congregation. It's just a whole bunch of feel good. A whole bunch of feel good. They just want you to feel good about your walk. Feel good about your walk. Feel good about your sin. Your sin should make you feel uncomfortable. Your sin should, your sin should make you feel sick. The reason why most people get sick is because there's sin in your life. I'm here to tell you today that I haven't been to the doctors in the last, for real, 15 years. I haven't gotten no jab in the last, I don't know how when, I don't know how long. I don't remember the last time I got sick because sickness does not, in, sickness does not, should not be in your temple. It's not normal. It's not normal. Stop normalizing sickness. Eat the right foods. Put the right things in your body. Put the right things in your mind. Church today is sick. Literally. I walked in. I was working as custodian as a church at the church. I worked for a, as the custodian as the church. 
God had me be custodian before I can even teach, before I could even preach. He said, you're going to be the custodian and do what they don't want you to do. He said, you're going to be the custodian. You're going to serve the church. Before you can even get up there and speak. And he had words given to me as I was serving that confirmed everything of where I, the place that where I'm at right now. But as I was working at the church, the one thing, the one thing that I seen, the one thing that I seen, and it made no sense to me. It made no sense to me. I seen so many people walk in that church sick, leave sick, walk back in that church the next week sick, leave sick. And I seen the same sick and tired people of being sick and tired walk in and out of the church. And that's when I realized there's a problem with the church. We entering the presence of God, are we not? In the presence of God is life, no sickness and disease. And that's when I seen the problem. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. We are the church. There's more power in what's going on right here. Right here in this gathering place. On the internet. There's, no, there's more power and revelation and understanding that's, being, that's here than you have in the, that you had in the church in a long time. I promise you, I promise you, and it's by the, 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 the grace of God that we still have this, that we still have this, because if this was to get taken down, your only dependency is that word, is that word, it's your only dependency, that's the only, that's the only thing you're going to be dependent on, we can't, we can't trust we can't trust what is being preached from the pulpit now. That's crazy. Crazy. We can't trust it no more. Cannot trust. The church is no longer the place where believers can get fed. I'm talking about the building. Because re religion has infiltrated. And where religion is, there is no power. And that's what God showed me. He said, Kaika, look. He said, Kaika, look. Look at the entire body right now, Kaika. They show up every single Sunday for religious practices. But after Sunday, they go back to their sinful and iniquity ways. And they come here to feel good about themselves. They take no accountability and they're not being fruitful. Kaika, the reason why the church today is not effective is because they truly don't believe what they are reading. The reason why the church today is not effective is because they truly are not understanding what they are reading. They're waiting for me to come back, Kaika. They're sitting at, they're sitting at home as couch potatoes, not doing nothing. For the kingdom of God. Not doing nothing. They come to church. And all that is on their mind. Is the food that they going to go eat after church. It's a nice little lunch that they going to have. They're setting up altars in the church. Kaika look. They got a clothing store. They got coffee. They selling books and merchandise. The church has now become a store, Kaika, and it's become a shop. And when you read the book, Kaika, when you read the book and you look at what I did, when, 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 when you look at what I did in the temple, what did I do? I flipped tables, Kaika. I flipped tables. I flip tables, Kaika. So obviously, something is off here.
Family, as of right now, the state of the the state of heaven is in emergency. Is is it's an emergency, family. It's an emergency. The sirens in heaven is going off. Because there is more hell on earth than heaven on earth today. The sirens of heaven is going off right now saying, listen, mayday, mayday, it's go time. Children of God, we got to get into order. We got to get into order. It's an emergency. And we got to get right. We, get a, we got to get right. And it all starts with you. It all starts with you, family. This entire, this entire kingdom come starts with you. You choosing God today can make the greatest impact for the kingdom of God. But you will never know until you step into it. You choosing God today can lead Lead so many people to being effective to the kingdom of God in the kingdom of God, and it starts with you today. It starts with you today, right now in this hour, because you don't have to be here. You do not have to be here right now. You do not have to be here in fellowship with the true church, with the true remnant. You do not have to be here. But if you are here, I truly believe that God only leads the chosen here. The chosen. You have been chosen for such a time as this. And now is the time for you to get your act right and stop entertaining the devil and step into everything and the greatness that God has called you to step into. You are chosen. You have not, you, this is not by accident. This is not by accident. Not by accident. It's time for you to rise up. And God is calling you up to a higher level than you have been at. And God said you can either step into the constant acceleration that is taking place in this season in the spirit. Because if you don't know what time it is in the spirit, you won't ever step into it. What I'm telling you is right now, the time of it in the spirit is acceleration. You can step into it or you don't have to step into it. But what I'm telling you is God is moving. God is moving because the state of heaven is in emergency. Emergency. And he is moving. At a rapid pace because what he needs to happen before Jesus comes back. What he needs to happen before Jesus comes back. Before he makes his return is a lot. First and foremost, a lot needs to take place. A lot. And he's going to need your help. He's going to need your help. He's going to need your obedience. And all the people that say God don't need me, that's a lie from the pit from hell. To keep you complacent. God does need you. Because the only way for God to get things done here on this earth is through man. Because we are the bridge. We are the bridge for God getting things done here on this earth. We are the bridge. I'm telling you. We have been lied to. We have been lied to. I'm telling you, the spirit of God is all over you guys. The spirit of God is literally calling you guys. The spirit of God is literally, literally saying, come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. Family. Where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. And I truly believe that everybody that is here tonight, God wants to encounter you in a way that you have not been encountered with the Holy Spirit today. Uh, with the Spirit. God wants you to experience His love tonight. God wants you to experience his presence tonight. God wants you to experience kingdom come tonight. I don't know where you've been with God. I don't know how far. I don't know how far you were with God. I don't know how much in disobedience you've been walking. But I'm here today to tell you that the devil has been making you think that you were far. <laughs> the devil has been making you think that you were far and he's a liar. And he is sent from the pit of hell to deceive you and make you think that. Because the truth is, you are one decision away from getting right back in order. You are one decision away getting right back to where God needs you to be. One decision. One decision. All you have to do is choose God. Choose God. That's it. 
You are one decision away. And you got this. You can make that decision. You can make it. You don't have to wait until tomorrow. You don't have to let the enemy keep lying to you. You are one decision away to say, God, I choose you and not my sinful ways. God, I choose you and everything you have for me. One decision away. One decision. Choose God. Choose God. Choose God. This is the time and this is the place. We're going to open up this place to worship. So don't leave yet. We're not done yet. We're not done here yet. We worship. We, we get fed together. We get the word together. And we worship together. And the beauty is you get to worship in your own comfort of your house. You get to worship in your own, in, in your own bedroom. In your own environment. We done got the meat and potatoes today. And now it's time to worship. Because he deserves the glory. And he deserves the honor. And he deserves the praise. God does. God deserves it all. And we need to worship. Our spirits is calling out to him right now. Our spirits are calling out to him. And in this time, man, I want you guys to lock in with us. We'll have fellowship after worship, family. Open up the panel. We'll have fellowship after worship. Open up the panel for whatever y'all got, man. But listen. God wants to encounter you on this live tonight and let you know that his spirit was here. That his spirit was here. And in this time, I want you guys to lock in. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to turn off the comments because I love when you guys are praising God. I love when you guys are communicating and fellowshipping. But listen, there's a time that listen, there's a time to worship and there is a time to fellowship. And now is the time to worship and you need to take this time serious because this is not between you and everybody else that is in this comment section, all 164 people that is here. No, this is between you and God. God wants to encounter you personally tonight. He wants, he wants you to, he wants you to feel him tonight. He wants you to feel him tonight in a way that you have not felt him before. And I truly believe. That it starts with you locking in. Locking in. So family, lock in. Lock in. Lock in. Because this is a time where God wants you to lock in in his presence. This is a time where God wants you to feel his embrace. Feel in his embrace. Mm. I'm going to pray for us. And then we're going to lock in. And pray, uh, we're going to lock in with worship. <sighs> Father, I come humbly to your throne of grace tonight, Father. And I just say thank you. Thank you for everybody that you have brought here tonight, Father. Thank you for everybody, Father. Thank you for your spirit tonight that showed up tonight, Father. Thank you for your word your sound word that came tonight and broke chains off of people tonight, Father. Father, without you, this wouldn't be possible. We wouldn't be here tonight, Father. Without you, we would not even be able to have this fellowship. Without you, we wouldn't even be here, Father. People wouldn't even be led to this place, Father. This is all you're doing. This is all of your work right now, Father. We are all your worksmanship. We are all your, we are all your product, Father. So, Father, I just ask that tonight, for those who have been feeling far from you, Father, for those who have been feeling the disconnect, Father, 
For those who have not been feeling your embrace, Lord, I just ask that tonight you embrace them in a way that they have never been embraced before, that they have never felt before. Father, I just ask that for everybody under the sound of my voice that is in need of an encounter tonight, Father, in this time of worship, as their heart is opening to you, Father, as their heart is submitting to you, Father, I just ask that in this time, you encounter them in a way that they have not been encountered. Father, I just ask that tonight you pour out your love over everybody under the sound of my voice. Father, saturate their minds. Saturate their environments. Father, allow them to experience your presence, even if it's through a TikTok live, Father. Because there is no limits to your spirit, Father. There is no limits to your spirit, Father. Encounter them tonight. Give them that personal encounter and let them feel your love. And Because I know once we experience the love of God, we will never be the same. So, Father, help them to experience that love where they will never be the same. And they will be sold out and move radically for what you want them to do in their life. Father, we love you. Father, in this time where we are locking in, Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Father. We call down heaven to earth into our place, into our environments right now, Lord. And we say, have your way. In Jesus' precious name, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, family, make sure y'all lock in this time, man. Lock in in this time, Lord.
Sometimes you feel like your tracks are right there, but they're just not ready to export. There's still something missing. With our candy. Planning to move? Join the six million families who discovered a smarter, more flexible way to move with pop. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father, for what you have done tonight, for what you have shown us tonight, Father. I just ask that in this time, you begin to set a fire in everybody's soul, Lord, to be on fire for you. <clears throat> we thank you for the rekindling that has taken place in the heart of everybody under the sound of my voice tonight, Father. Help us to know more about our purpose. Help us to know more about what you need us to understand, Father. Father, you were here tonight and you were present. You were here tonight and you were present, Father. I just thank you for bringing everybody here tonight where we can gather today in this safe place, in this safe environment for us to be one with you. <clears throat> we are your church, Father, and we are the remnant. We are for ready. We are ready for what's to come, Father. I just ask that you prepare us. You prepare us, Father. We want to be. <clears throat> we want to be warrior brides, Father. We want to be the warrior bride, the one that is ready to fight when it's time to fight, Father. Fight for what is ours, Father. There is times where we are unworthy of your love and unworthy of your grace, and you still show us. You still show us mercy. You still show us, you still show us grace. We thank you for the opportunity to come back to you. We thank you for the opportunity to live this with you, Father. We just ask that in this season of our life, you begin this, you begin 
to reveal the darkness that is inside of our temples, reveal the darkness that is in us, so we can be so we can be made new, so we can be made new. Father, brought, Father, we thank you for the leading of the Holy Spirit that is going to be taking place in this season of our life. We thank you for the encounters, Lord. We thank you for the connections that we're going to make. We thank you for the the, the kingdom connects that is going to come into our life. So we know that we are not alone. Father, we thank you for the, this community and the growth of this community, Father. So people know that there is a God-fearing community out there that is hungry, hungry for the things of you, that is hungry for what you have for us, Father, because we wouldn't be here in this community if it wasn't for you, Father. Lord, I am just the best, so this is your platform. I am just a vessel, this is your platform, Father. I am just the connector, Father, and this is your platform, this is your people, Father. So I just ask that every time we come to this platform to gather, Father, they experience your presence. Every time we come to this platform together, Father, they experience what you have for them, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father, because all things are possible with you. So, Father, in this time, I just plead the blood of Jesus over everybody under the sound of my voice, Father, for those who is going to sleep. Give them sweet dreams, Father. Give them sweet dreams, sound dreams, Lord. Plead the blood of Jesus over everybody's minds, over everybody's hearts, Father. No witchcraft, no sorcery, no hexes, no vexes will be able to form against anybody under the sound of my voice, Father. Anybody that is in this ministry and a part of this ministry, Father. Nothing can form, Father. No weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. It has no way. It has no way. As much as the enemy tried to cancel tonight, Father, we he cannot... He cannot stop the flow. He cannot stop the moving of God that is taking place in this place tonight. He cannot stop it. So, Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for every soul that is in here tonight, Father. I just ask that you be with them and you live with them, Father. You dwell with them <laughs> and, you, and you rest with them, Father. We love you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen and amen. I appreciate everybody for tuning in tonight and fellowshipping with us tonight. And getting this word with us tonight, man. Whew. Uh, tonight was a pretty good night. Tonight was a very good night, man. We're going to open up this time. Uh, make sure before you guys leave, man. If you guys want to be a part. <clears throat> if you guys want to be a part of this community, man. If you guys want to be a part of what we got going on tonight. Like, like, I just want you guys to know that this is normal. All right, this, this is this is normal. This is what we do every single night. We, we, we do this every single night. We, we do this every single night. We do this like they're, they're like every day. I'm here every single day, six thirty Mountain Standard Time, seven thirty um, Central Standard Time, eight thirty Eastern Standard Time, five thirty. Pacific Standard Time. Like, I'm here every single day. We are here every single day to fellowship. We are here every single day <clears throat> to do the will of the Father. To do the will of the Father. So, if you guys want to be a part of what we got going on, man, then shoot me a DM. We got uh, on TikTok. I got a Discord link, and you can, uh, just in case TikTok goes down, man, just in case TikTok goes down, man, at least you are inside the Discord. Okay? At, at, at least you are inside the Discord family. We have a Discord link. We would love for you to be a part of this community. We would love for you to, to, to be here. We would love for you to be here and uh, to join us in this community. Bobby, we welcome you, my brother. We welcome you, my brother. And like I said, family, I go live every single day. New word, new message every single day. So make sure you guys follow me. Turn on that notification bell. It's not for the purpose of following me. just for the purpose of you being alerted. For the purpose of you being alerted, man, just just make sure you do that so you guys can be in tune and y'all can tap into what's going on. If you guys need a link, except Saturdays, thank you, except Saturdays. We're not here on Saturdays. We honor the Sabbath, and the Sabbath is our rest day. But we are consistent every single day besides Saturday. So except Saturdays, we don't do Saturdays. We honor God on that day, and we rest in the presence of God after he done filled us up the entire week. You feel me? We have to. Um, you'll like a link. Okay, we're going to definitely get links out to you. If you see a, um, uh, Shanti will be back here to send you guys the link. Uh, Shanti will be here to send you guys a link. So if you guys would like a Discord link to the community, please put in the chat right now, I'd like a link. Send me the link. And uh, we, would, uh, we would get you guys the link 
our, 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 our leaders here will get you guys the link, okay? We would make sure to get you guys the link and uh, be sure to do that. We have, we have an amazing community that is serving. We have an amazing community that is helping out. We, we, uh, <clears throat> we appreciate, we, we, we definitely appreciate uh, the leaders that is here. So if you guys would like a link, we will definitely get you guys a link. Okay, we'll definitely get you guys a link for sure, for sure, for sure. But like I said, in the end, we definitely would um, love to open it to fellowship, open it to open it to fellowship for those who would love to fellowship for those who um, maybe you got testimony, maybe you got prayer requests, maybe you got questions as well. <clears throat> Maybe you got questions as well, man. Now is the time. I'm going to open up the panel for those that want to be up here, man. For those that want to be here and stuff like that. I'll open up the panel for you guys. And y'all can feel free to request to join the panel. A family that normally hops on the panel, feel free to come up here. And, you know, you know we do our thing now. But, uh, man, God, God is good. God is great. Like I said, the, the panel definitely is now open uh, for those who wants to be a part of the panel. <clears throat> if you guys have any questions and things like that, uh, make sure you put it in the chat. Maybe you have questions about your faith. Maybe you have questions in general. How can I join the panel? Oh, you're going to need to have 200 followers, sis. 200 followers, prayer for healing in my stomach. Prayers, uh, yep, it's all good, man. Uh, prayers, yep, I got you, Cassandra. So, Father, we just lift up Cassandra in this time. Father, we thank you and we speak wholeness to her body. Father, we come against any spiritual attacks that is trying to come upon her in this season of her life, Father. We come against those spirits and we just ask that in this time we speak wholeness, we speak peace to our body, and um, we ask that the that if there's any bodily fluids that need to come out, Father, we speak a release over that in the name of Jesus. A release to come out to set peace to the stomach in the name of Jesus. Father, let your will be done in this time in the name of Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Tell me why I was trying to say Alexa and I said, hey, Holy Spirit, because your spirit is in tune. The spirit is like, yeah, listen, the, the spirit is like, you don't need Alexa, just start praising right now. You don't need music, just start praising right now. Living best of Jay, what's good? What you need prayer for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help me intercede. Help me intercede and pray my husband finds his way back to God. So, Father, we just pray for Ray in this time, Lord. And we um, we just speak to her spirit, or her husband's spirit, in the name of Jesus. And we call it to come, call him to come back into his natural place, which is the head of the household, Father. We just ask that your will be done in this situation, Father. We just ask that anything that is not of you, Father, will be eliminated from his life so he can focus on you in this season of his life, Father. Uh, we just ask and we speak to his love for you to increase, Lord, his faith to increase in this time. And we just ask for the wife to stay strong in this season and continue with prayer. Strengthen her in this time as she is interceding for her husband. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. Father, we pray for Jay in this season. In this season, she is trying to bear fruits in this season, Father. And we just ask that um, more of you comes into her. More of you comes in there. We cannot bear fruits outside of you. So, Father, we just ask that in this season you help her to understand her purpose. Help her to understand her calling. Help her to understand her identity. Help her to understand the things of you in this season of our life so she can bear the fruits that is necessary in this season. In the name of Jesus, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in her life. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> and amen. Father, we just pray for faith, Lord, in this time. Faith is looking to be anchored, Lord. 
But Lord, I just ask for more of the word to come and give her the hunger and thirst for righteousness, for the word to come into our body so she can be anchored, so she can deny the flesh, Father, and to see that she is in need of just strength. So, Father, we just ask that the joy that your word comes in and strengthens her in this season of our life. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, I miss you. We pray, amen and amen. So we'll be done. Father, we pray for Jazz, Father. Uh, we pray for Jazz in this time, Father. We just ask that you... Um, Begin to speed up the healing process of her wisdom teeth, Father. Speed up the healing process, Father. We just ask for no pain. Eliminate the pain. Eliminate the sorrow that she is feeling right now when it comes to the pulling of the wisdom teeth, Father. We just thank you for regeneration. We thank you for what you are doing in this season of our life as well. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua and Mashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. Father, we pray for Cherry, Father. We pray for Cherry and her family, Lord. And in, and in this time... You begin to, uh, you begin to move in Charity's life, Lord. And in this time, we just ask that you move in Charity's life. We pray for our family and her that they begin to come closer to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Oh no. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Okay. In the name of Jesus. Now we're going to pray for, pray for the next one. Father, we pray for Melina's mother, Lord, for she is going through stomach problems as well, Father. So we speak um, healing to the body, Father. We speak wholeness, wholeness to the body in the name of Jesus, Father. We come against any spiritual attacks that could be trying to in this season, Father, and if there's a need of a release, Father, release. We speak release to the body, Father. Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. Father, we pray for Alexandra in this time, Lord. We just ask that our relationship with you be strengthened, Father. Give her a hunger and thirst for righteousness in this season of our life, Father. We pray as if it is in the hunger and thirst for righteousness that strengthens us, Father. It is in the word and us hungering and thirsting for the word that strengthens us, Father. So in this time, we just pray that Alexandra will stand boldly on the rock, Father. Boldly on the rock. We'll begin to move in the things of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for Bobby, Father. We pray for Bobby, Father. And we just ask that in this season of Bobby's life, Father, for you know the plan that you have in Bobby's life, what he is doing with his ministry. Lord, so we just ask that you can just lead him as the man, Father. Lead him as the man, Lord. Show, help him to hear your voice clear so he knows exactly what to do and what not to do in this season, Father. We just ask him, we just thank you for the open doors of opportunity that is coming in this season for his life, Lord. For him to lead in, for him to govern in, and for him to dominate in. Father, thank you for understanding of his heavenly assignment, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we just pray that your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Um, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I pray for you, Ali. I pray for you, Ali. I got you. Father, we pray for a miracle, Father, and we just ask that in this time she gets a miracle, Father. <laughs> Cover any, Father, we just thank you for it. I just plead the blood of Jesus first and foremost, Father, because she's going through uh, demonic attacks while she is sleeping. Father, no weapon for me against her shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. So she's coming by the blood of Jesus, Father. I speak to the Lord in charge of her while she is sleeping tonight, Father. We just thank you for the spirits of the flesh that you put upon her while she is sleeping. We rebuke those in the mighty name of Jesus. They have no way of the child of God. They have no way of power. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. I pray for everybody in this chat. I pray for everybody in this chat. I pray for everybody in this chat. We just pray for everybody with the blood, Father. No oppression can be upon nobody in this chat. For the change that is coming upon our body. We thank you for the heart transformation that is coming. We thank you for the love of obedience that is increasing in the season of your life, God. For everybody that is here, we just ask that you begin to move. We have not seen you move before. I just ask that you show up in a way that we have not seen you 
fire right now over everyone in this life, over our brothers and sisters, Father God, right now, 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 we seek the name of Jesus. Jesus. We seek the name of Jesus. Thank you. 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 I just pray that God continues to keep moving in everybody's life. I just pray that God continues to keep on, keep on moving. Father, we pray for Faith's children, Lord. Yeah. Pray for Faith's children in this time, Father. And we just ask that you begin to move in their life. And we speak to their hunger and their, their thirst yeah. to desire you in this season of their life, Father. And we just pray for Faith. And we just get asked, I ask that you give her the wisdom and the understanding to lead her children, to plant the seeds in her children, Father, and do whatever is necessary for her to, for her children to get to the next level of their life, Father. So we just thank you for the God, for the Mother, that prays and intercedes for them again. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Asking for prayer tonight, myself, I don't even have words for Father, so we just lift up. We just lift up Kendra in this time, Father. We lift up Kendra in this time, Father. For you know what is going on in her life. You know her needs. You know her desires. You know what needs to be met, Father. So we just thank you for peace that is coming upon her mind tonight. We thank you for peace that is going to be leading tomorrow and every single day after, Father. We thank you for the financial provision. We thank you for we thank you for the energy, the supernatural energy, Father. We thank you for the spirit of strength that is going to come upon her in this season of her life. We thank you for the wisdom that's going to guide her and navigate her into the unknown. Father, even, even into the unknown. So we just thank you. And again, we just ask that uh, you begin to just continue to keep Kendra on the rock, continue to keep her um, keep her grounded in you, Father. In this time, give her that hunger and thirst for righteousness to understand the things of you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's necessary. Thank you. Thank you. It's necessary, man. You know, God is good, family. We have to continue to keep on being obedient. Um, the more we obey God's instructions, the less we deal with sin. The more we obey God's instructions, the less we deal with sin. So we have to stay. We have to stay in his presence. We have to dwell in his presence. Sin has no way unless you give it way. Sin has no open door unless you give it an open door. So don't give him an open door. Yes, and I pray that you know you find and seek that open door because I had that open door and you have to dig deep and get to the root to figure out what that is. Because unless, and usually it comes from trauma that makes you, you know, not, that gives that devil that footstool. Don't give him a way in. Don't give him a way in. Find out what is in you that is keeping you down. That is, you know, every time the devil comes to you with an attack, every time you are tempted with sin, 
what is the root of that sin? What makes you go to that bottle? What makes you go to that pill? What makes you go to that this or that or whatever that vice is? You know, find out what that is. And once you release it, once you figure it out and, and it repents, if it's childhood trauma, I have that too. Get to the root. What is that child? Don't You don't have to, I mean, I'm not asking you to, you know, say it here. That's, you know, I don't want you to have to reveal too much, but I'm just saying in general with childhood trauma, there's an action that happened. And then there's what that action, what those people did, but how that affected you, how that affected you. That's abandonment. And then that leads to loneliness. And then loneliness makes you go to lust. And that opens the door. Lust is a huge, huge way for the enemy, a huge, huge sin. And loneliness is one of the biggest ways because when you're lonely, you go to the wrong companionship. You go to the wrong people because it doesn't feel good to be alone. But even me, I'm lonely, but I'm never alone. And it's much better to just close that door than to, than, than to give him an inch. If you give him an inch, he'll take it all. He'll take it all. Trust me, the love of the Lord, being on this side with, you know, with my Heavenly Father is so much better than being with the enemy. He had me stuck and he pulled me out. He pulled all of us out of the fire. That's why we're here right now, gathered together. That's why this platform is here and we come in agreement together. That's why these lives keep me up <laughs> way past my bedtime. Why? Because my spirit won't let me leave. Because my spirit keeps me here. You know, it keeps me here. Okay, Jay. Um, um, I did not see what was going on with Jay. Jay, Jay, Jay. What's happening, Jay? Oh, to find a Oh, yeah. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I lift up my sister, Jay. You know her needs. You know that she needs to find a home, a safe and stable way. We may not know how that's going to happen, but you do. You do. You do. Make that way for her, Father God, and help her to keep that faith and trust in you and stay that path, stay the course, that you are the only one that can do it. You are the one that can make a way when there is no way. You are the one that stands there. You intercede, Holy Spirit, have your way and lift her, uplift her right now, Father God, that she stays in your presence, that she continues to seek you and in your word and that trust and that faith continues to build so much and we all come in agreement in Jesus' name that you will do it because you fulfill every promise you make in jesus 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 mighty name i pray i pray i pray i pray i pray thank you father god thank you father god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus we all need each other right now we all need each other as the body and children of Christ. We all need to come together in fellowship like this. When you see a brother and sister in need, we must pray. We must pray. We must come together. We must all come together in agreement and look within ourselves as well. Lord, help us look within ourselves, even myself, Father God, for the sins that I have committed knowingly and unknowingly. Father God, none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. I know that I'm not, but you make me whole and you love me anyway. You love me anyway, so I will not abuse your mercy or your grace. And Father God, if I have, 
I repent right now, Father God, and I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask that you forgive me if I've ever done that to you, Father God, after what you have done for me, after what you have done for my brothers and sisters. When we fall short, Father God, your mercy and your grace never ends. Your love never ends. Your love never ends ends we don't deserve it we can't earn it but you do it for us anyway and so the least we can do after what you've done on that cross for us is pick up our own cross and follow you in obedience follow you in repentance true repentance not going back to that same place Fill that void that we might be feeling with you and the word, getting to know you each and every day. That discipline, that discipline, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We are not worthy and you love us anyway. And you lift us up anyway. And you anoint our heads with oil every day so we humbly come at your feet with our burdens lord jesus we humbly come to you and we ask for your forgiveness we repent we ask that you show us what is in us that we cannot see that we are unable to see or that we see but it the problem seems too great that the issue is too great, the sin and the temptation is too strong for us to do on our own. And so we need you. We feel like we can't do it without you because the enemy has tricked us into thinking that we cannot say no, that we are dependent on it. But you, Father God, you, Father God, give us strength in those moments of temptation. Please, Lord Jesus, please, Lord Jesus, keep us, keep this family together. Lord Jesus, we need you. Lord Jesus, it's only through you. You are the only one. You are the only way. You are the only one. We follow you and you alone, Lord Jesus. You and you alone, Lord Jesus. I thank you for my brothers and sisters here who have uplifted me when I've needed it. Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I pray that every knee shall bow, that every single person that is here, every single person that is still here, obviously have hunger for you, Lord, because they're here. This was by your doing. This is your appointment. So you may have your way. Have your way. We worship you. We glorify you. And we thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 This is definitely um, a place, you know, where you guys should feel comfortable to go to God and and truly and truly repent. A place that is safe, a place that is encouraging, a place that is edifying. And I truly believe that, you know, breakthrough is coming to many people's lives. Many people's lives. And the more and more you just seek his face, Seek his face. Allow the word to transform you. Allow the word to renew you. Allow the word to help you to become that new creation that God desires for you to be. Allow the word to do that. The more and more you allow the word to do that in your life, the more and more you will see change in your life, family. I believe that true change is coming is for everybody. 
true change is for everybody. You just have to make the decision to change. You got to make the decision to step into the will of God for your life. Make the decision to choose life instead of death. Choose life instead of death. You know, sometimes we have to, we do have to surrender it all. Surrender it all to him. Sometimes that is necessary for our advancement. Necessary. We have to be willing to submit it all before we can gain everything that is in Christ. Are you willing to drop everything you have built in the world to gain in God, to gain in the kingdom? Are you, are you willing to surrender it all to him? Are you willing to give it all? You know, it really does take, it really does take surrendering it all to get to that next level of God. It really does take surrendering it all to get into that place where God needs you to be. For real. You have to. Could I like give myself away by William McDonald? Yeah, I got you. I got you, I got you, I got you. But like I said, family, this is definitely a time for if you guys want to request to hop on the fellowship and hop on the panel, man, feel free. Feel free. Uh, this is a time of fellowship. This is a time where, like, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much, I pretty much did my part. And uh, I just want you guys to know that I have this, this safe space to talk, safe space to communicate, and things like that. Sub B, what's going on, girl? Hi. <laughs> Holy Spirit, so good. Oh my gosh. Because he's just good. When you when you ask him just to just open up the gates of heaven and just pour down all on you and you just close your eyes and you get in the presence like you could even vision, like you vision things. And God is just so good. He speaks through you even through visions. And he just just holy 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 like that's all you can say i don't know it's so good oh my gosh i love jesus so much keep that feel keep that fire blazing girl that's that's the that's the best place to be mm, best place. yeah what were you guys talking about so we weren't talking about we was just we was just giving glory to God. I was praying, giving glory to God. There wasn't specifically anything we were talking about right now. But mm. Talk about whatever. Mm. Talk about whatever. But we were we were just praying. What's going on, Pepper? Was we were praying for people who needed prayer. Yeah. So you know, for the people that needed prayer, we was praying. And, oh, am I on here? What's it, yeah, Pepper? No. Yeah, I thought we, I got back off. I was gonna wait a minute. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's all good. Just, just, just reconnect back. Are you ready? <laughs> but yeah, man. This, um, I said, this is definitely season for us to lock in and step into that acceleration that God has for us. You know, I was just telling the people how important uh, we were just explaining to the people how important it is to have fellowship, to have community, to have that safe place, to be able to to be yourself in the midst of God's people with no judgment to come. And, you know, we all struggle with certain things in our life. None of us are perfect. We all struggle. Some of us struggle with the little things like as consistency, consistency yeah. in reading the word. You feel me? So there's lots of struggles that many people struggle with. And this is like just letting people know that they're not alone. Letting people know that, you know, if you need a community, man, you found one in us. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, you found one in us for sure. For sure. Yeah. I was just praying about that too. Like, how grateful I am that, like, with all everyone in here, like they just like you guys do hold me accountable too. Like I get excited now every day to get on and just keep pressing in and talking about God with people because you don't get that a lot around here. 
on your just daily basis. So like just coming home to like talk to people that love God as much as I do, it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing. I love it so much. That accountability is so necessary in your walk with God because you only can go as far. I mean, you only there's only so far you can go by yourself. Which yeah. is why God said it's not good for man to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. I believe there's helpmates and and destiny helpers and people that is sent by God to truly help help you in in the pursuit of your purpose. And um, you know that man that that hunger and thirst for righteousness is is contagious. It's truly contagious. And the more and more you hang around and you talk to and you fellowship with people that are hungering and thirsting for the righteousness of God, man, you're going to step into it. You're going to want to step into it. You're going to want to do the things of God. You're going to want to. So, you know, creating that space and creating that environment where people can choose God to choose the hunger, choose the growth. Like, there ain't no better place, man, because, you know, we all go through those seasons of isolation. We all go through those seasons where we buy ourselves. We all go through those seasons, but understand that even even if you feel lonely, you're never alone. Like Anna says, you feel me? Even though you feel lonely, you're never alone. God will never leave nor forsake you. So just for everybody in the chat, man, just understand that if you've been looking for a God-fearing community that is hungering and thirsting for the things of God, and I uh, want wanting to step, like actually step, like like no excuses, because this is not a this is not a place of excuses, man. This is not a place of excuses. We don't make excuses for our sin. We try to strive for the bar of perfection. We try to start strive for the place where God wants us to strive to, which is His bar of perfection. So we just gotta step into it. We gotta um, step into it. I'm not gonna lie. This thing on my head is like screaming. It looks like freaking like a, I don't even know. It's a weird position. It looks like I got a knot. <laughs> you gotta fix the hair, girl. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm talking about this bump. It's like a, it's like a bit. I don't even know. And nobody even noticed that but you. I right. Know. <laughs> really, you I didn't even see gotta, that. You don't gotta put the beanie on. You don't gotta put the beanie on. Like someone just punched me in the forehead or something. <laughs> Holy Spirit smacked Spirit. me tonight. I left the train. Uh, like we didn't even see it until you pointed it out. That's the funny part. Like she said, I'm looking at the lights, right? The lights is really in the back. Like <laughs> that girl is hilarious. That girl is hilarious. Uh, that's comedy. It's always needed to. We always need, you know, to to encourage each other, but to laugh and and be, you know, it, just just you know, glorious together, like with the Lord, and have, still have you know humor and rejoice and happiness, you know, like He wants us to be to be happy, you know, and and speak joy and. It's, you know, people don't think that being Christian is fun. It is so much more fun over here. It is so much more fun over here. Like, real. Than in the world. The world is trash. But when you come to Christ, it is like, it is lit lit. You know, I didn't even know what was happiness was until I found Jesus. And now I'm like, this is what I've been missing this whole time. Like, this is what it's actually like. Like, this is dope. Like, this is so good. Because you experience true peace, true joy, true love. Like, people don't, they can't get that. They don't get that if they're not in with God. They get they get into these temporary situations that fulfills them in the moment, maybe. But even then, in those temporary moments, they're not really feeling the true peace. They're lying to themselves. Like, they will never get to feel that true, true joy and all those good things that come from God. And even when, you know, as a Christian, like it's, or just a follower of Christ, I'm not even going to say Christian, as a follower of Christ, like you still go through, you still go through it. But when you have God on your side, it makes it easier in the yeah. world. When you go through stuff, you don't have anything to hold on to. So it seems impossible to get out of, but we got Christ. And so it's like you hold on to that faith and you hold on to that hope 
And it's like, oh, this is just temporary. This is just endurance building. This is just, I mean, Paul did it in chains and he did it boldly, you know, and he's still like, you know, was, was just sure. He said this is, you know, he knew it was temporary. This is temporary, man. Mm. But, you know, just like get through the storm and you can't do that in the world. You can't do that if you got one fill in, one foot out. It's, you know, Christ or nothing. That's it. Bottom line. And it's good. It feels good. It's real tough. You got to make that decision. You got to make that decision. You got to make that choice. You know, it's like a lot of people think there's, there's gain in the world. But the Bible also talks about what profits a man to gain the world and lose his soul. Like, true gain comes with giving your life to God. True gain comes with being obedient to the call. And like I said, a lot of people think that they're they're missing out, but really, you just had a bad taste to begin with. Once you taste what is good, you'll never you'll begin to understand like your old appetite, your old taste that you had. Like it was nothing. It was nothing that I truly desired. And the enemy tries to do the same thing he did with Jesus, right? Offer you the kingdom to the world. You can have everything of the kingdom. All you gotta do is bow down, worship me, submit to me. Bow down, worship me, submit to me. That's what the devil wants you to do. So you just got to make sure that you are submitted and you are worshiping God in all your ways. Acknowledging him in all your ways. That's very important. It's crazy because, like, the enemy, like, could provide you with all that stuff. And, like, God will allow it for that to be built all the way to the top. Like, think about, like, all these celebrities. Like, all everything is being, like, they think that they're on the top right now. And he'll allow it to go all the way to the top for them. But like, if it's not set on that firm foundation and it's so high, that thing is done. They got nothing left. There's nothing for them. And that's why, it, and that's what's crazy. He allows them to, to get to that point, to that point where they wanna be and all their selfish desires. But once that wind rushes, they're they're fleeing into the hills and underground places and all these things. Cause God is not to be played with. And they live in their heaven on earth, chasing empty voids. That's why they need more. Yeah, their heaven on earth, right? <laughs> this is the best is gonna get for them. This is the best. This is the best is gonna get for them. It's crazy. Their best is like 0.1% of what actually you're going to experience in the New Jerusalem. That's their best. Just a little bit of what they're going to experience for real. You want to pray for her, B? You want to pray for Miss T? Can someone pray for me? I'm going through something with court for relocation really hard. I don't know what that means. Right. You got that, Kaika. <laughs> you got the power of prayer. You speak. We, we all got the power of prayer. Don't get it confused. Wait, yeah. what does that mean, though, with, with court for relocation? I pray for it. It's like this. So, Father, we're we just come in agreement. Yeah, you just come into agreement. You don't have to know the specific details, right? It's like this. So, Father, we just thank you for tea, Father. We just thank you for what you are doing in this season of our life, Father, for you know what is going on behind the scenes, Father. So we just ask that your will be done in this situation, in this court, in this court situation, Father. We just ask that your will be done, your kingdom come, Father, happen in this time of her life. Bring her peace, Father, in this season where it could be stressful, Father. Give her strategy in this season where strategy is needed, Father. We just ask that she is led by your spirit, by wisdom in this time, and ultimately, Father, we just ask that your will be done in this time, in this time, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, just like that. Just, just like that. Now that you know. What's going on, Pepper? What you got for us? Amen. I couldn't type it. So, I just have the extreme, um, the extreme presence with me lately. Like, like really like extreme last, I don't know. 
couple presence days, but a few presence days. Huh? The presence of God? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yes, like, you know, I know what it feels like, and it's just very extreme. But in, And then also I wondered, how do you know the difference sometimes? I've always thought that, you know, when I felt the Holy Spirit, that was like a confirmation of something. How do you know when that's a warning? That's like that fine line between seeing the different lights. How do you know? And, and knowing your environment, what's going on with you, I guess. Do you know what I mean? So you're saying you're experiencing the extreme presence of God, right? Yeah, those are kind of like two different things. Well, I mean, the presence of God is the presence of God. Well, I know. It just seems, I mean, I just wonder, like, I mean, maybe it's a stupid question, kind of, but. Well, have you um, been you've been praying for encounters? Have you been in praying for to no. experience what you're experiencing? No. Well, with, with obedience, with with obedience, one thing you have to understand is uh, the more obedient you are to God and more you feel yourself with God, the presence of God is going to come upon you. And the presence of God, like everybody is saying in the chat, you're going to feel peace, you're going to feel love, you're going to feel joy. And in that, intense, that. In, in, that, in that intense pressure, understand that he's also breaking things off of you. So the intensity can feel the pressure of a lot of things falling off of you and i think you should tap into the presence and say father thank you for your presence thank you for me allowing to feel your presence father i just ask if there's anything else that is inside of me that needs to come out father pull it out father reveal it to me father eliminate it from my life and i think you just need to what right now you know because because you know if you're experiencing that presence that's something that you I want pretty much tell them that you know because i'm like you know thank you and stuff you know i mean seriously like this feeling is uh it's just intense. extreme it's intense because it's new and so you just have to let it flow because it's new it could be scary because it is so intense mm -hmm. you experience it on a higher level then it's like man i don't know what is happening but i feel it and then sometimes you can stop yourself in your head so you just gotta let it flow and just sit in it and you know just just let it marinate and call on his name you know just keep calling on his name i don't know if she hears you ah i don't think she maybe heard. it's a maybe it's a different present i heard you that was good See if she's still on here. I can't see. She'll request again if she is. But yeah, that that was good. That was good because it's new. Yeah. Because it's new, you know, it's intense. You're not used to it. Yeah, any new thing is actually intense, actually. So. Yeah. I remember the first time it hit me like a truck. I was like pacing back and forth, and like it was so intense that I even started to doubt. I was like, nah, this, this, this is, I'm tripping. But then it was God. It was God for sure. Confirm, confirm. Be sensitive to the spirit. Amen. I got slain in the spirit before and dropped to my knees. Yeah. I mean, when the spirit, yeah. when the spirit of God really comes upon you, sometimes that is it. The only answer is dropping down and saying, "You are worthy." Yep. You yep, are yep, worthy. Yep. You are worthy. Very. It's, it's good. It's such a good feeling. There's such victory. There's such, you know, it's just such a. I mean, it's just overwhelming. It'll just like, like slap you. You're just like, what is this? It's good. It's it. You know. It's it's just yeah. It's just sometimes it's new and it's just like it's the overwhelming power of the Lord is. I mean, if this is what we feel in the spirit, like here now on earth, can you imagine in heaven what that's gonna feel like? And y'all over here just like like half one foot in, half one. Like come on, go all the way. 
you know, make it to the finish line. Because if this is what you're feeling now, imagine being, you know, just hearing, yeah, exactly, nonstop worship, nonstop, like being with Jesus, getting a hug from Jesus, feeling the Holy Spirit, talking to, you know, Michael, and just like walking up to, you know, these, these saints and just being like, oh, like asking everything or knowing everything. Just, I mean, just, the, just, I mean, if you feel the spirit now, when you get up, fire, it's going to be so fire. I, I got questions for you, David. I got questions for you, David. <laughs> now that's real though. That's real. Only imagine what heaven is like. Who's right the now. first person you're going up to in heaven? If, if you had to like, yeah. Who's the first person in the Bible? David? David or Solomon. What about you, Anna? I'm going to the thief on the cross. Because I got some <laughs> questions. Like, what did, like, what happened when you got one. up there? You know, like, like, what kind, like, that was like mad faith. Like, what was it? Like, in that moment, you know, like, it's your last second. And you're just like, like, what hit you? That must have slapped, you know? Like, that must like, have been, like, like that must have been good. You? That must have slapped, you know? Like, that like, must have been, like, like, that must have been good. That must have slapped, you know? Sorry, Piper, your mic was like, going too bad. I ain't gonna lie, sis. But, um... Pepper Anna didn't answer it, so we did get your question. So that so that presence that you're feeling, Pe Pepper, understand that sometimes, sometimes the 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 presence of God when you are experiencing it new, when it's new to you, right? It can be overwhelming. When the presence of God is new to you, it can it can it can feel it can feel scary, but you have to embrace it. You have to embrace it and, and allow that presence to to truly saturate your 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 being, so you can get used to it. Because anything, anything that is new, is truly overwhelming sometimes, and it can be it can be a little bit of scare it can be a little bit scary, right? So you just want to press into that presence when you feel that presence, Pepper, and uh, go from there. Go from there. Eve though, Eve is crazy. Eve, I got some questions. It's crazy. Yeah, I was about to say her. I was like, I'm gonna go with Eve, <laughs> but um, I don't think I'm about to go to Eve. I think I think yeah. I'd go to Adam. I'd be like, Yo, Adam, like, what's good, bro? Why? You have to go. <laughs> you sold the bag. Like, what you doing, my boy? You I would doing? definitely go to Mary Magdalene though, for real. That's like my first go-to. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. For sure. Interesting. How was the word today? Did you guys? Did you guys? It was good. Was like the word Holy today? Spirit was speaking through you, and like, like I was about to say that in the comments. I was like, this is like one of like the strongest ones for me, at least. This this was a good one. In dissecting Genesis. Your favorite chapter. It's really good. Um This is was this was a word, like I said, it's been marinating in me for a minute now. And it's um it's been marinating in me for a minute now. It's been in my spirit for the last fifty four days. For the last fifty four days. Wow. It's been it's been in my spirit for the last fifty four days. But God had me release the other message for the last 54 days for this message and um uh, like every single message now from this point on because remember like um uh like i was saying last year god had me preparing for this year a lot of the words that I gave him for the last 54 days was already, those were already prepared for from last year. Those were all like last year's, yeah, those were all last year's words, but God had- pastors do? Huh? Is that what pastors do? No. Build up? I don't think so. No, I. the thing is, I released all of these words last year, but nobody was here to get them. 
Mm. So I released them all last year, but nobody was here to get them. So that's essentially what it was. It was practice and God called me to release it again. Because I did a live with them last year for 30 days. I did a live with them last year for 30 days and I went live every single day, every single day, releasing those those words. And then after the live with them, I just stopped. And then life hit me. But what God was showing me was those words were prepared for today. Those words were prepared for today. And um, one thing about the words that God gives you is they're timeless. They're timeless because every single word that you guys heard in the last 54 days or whenever you tuned in, every single word that you heard was on time for your life. It was on time for your life because the words that God gives you are truly timeless. There is no time. In the presence of God, there is no time. There is no time. So the, today's word was a word that has been marinating, and that was a this year word. So every word and every message that is given from this day forward is going to feel like, dang, bro, I need to hear that. Like, like dang, but like, that was on time. It's because God has been marinating these messages and these words in my heart for a minute, and I just haven't released them yet. So oh that's And then, like, you come back with the word, but then you come back with knowing that word and going through that one year knowing that word, and then you can still, like, add on to it and add more fruits and more intention and things that you go through. Like, it just gets better and better. Like, you could preach the same word in five years, and, and go deeper and more in depth with it. It just keeps getting stronger and stronger each time. That's the beautiful thing about the Word of God is any, I mean, we're all reading the same Bible. We're all reading the same Bible. It's all the same stuff, um, same words, same scriptures, different revelation every year, different revelation every time you go to it. So there is no, there is no limit. Like this word, like you said, I believe there's more to this word than what I read today. Truly, truly. I I, I think I think so too. Because there were some, you know, like I was saying, I was like that's connecting. Because there was different stories and like different, you know, you would say like a word, and I'm like, mm, like just like, you know, it's like he, you know, like the Lord leaving like breadcrumbs throughout Man. the word. You know, that you got to like go through and then it's like this one connects to another one. And then it's like, oh, I see what you did there. And then it makes me, you know, realize that like we look at what, you know, what Satan did in the beginning as like, you know, oh, why does all this stuff happen? And like what, you know, like when you go back to Genesis and see like it, it shows how much God really loved us. The mm. fact that he said. I don't want you to just follow me blindly. I'm giving you the choice. And I want you to love me. I am giving you everything. But just don't do this one thing. Don't do that one thing. And then the way that the, you know, the, you know, the enemy comes up and he sits there and he flips the word because he knows the word because he's so close to God. And then I started thinking about the world today and you know, you think about all these people and in power, in influence, in all of those things, the way that he sneaks in in such a way that makes you feel like what he's given you is, you know, it, it's good, but it's for the world. It's not going to last. Anything he promises you, anything that is put on you from the enemy is just going to fill you right now. But does he promise anything eternally? No, except damnation. So you want that fire forever? That's never going to quench? Really? No. Like, nobody really wants that. Like, I mean, if you think that this life is bad, like, I mean, if you're not on his, on, on God's team, like, you, you just, I mean, you need to get it together. Like, the time is now. Like, you know, saints are rising up now. And it's like, I feel like this generation, like our clarity of like, 
well, not all, I, I don't want to speak for all of our generation because some of us, you know, not so much, but there's, you know, a group like the next level of preachers, the next levels of, of, of saints for the kingdom, the next kingdom builders that are having, happening right now that are going to be standing in that gap. You know, it's like, I feel like we're all getting like hints. We're all getting like little pieces, you know, and like deliverance has been a lot on my mind recently. Like the true word, like, you know, brood of vipers, you know, like that came to mind while you were talking, you know, because I felt that because that's all I've been seeing that the vision, the fact that like he was in the holy place. So who's he going to attack the church? And right now there's so much division and what better way to get to the people of God is than through separating them. Because if we were all in one accord, if we were all in one accord in one agreement, man, I mean, we're untouchable, you know? And I, and I, and I just feel like right now so much revelation is just coming up. Like, I feel like a revival. Like, I feel like just like Mm -hmm. something big is happening and like people are sleeping and they need to wake up now. Like, I don't know what some people are waiting for. I don't know what, who they're listening to. They're listening too much to the man, even, you know, like even with this live, like, don't take any of our word for it. Still go in the word yourself and look for it because there's fault in, in each and every one of us. But it's being taught that it has to be through the church, ordained by this person, this person, this person, this person. Look at John the Baptist. He was out there eating locusts and honey. you got to be prepared to be John the Baptist eating locusts and honey. Mm-hmm. and still preaching the word unapologetically because exactly like you said what happens when the internet goes down how you gonna live what happens when you know when, when it's that time and 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 your family goes missing and you're still here what are you gonna do what are you gonna do that was such a good point and you know it's it's it, i mean it's not far-fetched it's not far fetched, but the enemy will make you think that. The world will make you think that. Mm. You know, that's the biggest lie of the enemy is that the world is just it. And that's not it. There's more. There's more. There's so much more. It's just whose team you're going to be on. And be on the winning team. Nice. Yep. Just so, like, it's crazy because there's so many times like like in, in that word, like there was multiple different words within that word, which I could have, you know, went deeper on, but it was like breadcrumbs, like you said, it was breadcrumbs, it was like food for thought type of things because there was, there was just, I had to stay on the course, I had to stay on the course. And there's so many, there's so many different things that I, I could have touched on, but it just was not the time to touch on that. And, it is very important for us to do our own due diligence, for us to study and read and read the Bible to be show yourself approved unto God. Like <laughs> a lot of people come in the comment section, they they really like asking me, like, bro, go to the Bible, go to the Bible, go to the Bible, read the Bible. When you read it, you're gonna see it. Like when I brought up why Jesus was sent at the time where he was sent. He was sent at a time because they understood kingdom. They understood what kingdom talk was. That's the only time where they really understood the kingdom. Because they were within a, a actually one of the strongest kingdoms, which was the Roman Empire. And that's what they understood was kingdom. So that's why he was sent in the time he was sent. And it's crazy too because, you know, I uh, kind of touched on that one accord, the power of being in one accord. The first time we see man in one accord, we're at their most powerful state in one language, one accord, right? Because one language, because one accord also means speaking the same language. Was the Tower of Babel was when mankind was only speaking one language in the Tower of Babel, and and that was when man, when you pay attention to what they did, 
what they did all together, all together. And mind you, it was wicked what they did, though. It was wicked. That, that's what they did in one accord for wickedness. Now, imagine if the body of Christ came together in one accord, one accord, and did what God wanted us to do. Imagine what we can do. Imagine what we can do. Imagine the impact that could be made in the kingdom of God. It's not seen today, though. We don't we don't see that today. We don't see them. There's so much division within the body. So much division with the body. Like I said, God gave me that dream. God gave me the dream where I woke up in the sanctuary. Well, he gave me multiple dreams in the church while I was working at the church, which is crazy because that's when my prophetic dreams was really moving. He gave me multiple dreams while I was working at the church. One, I woke up in the church. And he began to show me that there was snakes. There was a there was a black snake and there was a white snake that was that was moving amongst the congregation, moving in amongst the body, and and eventually wrapping wrapping around uh, up the pulpit and moving amongst the pulpit. And what God began to show me is He said there there was there is a dual spirit working here, Ahab and Jezebel spirit that is preaching from the pulpit and it was it is it is it is i believe it was the it was the black snake that was bigger than the white snake in the dream the black snake was bigger than the white snake right so the enemy is really moving rampant in the midst of the church in the midst of the church and uh we can see it today we we can we can see it today what's good well what's good my brother hope all is well with you my brother just Sitting here in this time of fellowship, man, and just just connecting with the body as always, my brother. But these the, these these spirits is truly is truly rampant, and you know you hear it you hear it often. You hear about this kundalini, right? In the spiritual age, you hear them always trying to activate their kundalini, or and that's the serpent spirit. That's the enemy. Mm. Right, you can hear it all in New Age. They're all trying to activate that Kundalini because there's power in the Kundalini spirit. Like, bro, that's New Age. That's strictly New Age when you hear anybody. I mean, they do it in yoga. They try to activate that yoga. They do it in yoga. They do it in um, all that all that New Age. So it's very important for us believers to be mindful of what's going on. Of what's going on in the spirit. What's going on? Right now, like I was talking about earlier. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. You said, why is it bad? I thought yoga was good. Oof. 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 You thought wrong. You definitely thought wrong. And that's something that you definitely need to go do your own due diligence. Do your own due diligence because every pose is a worship to a God. Every pose, every pose is, is, is worshiping Christians. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not a, it's not a godly practice. Um, I encourage you to do your own due diligence at as we sound the alarm, as as we sound the alarm, right? So it's it's very important that you go because you're opening doors in yoga that you should not be opening. I'm just gonna tell you straight up, straight up, you opening doors that you should not be opening. Stretching is different now. You can stretch, bro. You can stretch, but there's a big difference. Speaking of doors, I want to say something about doors. Hold on. I wrote in my notes. Um. Research, example. Yoga is demonic. Bro, my teacher was making us do yoga. Literally refuse. They don't have to force you to do anything. You can literally say it's against my beliefs. I'm not doing it. Send me to the principal's office. See, and that's the problem. That's the problem with today's, that's the problem with today's society is, is teachers, is teachers are, 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 are for, sometimes forcing things upon their, upon people's children that, that, that is, the children can't do nothing for real because that's their teacher. This is why I don't like the public schools. This is why I was taken out of the public schools. My kids schools. are not going to public schools, I'm sorry. My kid's gonna be homeschooled. It's just yoga. See, that's where you need to your mind to be renewed because it's not just yoga. 
or I like I don't know. We're really we're literally sitting here telling you it's not just yoga, and this is God putting up a red flag to speak to your spirit whether you want to accept it or not to go do your own research and go search up why is yoga demonic. The sauna will have greater results for sure. For sure. For sure. But go go ask. Go search it up right now. Why is yoga demonic? Ask. And Speak and you shall find. <laughs> Like, bro, like, it's not, exactly, it's not going to all be explained. But if you go literally search, why is it demonic? They'll give you it. Is gymnastics? There's nothing wrong with gymnastics. Sport. Speaking of asking, knocking, and all that stuff, yoga, meditation, a lot of positive practice are demonic. Yes. A lot of people are worshiping things that are created like stars and all that stuff when that those are meant to be f for like to tell seasons in our lives but a lot of people are worshiping it instead and try to create it as their identity when the, when you're a child of god okay but since you brought up doors i wanted to say this last time what was it called um all right, Matthew 7, 7 said, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Right? And then I guess it's talking about prayer, right? And prayer and opening doors. And I put down breakthrough comes when you pray through. Asking, seeking, and knocking. Some people don't know how to pray through because they're through praying. There's a persistence in prayer. Pray until something happens. That one's good. Pray until something happens. Don't stop. God does nothing but answer your prayer. God is waiting on you. Prayer is not optional. It is essential. It's an absolute necessity. We need to pray. We need to do what the Bible says. Pray without ceasing. All day long, we should be talking to God. And don't limit yourself to prayer by saying, Oh, I'm only going to do it when my eyes are closed and I'm on my knees. Prayer is persistent prayers and requires perseverance. James 1, chapter 1, 6 through 8 says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. But when you ask, okay, I actually wrote it to my notes. I don't know why I went to the Bible, but... The more I push in prayer, the more my heart aligns with God. Prayer requires faith. Prayer requires diligence. When we pray, we are knocking on doors to open. What's the crazy thought is we encounter doors every day in our lives. We encounter doors every day in our lives, right? So what do doors do? What is the significance of a door? Couple things. Doors separate one thing from another. Doors provide access to another space. Doors can also restrict access. Doors can be locked. They can be unlocked. Doors allow certain things in and they also keep certain things out. When we knock on the doors in prayer, we are praying for God to open them. Obviously, then why would you be knocking on the door? You are knocking on the door because you are believing that whatever is next, next to that behind that door is God's will for your life. And we're not asking God to open it. Okay, I don't know what I wrote at that part. <laughs> we're told to ask, then seek, then knock, and then God will open the doors in our life. But let me just caution you just for a second. Some doors you open are not from God. Some doors are easy to open, but hard to close. Romans 8, chapter 8, 26 to 7 says, then Jesus said to them, Suppose, oh, this one's good. Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight. Oh, then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up, and give you the bread because of because of friendship what all right and give you the bread because of friendship 
yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up. With your continuous knocking, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, keep knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Um, I have two verses, I mean, I have two ch chapters and verses down here, but... For the people in the chat, what's the, what's the scriptures that you just read? Um, that scripture is Romans chapter 8, from 26 to 27. Um, just that one? And the other one? Um, James chapter one, six through eight, just that one. <laughs> and then Matthew chapter seven, verse seven. Got all of them. Um, the ones I'm about to read is going to be a Luke chapter 11, five through 10. Luke 11, five through 10. And then Colossians, Colossians, Colossians <laughs> four. Chapter four, verse two. Let me bring up Luke. Oh my gosh, my neck is broke. But I think that that persistence, you see how like the the family was like, I, I can't get up. My family are sleeping. But when you surely keep knocking, eventually he's gonna answer so you can go. So don't stop knocking. But anyways, hold on. Luke eleven five. Ten. That's what I just read. What? Hold on. Romans. The one was Romans eight. Okay, what was the Colossians one again? Chapter four, four verse two. Weird. Luke. I like how it's already in my search history. Oh, the Colossians was devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. That was. Okay, I'm missing a verse because I know I had another verse, but I don't know where it is. Let me see. But yeah, that was kind of like my message. That's it about open doors and closed doors and certain doors and how we encounter doors every day in our life. No, that, was, that, was, that was good. That was definitely necessary for everybody to understand, especially from the portion where. What is God keeping from you? What is God protecting you from that restricted access? Because there's things that we have restricted access to and there's things that we have access to. And honestly, we want to understand both. We want to understand both. What is what is what is God trying to restrict us from in this season of our life for the purpose of our protection? What is God trying to keep out from our temple? What is God trying to keep out of our mind? It's very important for y'all to understand that you only want to go through the doors that God is calling you to go through. Truly. Truly. You don't want to go through no doors that's going to lead you into a trap. You don't want to go through no doors that's going to lead you into sin. You don't want to go through no doors like that. So y'all better get with the program and get right. And too, you know, you got to be mindful also that you know some of these doors like you you know you close them but you don't lock them fully because you aren't ready to fully mm -hmm. surrender that whatever that is and so yep. if it's unlocked anybody can come into your house and who's mm -hmm. gonna come into that house the enemy sin whatever that thing is and then you just let them back in willingly so don't do that so 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 figure out the same way that you're knocking towards God, ask him to reveal the other doors that may be open that you don't know are still open. What are they? How can I close them? Close them for me. Help me if they're, you know, if, if it's a stronghold, if it's a trauma, if it's a, if, if, if there, there's something there that's keeping you. 
especially if there's something that's keeping you from reading the word. Every time you try to go to pick up your Bible, your you know, something is is in your mind saying, mm, no, I don't got time. I got this or I got that or I got this or that. That's a problem because something is keeping you from getting your word. And it's not just, you know, like having that discipline, but there's something else that is not allowing you or not giving you that earnest feeling that you need to get in the actual word because it's not just a book it's not just a bible it's alive it speaks to you every single time you open it every single time you every single time you open the word it talks back why because the word is god living. the word is the living water the the the, the word was made human and crucified you're talking to god every time you open that bible even if it's a scripture even if it's just something you're holding like christ is holding your hands when you open that word christ is with you when you open that word he sees you even if it's hard for you to read even if you don't understand it pray before you read but pick it up it's not a decoration it's not something to be played with. Any question you have, I guarantee you, promise, bottom line, he has given us the, like, literal, literal blueprint to eternal life, happiness on earth right now, and eternal life. And so if you don't, yeah, exactly, like, meditate in the word. That's when meditation is okay, if you're meditating in the word. But if you're meditating doing yoga, if you're meditating thinking about, you know, the stars and the universe, that's the enemy. Unless you're meditating on the word of God and letting it sit with you, that's that that that's where 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 the deception comes in and that's where the enemy con likes to confuse people. That's yep. what the enemy likes to use. He took meditating on the word, which is what Christ says in the word is to meditate on the word day and night and turned it into a practice of the world a practice of the universe a practice of false god a practice of yourself thinking that oh if i meditate and visualize what i want in this world it's gonna happen i just have to picture it in my head no you need to be picturing heavenly places you need to be picking up that word and pray before you do so and ask for him to show you what you need to know. You gotta consult with him. You gotta come to the Father and say, Holy Spirit, give me wisdom, give me insight, you know, um, help me read this, you know, like some of these names I can't pronounce. If you can't read the King James Version, I can't read the King James Version. That gets me tongue tied, twisted up, and it's just, it, it's hard. So if that's not the Bible for you, get. A new translation not this however disclaimer this new testament for gen z that these people want to make a joke about calling it you know watering down the word of god that word if you are not mad about that word if you don't bind and rebuke and if you see a preacher laughing about that if you see a preacher in the pulpit talking about it and making a joke on here on tiktok talking about the new Ooh, the new translation for Gen Z, and that doesn't boil your blood because they are disrespecting your God? There is a problem right there. If that'll boil you because you don't disrespect my, disrespect my father, the reason for the translation is for languages, not to completely change the word of God and say, you a snack, no cap, big G, on God, yeah, I saw that. get out of here oh, with that, no. get out of here with no. that, you brutal vipers, no, no. and if I see a preacher, if I see you preaching that word, if I see you, I'm going to call you out in Tomato. church, and if you kick me out of that church, that ain't for me, and if you want to cancel me, and if you want to knock my head off, knock my head off, but I'm standing with the Lord, and on the sword of the spirit, not this watered down yeah. stuff, if you can't get the word it th read the children's bible in there. For you real. That that i still have the children's bible the word. if you can't get gen z you don't need gen z the, the enemy is literally 
right here taking the word of God and making it try to fit into the world. Right. Nobody's talking about it. Why is nobody talking about it? Because you're scared. Because you don't want to get canceled as a preacher. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to look bad. Because you don't want to offend nobody. If you're not offending anybody, you ain't doing your job. And you should not be in that pulpit. Because you are turning people away. And you... is going to hold you accountable for that. That's, he, you don't want his wrath. Hey, and if you're preaching out of that Bible... That boils my blood, and I will call you out every day. Kick me off this live. Kick me off of any live. That New Testament is full on blasphemy. And that writer, if I knew who the who the writer of that is, and these preachers are not calling it a book. They're saying it new translation, New Testament for Gen Z. It is not the translation. Get that out your mouth. Oh, that sorry. I got just got a lot. She's snapping. I ain't going front. I was, I was sorry. Like, oh, <laughs> sorry, 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 man. I just like I, I don't, I don't like that, man. I don't like that. You're not gonna like talk about my God like that. Like, who do you think you are? That's the Most High. Mm -hmm. I know that. Like, I mean, vengeance is His, but I'm in the front lines too. You don't think that I'm gonna pick up my mat? And walk. You don't think I'm going to carry the sword of the spirit? You don't think that, like, I'm going to enlist in this army? You got me messed up. I am a soldier of God. I am a woman mm -hmm. of God. We mm -hmm. are children of God. We ain't mm -hmm. going to defend our father mm -hmm. against men. You mm -hmm. ain't to, if you ain't afraid to lose your life for the word of God and for our father who created us and who gave his life for us, all he asks is for us mm -hmm. to pick up our cross and walk. Just pick it up. He got crucified on it. Mm. Has to pick it up. <laughs> Sorry. You better. Don't yeah. apologize. Don't apologize for that. And Jesus was angry when when the people, the merchants were selling on the temple. He was over there flipping whipping tables, people. Flipping tables. You know what I'm saying? Flipping tables, whipping That's people. what I feel like. I feel you know like going saying? up in here and flipping up those balls. Like, ooh. You should. Up in that pulpit, taking that mic and say, "All y'all need to dip now. Like this is not for you. You need to get out of here." Sad. Amen. Amen. I, I, I came in here at a at a, at a very good time. You, you ladies, is it's hot right now. It's hot in this in this live. <laughs> but what's up, everybody? How y'all doing, man? What up, bro? Last night. And in the presence after the work, man, resting in fellowship and now. That's what's up. That's what's up. How's everybody's night going? Good. Cool. Good. Cool. 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 What, what was the word today? So hopefully, hopefully it might I might not be redundant. I'm, I'll give you guys something. I know. You God, bro, bro, listen. Because every time I ask, <laughs> what was the word? You're like, mm. whatever word. God has put on your heart, on your heart, say it, bro. Regardless of what was preached tonight. All right. This, Regardless. this one, this one has been, honestly, the last couple of days has been weighing very much on my heart. I actually, um, I actually had to like really confess and like, like vent this out to one of my other brothers in Christ today. Cause like I got extremely emotional about it because, um, I think that God has been really calling me to to understand the great divide amongst everyone. And people don't realize how subtle the enemy is dividing his dividing the people. Like there's division mm -hmm. amongst even the children of God. And it's scary to see the the division amongst the children of God because we're so caught on arguing doctrine and arguing theology and 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 not actually living the word of god but trying to debate the word of god and and in and, 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 and in its essence it's like we all ultimately believe in the same thing and we're so quick to point out what someone is not doing but we're not looking ourselves in the mirror and that, and telling ourselves are we exuberating the fruits of the spirit are we gentle are we kind are we loving are we patient are we exuberating peace and joy? You know, are we are are we are we uh, spreading the gospel the right way? Are we are we 
Are we making disciples? You know, and I and I and I urge a lot of people who come across some of these individuals who are weaponizing the Bible. Because what happens is when someone who's intellectually sound and starts to read the Bible and, 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 and consumes the Bible, they now become equipped with quote unquote what we call as intellectual and spiritual powers, right? They 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 start to get this 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 they think that they have this supernatural knowledge when they really are just you were smart before you read the Bible. Now you're using the Bible as a form of I'm going to manipulate it in, in the form of a spirituality or I, I feel like I can weaponize it against people. Now, that's that's something that's been weigh, weighing heavy on my, on my heart because I've been in a lot of rooms in these TikTok chats and I see how the division the is being so widely uh, scattered between people and not everyone's called to be a teacher. Not everyone's called to be a, a preacher or a pastor, but in some form of some way, we should be discipling people. We should be trying to teach people. We should be trying to speak life into people. We should be trying to help people turn from their wicked ways because the Bible st tells a story about the, how the fall of man and then how it was a great redemption story when we got Jesus Christ coming in here to redeem us all. And it's like, we, we, we go away. We go away from what the essence of the Bible is. We go away from the essence of what God wants. He wants he wants us to live in the kingdom of God. It's a, it's a foreshadowing of, of the kingdom of God coming here down to earth and we're going to walk with Jesus Christ. And a lot of people, oh, they, they get away from what that actually means and we, we tend to argue. We tend to argue with each other. We tend to argue with other people of other religions instead of just showing the fruits of the spirit, instead of walking by faith and not by sight, instead of actually exuberating the things of the spirit of God. And we and, and 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 don't get me wrong. It's it's okay to show emotions. It's okay to to be angry. It's okay to 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 feel sad. These are emotions. We're human. We're gonna have that. Jesus was human. He was fully human and fully God. He had human emotions. He died. He he cried when Lazarus died. He cried when John the Baptist died. He he was angry when he saw people defaming deframing his father's temple. Like these are things that. That he felt, he felt the human emotions, but he also taught us and showed us how to live a life. Be last, not first. Serve others. Be kind. Don't, don't, it, and I, I, I see this thing when we say, when, when Jesus talks about if someone slaps you or hurts you, turn the other cheek, right? Well, it's really a more of a, if you get disrespected, there's certain conversations, certain things that you don't even have to participate in. We can avoid idle conversations that that lead nowhere, and I feel like nowadays we have this um, we have this uh, this notion of like, oh, if we don't agree, um, then we can't be friends. Like, no, well, well, we can. We can find common ground if we believe in the same thing. Then we should all try to work together to 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 come to a common understanding and and actually do work for the kingdom of God instead of causing more division by our own minds and our own intellectual uh, stimulate our, our own intellectual understanding of the Bible. And that's why I tell people: read the Bible, pray on it, meditate on it, pray before you re before you read it. Ask God to really give you revelation. And I don't mean that little two minute prayer before like some small, like nah, really, really isolate yourself. Turn your phone off. Close yourself off in a room. Really pray. Ask God, God, before I read your word, show me some things that I need to understand in this passage. Show me some things that I need to learn about you in this word, in, in the Bible, in your word. Then consume the Bible, consume as much as you can. And then after that, pray on it, meditate on it. God, what is it that you're trying to reveal to me in this word? What is it that you're trying to reveal to me through this story that I just read? What is it that you want me to know about you in this passage? You might not get the answer right then and there, but I tell you now, if you pray on it, you'll start to see it. If you keep studying that same passage, you may get new revelation, new understanding, new confirmation anytime you read that same scripture. Because I know for a fact, I have. There's so many... There's so many scriptures that I've read over and over and over again. And I'm like, yo, I got like 10 different revelations from it. But it all is all working for the goodness and, 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 and the understanding of God. It's all for his glory at the end of the day. But yeah, that, that's, that's kind of like my little my little word right there. It wasn't a little word, bro. It honestly went hand in, it went hand, in hand with what I was covering today. 
when sin comes in and causes a great divide. And you know, this that is the reality of what's of what's taking place today. It's because listen, what caused what caused Lucifer to fall was pride. The reason why there is a battle of doctrine is because there is pride amongst the people. Exactly. It's not supposed to be pride. And the Bible talks about the mystery of iniquity. The mystery of iniquity. It's a mystery. It's the hidden darkness within the darkness. It's, it's the hidden darkness within the light of people. Right? And when sin comes in, it causes a divide. And it's a disconnect from anything that is of God. So what we are experiencing today in the body of Christ is nothing that God originally intended. Nothing that God originally intended. So I'm telling you, everything that God has put in your heart is on part. I mean, it's, 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 it's on point. It's on point. It's very, it's very important for us to understand that there is a divide amongst the church. And God has called us to rise above the divide and be the remnant. So there is no divide. Exactly. That's it. That's really got, what it is. <laughs> do I, our part. I, I, it's um, uh, it comes to the point where we try to put, we try to put God in the box by trying to interpret His word too overzealous. We interpret it way too much than what it needs to be, and it's like, well, if the Bible says He's not the author of confusion, why are we getting confused about what the words are in the Bible? Literally, literally. And it's like there should be no confusion. Why would we have a God that would confuse us if if his if his main goal is to love us and to save us through Christ? I have something to say on that. It's good to have. I have something. I have something to say on that. So what we are what what is going on right now in the body of Christ is we instead of looking at God instead of looking at the word of god as practical application they are trying to complete uh compete with this new age which the new age over spiritualizes everything so when you try to over spiritualize the word you miss out on its practicality of what is supposed to be implemented right now right now and you miss out on the the entire thing and remember when you go to when people are going to the word with their own preconceived ideas concepts and precepts which is you have been they have been taught by somebody these ideas have been taught and poured in and instilled by some something and someone if it's not god's original idea if it's not what god originally wanted then it's very dangerous and you can go around misinterpreting the bible which is why today we covered God's original idea. We we covered God's original idea of what he intended for us to do as the body of Christ, as the children of God. We covered his original idea so we are no longer confused as the body. Amen. That's what's up. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it comes to a point where like, and I, and I thoroughly believe this, um, I have a heart for it and it really, it, I really feel so much like a deep saddened when it comes to the, like the division, like sometimes I'll end up just, just watching people just quarrel for like, for no reason. And it's like, you idolize your own intellectual mindset. And it's just like, you got to relinquish that. You got to relinquish your own understanding. You got to just look at the words that are on that paper that were written for you to just plainly understand it and meditate on it and then involve it in your life. A apply it to your life. Live it. Really walk with it. Have it written on your heart. And a lot of us really don't. And, and, and what happens is the same person that is not moving with God, right? I'm, and I won't, and I can't speak on people who are not moving with God, right? It's a simple fact that like if, if their life doesn't reflect that, then are they really living with God? Are they really living the words that are in that Bible? If 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 if, if you're so quick to anger, if you're so it would be a different story if the anger that you're dealing with is something that you're trying to work on and you are you're actively working on that. If you catch yourself, if you're actively turning away from being quick to anger, you know, there's a lot of things that you can practically work on as a human being. But if the if you're quick to anger to argue about the Bible, then that's 
that's something that really needs to be checked. You know, because a lot of times we don't allow we don't allow righteous judgment to come into play. Like, let's just be let's just let's let's just be like this. Let's open it up. Kaika, if you saw me talking about the Bible in an argumentative way, you as my brother in Christ, you are at liberty to tell me, my brother, there's a way you can deliver that message better. Right. Yes. There's a way that you can communicate that better. It's not what you're saying. It's not it's, it's not what you're saying is wrong is how you're saying it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you also that... have to understand that we have platforms now. And with these platforms, there are people who are probably watching, people who are maybe new to the faith, people who don't even have a faith. And if they come along the process and they come along these platforms and they come along seeing fellow Christians arguing with each other, what, did that, what does that speak about the body of Christ? How can that someone be so literally... willing to join the body of Christ if the, if the body of Christ is arguing amongst each other? When the body of Christ don't even have the same uh, 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 ideologies and the same doctrine and the same theology. Like, how does that work? How does that come together? It doesn't. Like, I was literally, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was literally in a live today where we were talking about the word and like giving like good word. I saw someone in the comments who was struggling with, you know, how I used to struggle from my past as a non-believer against God, asking all these questions. And then I was like, you know, I was like, hold on for like for a second, let's stop the live and let's talk to this person because he's asking questions about being saved. Then somebody else hopped on to get on the panel and then a whole argument like came up and then the discussion completely changed and there was there was we weren't addressing that person and i had to say hold up hold up hold up like you are we are missing an opportunity right now because y'all want to argue so i had to hop off and i messaged that person directly and i said hey brother i've been you like you know i've been where you're at i'm sorry like do you have any questions and i was able to contact him get his information and i said here's my number man just talk to me like let's just like it, you know what i mean like and it's and as a non-believer like him seeing that is what made him leave the live and i had to find him and i and i had to find him and i had to sit there and tell them like yo there is someone in the live like y'all just missed an opportunity to save someone who was actually looking for answers but you guys wanted to divide the word and let somebody else in and argue when about like no this is not the right way to do it this is not the right way to do it send this man up he's asking how do i get saved what asking questions about jesus literally and so I like I removed myself because I'm like, y'all like, you know what? Y'all not going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I had to like go down to that person in particular. And it's like because I know what it's like when as an unbeliever coming in here and seeing that. How are you supposed to believe? How are you supposed to trust if, if we can't get it together and we're show, we show that we're arguing and we don't come with love and we just blatantly ignore someone? who is sitting there asking to be saved. And instead of taking that opportunity to say, Jesus Christ, and we all agreed it was Christ alone, but instead somebody had to come up there and talk about baptism. No, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about Christ. And did you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Do you want to? Do you have any questions about that? That's what should have had the conversation. And so that's when I had to speak to him directly. And like, that is the problem. That is the problem that we're too focused on arguing about like scripture and this and that and that. And like, dude, if we're followers of Christ, that's it. We're brothers and sisters. And that should be the the focus here is like, we're all meant to be disciples. He didn't just say you have to have this title. He didn't say you have to have this. He didn't say that. No, we are all meant to share the good news. Exactly. Amen. And it pushes people away. And that's what pushed me away for such a long time, too. That's what made it hard for me, too, to come to Christ. 
And now that I have, it's like when I see that, I feel just like, you know, it's like, and and you know what? And, and thank you for bringing up that 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 quick to anger thing, because then that just checked me, because I'm like, hmm, was I too quick to like with this? You know, with this, am I getting too, you know, upset about this? Like, you know, about calling people out on their stuff. But then it's like, no, I shouldn't be, because it's like, I know what it's like to be on the other side. But is that a personal thing? So now that's something that I gotta go to God with. You know, now I got to go to God with about that and say, what is that? Is that because I'm emotional about my past and I feel empathy towards them? Or are you telling me that I need to go to them specifically? You know, so thank you for for, for bringing that up because that put, you know, kind of put me in check and made me think like, you know, quick to anger about stuff like that because when I see the division, it does upset me and so you know it's that is that righteous anger or is that my own issue inside that i'm seeing now as a christian that you know that 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 uh that i didn't have in the past so so i appreciate you for for saying that that was good no, of course, of course. And I thank you. I wanted to just point out, I know probably Kaika was going to point it out, but thank you for being obedient, for literally leading in that time and just reaching out. Yes. Reaching out to that individual because maybe it was really up to you to be the one to actually go ahead and do that. You know, that could have been all for the glory of God in itself. Maybe it was it was meant for that. We will never know, but the end goal was the same, and you and you and you went and helped out, and you went and tried to save a brother, you know. So I thank you for that. Amen. All think- glory goes to God, and I, you know, and I don't ever want to like boast, and I, you know, and and I wasn't gonna even like bring it up because like I don't want like what I do in private with like I don't want you know don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing like I don't want to get the glory for for that for the clout for that like I didn't do that the only reason why I brought it up is because of you know the conversation is that it was like relevant so I even almost like feel bad bringing it up because I don't want it to you know come off a certain way like I'm you know just like uh that I think highly of myself I don't you know, oh no, no! You should just, boast in Jesus. I, you should boast in the Lord. Boast really? in the Lord. I was just saying that today. Boast in the Lord. That if you can boast while you while you were in the world, you should boast while you with God. Like that's something to be proud of because what that does is that gives everyone everyone another outlook and and viewpoint on that, and they might take the next step to do that if they're in the same situation like that. Yes. There's an argument going on. If there's a time to save a soul, if there's, if there's a time to water a seed that has been planted, because that's what it was. It was a seed that was planted in that, in that brother. He was looking for answers, and you just was the water. You was the water to water him at that point in time, and it was ordered by God to make sure that you was the one that was going to order him right then and there. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you for that. For for saying that, because you know, like, like I question, you know, like myself even sometimes, because you know, like I, I feel almost, oh, I don't know how to say, it. because of where I came from and where I am now, I don't ever, I like, I don't feel like I ever want to disrespect God by taking credit for it so I often you know like I don't want anyone to ever think that it's you know uh that it's me and so I have trouble trying to you know word it in a way where I give glory to God you know for for something like that but you're right that you know if you are letting you know somebody know I guess it could encourage someone but you know I still have to learn how to apply that I guess so 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 thank you thank you for that to that revelation that's something that I need to uh to to ask God about that I wanna um I wanna say is righteous anger is not a bad thing even God 
when G it was a righteous anger that Jesus had to flip the tables when he's seen things that are unjust. And that's important for us to understand as believers is, is there is a way to deliver the righteous anger. But righteous anger, we should be we should be mad at discord. We should truly we should not be accepting discord. We should not be accepting, especially amongst the body of Christ. There has to be a level where we are holding our, ourselves accountable. You are in that position to hold them accountable. Like, listen, bro, y'all is focusing on the wrong thing right now. Y'all is majoring over some minor things when there's something that is very important. Somebody's soul is at stake here, and you guys want a doctrine of who is right and who is wrong. There's none that is greater amongst the body. Remember when the disciples were sitting here like, well, Jesus, who's the greater one? I'm greater than this. I'm greater than that. Right? Who, who's the greatest disciple? It don't matter. All y'all is beneath. There is no comparison. Same thing. That's how I see that. That's how I see these pointless arguments is they're trying to see who is better than who. Who has the, the, the greater of the knowledge? It don't matter about that. So don't ever apologize for your righteous anger, just like you had the righteous anger towards the, the Gen Z book of the Bible that they are making. So, I mean, righteous anger is a real thing. We should, we should not, we should, we should be angry at discord. We should be angry at wickedness and sin. And honestly, we should, what we are angry at is because we see the enemy working. We see the enemy working when the body of Christ is not seeing the enemy. Like, how do you not see the enemy working between you guys right now? Literally using you guys. Using you guys to go back and forth on this public platform that everybody is looking at. Literally. It's it's like Pharisees. Like, it's the Pharisees just arguing with each other all over again. Literally, just on the internet. <laughs> It's sad. It's sad because I literally seen a video today. It's crazy that you brought that up, but I literally seen a video today of somebody who was talking about how there's so much discord on the church today. There's so much discord uh, on this app between the body of Christ. And really, they were talking about content creators. So much discord between content creators. And um, the problem is that she brought up, which was very good, was the influence that they had mm. the influence they had because people feel that the people that are following them like think about it the amount of followers that people feel they feel entitled yes to oh you about to talk about what that. they're saying and they can be spitting pure foolishness bro foolishness just coming out their mouth coming out their mouth and they can still get followers because the crazy thing is, the only way that you are going to get followers if is if somebody is in agreement with what you are saying. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you can be saying completely something completely wrong, and somebody's like, "Oh my gosh, that's true!" Like I'm feeling that right now. Like uh, follow. Yep. And you're gonna get the all the ones that think just like that person. They're all, they're all gonna follow, and then what happens? You're gonna be leading them astray. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And nowadays, like like nowadays, followers is, followers are justifying people's ideas and keeping them in that in that in that loop of a wrong ideology. And see, this is and this is why the power of I ideas are so important. Ideas are so important. When Jesus said, when Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven at, is at hand. When Jesus, that was the first thing Jesus said in his public ministry. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what he is telling them is he's saying, listen, you have the wrong ideas. You have the wrong concepts of everything you believe to be true. You need to turn away from those and accept what I have for you. Because what you have been looking for is finally here. And what you got ain't it. And this is why repentance is so important. Repentance. It's a, it's a full change of mind. It's a full change of thinking. You have to literally renew your mind by the washing of the word. Most people aren't renewed yet completely. And I don't hear that on here very often either, like people talking about 
repentance being the key or or, 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 or like actual like word it's debating the word against itself and Thank the you. word doesn't contradict the word the word is word the word is god and he was made human period point blank and so you're sitting here like debating this or that and the other and it's like it's it's like you're you're worried about the amount of followers you don't want to offend people you don't want to do this and that you got you know like you're held at a higher standard people are watching you don't know who's in there you know there's all these lives prove me wrong that jesus doesn't exist you know that that god is real prove me wrong and then you're yelling at non-believers when you could be saving non-believers and there's four five six hundred people in there and you're saying prove me wrong why are you inviting the enemy that opportunity when yep, you should you be saying doors. when you could be saying i'm going to show you how christ is real and how christ has made a way and why this is the word why this is the truth but instead to get followers to get you know clout to get your reward that you've received on earth you got it right there and you're leading people astray and you're making like people look foolish you're making christianity look foolish you're making christ look foolish you're making like our brothers and sisters look foolish because if we are arguing and when it's just like, how can anybody come? How could anybody want to want to, you know, feel like they can trust us if we don't even trust each other? Mm. You know, it, it's, 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 it's dangerous. Yeah. Like souls are at stakes here and stakes. So <laughs> souls are at stake here. And like, it just it needs to be taken more seriously and it's just it's not you know like and i mean the internet is i mean this is like i mean it's it's, it's dangerous anybody com can come up here and say whatever they want whatever they want and they and, and they forget about the truth the bottom line that you're going to be held accountable for who you are shepherding for mm -hmm. who you are calling for who you are discipling you're held at a higher standard. And if you're boasting for yourself and you're arguing, you know, a divided house cannot stand. And right now we are divided. Yep. We are divided. And the enemy is over here having a field day being bold. And so why aren't we being bold and coming together as brothers and sisters in Christ up against that? Like, where is that? You know, and, you know what stood and, out to me while you were saying all of that? And it's mm -hmm. so crazy because we we forget the real, just like you said, repentance, right? But we forget the real reason why Jesus came. And and it's, and it's evident, like, in his teachings, these people who we're speaking about are the same people that he talks about in Matthew 21. And he's like, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But he who does the will of the Father in heaven, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? Then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you who practice lawlessness. And it's like these individuals are practicing this type of lawless thing with the Bible and is dividing the body of Christ. And it's and 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 it and it, it doesn't lead to any salvation, it doesn't lead to any repentance, it doesn't lead to any anybody being watered, no seeds being planted, just more division and more division. And I and I and I love I love the the space that Kaika has created, because what this does is it shows the real true essence of what God is actually working. It shows the true essence of what Christ followers should be doing. Yes, we are all broken. We all fall short of glory, but 
we have a we have the ultimate redeemer who's done so many different things in our lives that we have no choice but to turn to him we have no choice but to follow god and relinquish our own understandings repent from our old ways and literally just look to jesus because a lot of the times we have the same intellect that we used in the world with being pride. We would try to prove people wrong in the world, but now people think that they're spiritual and they believe in the Bible, but it's the same thing. It goes back to Corinthians. I think it's like 1 Corinthians uh, verse 2. No, chapter 2, verse 17. Am I tripping on that? You guys know what I'm talking about? What's the verse? 1 uh, Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 17. I think 16 and 17. What is the what, what is the words of the verse? I got you. I got you. I'm about to look it up. Because uh, then this 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 also makes me question those who who claim to be spiritual, who claim to have the spirit. Give me a minute. Uh Oh, here we go. I got it. It says, it says, um, oh, it's actually 13. So it says, um, when we tell you these things, we don't use the words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak the words given to us by the spirit, using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive those these truths from the, the God, from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them. To them, they aren't they won't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Right. So you can read papers on the word, but if you're not really filled with the spirit and you're not using the spirit to discern what the word is, then it's only just going to be words as a regular book to you. Why you think these atheists be saying they be reading the whole Bible and don't even still know God? Because they, they try to weaponize it. They don't. They didn't understand. They didn't understand the true meaning because they don't have the Holy Spirit to give them that understanding. It's crazy because as you were speaking on this, on these topics, one thing that God was bringing up was He was asking like, why does the body in Christ go back and forth? Why why would they go back and forth? And um, one thing that God brought up to me is controversy gets the most views. Oh, for sure. So, so where there is controversy, you're going to have the most view count. Yep. And this is what people are chasing. I'm telling you, people are chasing clout. Clout mm -hmm. is a, what is it? Glory and attention. Yep. That's what they're trying. They're trying to be glorified. They want the attention. They're not thinking this platform is for God. This pla God has blessed me with this platform. No, they're thinking, how can I get the most views? Mm -hmm. I, since I wondered, I wondered, I'm like, dang, I look at my content, I'd be like, my content is fire, bro. I'd be really giving gems and it don't be going nowhere but 10 to 20 to 20,000 views, which 20 to 20,000 views is good. But still to my okay. follower, to my follower to view ratio is just off. And I'm just like, okay, but then. But then I see I see other people's views. I'm looking at this video. I'm sitting here like, this video got two hundred thousand views, and they're doing nothing, nothing, or it wasn't to the magnitude of what I'd be saying. I'd just be like, why is this guy? Why is this guy? And then I see the creator go live, and they have a panel just like this, just like this. And what I'm noticing is how what the what the host does they create the environment so if the host ain't truly locked in the people ain't gonna truly be locked in see people talking about god but at the same time sitting here playing fortnite talking mm. about mm. talking about god not locking in about god but sitting here still being distracted by the world and playing fortnite mm -hmm. it's like a pastime for them it's more, it's more like it's more like it, it, yeah, it's the pet yes actually yes the pastime and also it's, it's like, like i have i have i have this platform i have this platform i might as well just use it 
because why not? I have this platform. It's going to increase my views. And then say, God is doing a great thing over here. Beautiful thing over here. And I'm telling you, what I see today is it's, it's crazy because even today, I see a lot of people build a platform, right? And then all of a sudden, they're an artist. All of a sudden, they're an artist. All of a sudden, they just did promoting, 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 promoting all their stuff about them, about them, about them, about them. And I begin to see like, so there's nothing wrong with, you know, promoting the gift that God has given you. But then when you listen to some of the music, some of it is not even substance. Because even on my page, I don't even promote my music. Most people come to my page and they be like, you do music? Yeah, I do. But that's not the purpose of this platform. There has to be, there has to be purpose of the platform. There has to be intention of why you are doing what you are doing. Yep. So it is, it is, it is interesting, bro. It is interesting. Mm -hmm. I make, I make the same argument because I mean, listen, I got, I, I've gotten a lot of invites on certain things and certain panels because they see my following and believe it or not, I had more following before I came to Christ and I had the same following for about almost three years now. And I, and I could have continued to grow it in the, in the worldly way, but I chose not to, I chose, I chose my platform to go dormant because what happens is it doesn't allow for God to really do real work. Right. I'm about to say that. Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow, cause if I have all the distractions of the world and I've have all these people trying to, uh, like comment, tag me and create videos and, and, and collaborate with me while I'm living in the world, it won't, I won't be able to really see God's true full essence at work. And mm -hmm. God's true full essence at work is going to be done with inside me first. And then whatever is inside me is going to then come out and overflow. Because yep. that's where the fruits is going to be. The fruits is going to be the overflow. And you'll see that in my walk. You see that in my life, how I talk, how I operate, who I'm around, who I surround myself with. All of the things that are around my life will, will suddenly change. My desires of the world won't be the same as my desires for God. And when I started to see this, this division, I'll be honest with you. A part of me wanted to act out in pride myself and call out some of these things. But I also had to understand well, what was the what, what, what's the actual real reason I want to come out on this platform? What's the real reason why I want to go on there? It's because I know my platform is big and I know I can make an impact on that. Or do I really want to go on there and just prove this person wrong because I know they're wrong? And it's really all about the intent that matters because my heart needs to be aligned with the word of God. And if it's not, there's no reason for me to be trying to debate anybody unless I'm really trying to get clarity for them to help them understand. And the one thing that that strikes me a lot is that the words are not written on our heart. And as I'm speaking, Matthew starts to come up to me and I have to pull it up real quick because it says, um, we talk, we, we, we talk about the division but we don't talk enough about repentance and faith. And we talk about the intent in our content, but none of it leads to actual real salvation, real repentance, real faith being, be, being built up. And that's because no one has allowed themselves to pour out what the world has poured into them mm -hmm. and make room for what God has to pour into, into them. And I look at this verse and I'm looking at Matthew chapter 18, verse three, and it says, uh, it's the red letter. So, you know, you know, Jesus is about to talk that talk. He says, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. And it talks about, we have to have childlike faith. We have to have the faith that uh, the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. We have to really think that God is immeasurable. He can do all things. And, 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 and we don't relinquish the, 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 the full weight of what we, what we think of ourselves. We, we still have this cardinal mindset and we don't lead by faith. We lead a lot by sight.
Because what happens is when you start to lead by sight, you start to get the pride of life in you. You start to see the numbers go up. You start to see the clicks go up. You start to see all of these things in the world go up. And we start to what? We start to thank God when in actuality, you can get you can get blessed by the devil too without even understanding. You just came into agreement with something that he wanted you to come into agreement with a long time ago. It came in the form of a deception. You probably acted out of pride one bit, and it got it may, maybe it got a little bit more of a click, or 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 you felt right righteous to correct somebody out of your own selfish intent. And now what happens is you now let that stuff fuel, and and now every time you get into that same repetitive mindset where you feel like you need to righteously correct someone, it comes it gets worse every time after that, every time after that, every time after that, and now. You're lost into the sauce. You're, you're lost back into uh, 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 the pride of life. You lost into being prideful to individuals that you didn't even realize it when it actually started. You didn't even catch it when you first was prideful in the first place and you didn't stop it from, from continuing. So I, I, I see it and, 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 it, and it does frustrate me. It does frustrate me to the, to the most because it's like, it's a righteous anger. And it's just like, what are we actually trying to accomplish here? These questions are so much, so much uh, uh, weighing heavy on me. But then I start to realize that those who have ears to listen will understand. And we have to do our job and we have to just continue to just seek the Lord in our own presence. And, you know, God will put the people around us to go ahead and water and and, and be discipled and make discipleship. And it's just, it, it sucks. It sucks that we have to go through this. But at the end of the day, it, it, it will all work in the glory. Not everyone may make it up into heaven. And that's the, that's the one thing that does suck but it's like at the end of the day it's it, it's reality it's it's what what's what will happen yep literally it's part of when sin comes in man when sin comes in there's there's going to be a disconnect yep there's, there's going to be a disconnect bro and i think it's just us understanding like and this is why i came to the point in my walk and i was like you know what i don't care what other people are doing i really don't i'm here for what god has me doing if I was looking at what other people doing, I'm getting distracted. Yep. So I don't care about what videos is going viral. I don't care about none of that. The videos that I feel on my heart to post, I'm going to post. The videos that God calls me to do, I'm going to do. How God tells me to go live, how he tells me to deliver, deliver it, I'm going to do it. And if it reaches 5,000 people, I just would think about it like this. Man, if there was 5,000 people in this room right now, bro, that's an impact. If it reaches 10,000 people, I think about, dang, if there's 10,000 people in this room right now, that's an impact. If it reaches 1,000. If it reaches know, one. If it reaches one. That's what I'm saying. As people long as... Understand how big 100 people is in one room. That's a lot of people. For real. Yeah, as long we as... We just talked about this the other day, Kaika, remember? Yeah. <laughs> 100 people in the room. That's a lot of people if you see For that. For real. For real. As long as we are reaching... That's all that matters. All that matters. We are reaching the heart of man. That's the will of God right there. For real. That's, that's all he wants us to do is go into the pig's pen, extend the hand and say, hey, look, you don't have to stay dirty if you don't want to. You Ooh. don't have to stay there. You Ooh, that was good. That was good. That I'm was good. <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you, a lot of people would rather stay in the palace and say, well, God, you, you done bless me with this. You done bless me with this. And God is saying, bro, if you don't get out the palace and go, go get your brothers and sisters that is in the pig pen. I don't care what I've, I've already given you. It's time for you to use what I have given you to go into the pig's pen and bring the people out, the children out. But then at, at, the, at the same time, your relationship with God is supposed to withstand the pig's pen. See, not be tainted. You're supposed to go into these environments and not be tainted by the environment. You're Ooh, supposed to be that's able to that's stand, stand in these places. Yep, your face should not be wavered. Mm -hmm. Most people's faith are wavered, though. That's the crazy part. Yep. <laughs> prepped up if you don't have the full armor of God. Yep. So if that's you don't got the word written on your heart, your faith can definitely be wavered. That's how I approach social media now. I say, you know what? I don't care about how many views I get, bro. I'm just going to post. I'm going to post as long as I posted, as long as I went live, fellowship with the people, purpose was done for the day. <laughs> for the day. Tomorrow got his own purpose. So as long as I'm focusing in the moment, making the, uh -huh. the daily impacts, that's all that matters to me, bro. That's literally all that matters, bro. For Jeez. real. For real. Today has enough worries in itself, but 
That's good, y'all. That's really good. It's a blessing, too, because, like, yeah. when you get on here, you, you're you able to, like, like, you are with, you know, equally yoked people who will also safely, like, use, like, point out things, like, or, or you might hear something, like, while you're up here, you're like, wait a second, maybe I need correction in that, and I didn't see that. And I'm over here talking about this and that, but maybe there's something that I didn't see in myself. And then you, I mean, you, you grow from that. That's a gift, you know, to be able to have these conversations in the right place with the right people, you know, and, you know, we each are able to bring different insight together. And then it's like, wait a second, that might be a correction that I needed in myself. Am I being boastful? Am I quick to anger? Am I doing that? You know, be, like, because when you said quick to anger, you know, the second thing that I thought in my head was road rage. Yep, that's, I, I ha that's something I have to constantly, like, repent while I'm driving literally I'm like Jesus man why did I do that again and I keep like what is it that why do I get behind the wheel and I cannot control myself you know and then I got a sticker in the back of my car that says do you follow Jesus this close but yet you honk at me and I'll put it in park like come on like I'm like petty like why does this like like what is that like why does that like, so, bug true. Me so much you know and so it's like as soon as you said that i was like okay holy spirit correction thank you i needed that and i need to actually like do it instead of like repeating the same thing like i got a bumper sticker that says do you follow jesus is close but i'm putting it in park and making you wait because you honked at me as soon as the light turned green <laughs> like like that's like correction like you know and it's like i'm gonna make you look at my bumper sticker but like that's not the right way to go with it you know what i mean like 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 come on man like i'm better than that and like you just reminded me of that and it's like a safe place where like i feel like i can actually say that and then it's just it's just not i i love how the holy spirit moves where like instantly that thought is just like boom like, did you think about that? Oh, nope, you're right, you're right. No, I definitely agree. I feel like not only are we supposed to be pouring out to people, but getting poured in, because if not, we're going to overwork ourselves. We're going to get tired. And that's why God said it's good to rest too. And that's why it is good to have equally yoked friends, because like I said, it holds you accountable, it uplifts you. It pushes you to dive deeper. And that's why, yeah, I'm so grateful for this too. Amen. Amen. I ain't gonna lie. Great conversation. Great time. <laughs> yes. On on the rest note that she was talking about, I think it's time to go to sleep for all of us. I ain't gonna lie. Thank you. You always keep me up late for my sleep. For real. Like, uh, you need to stay ain't up. nobody like, keeping me up. Y'all chose, 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 chose to be up. Let's not do that. I chose to be up. Getting me black circles. I'm not going to lie. I'm a professional uh, hanger upper. <laughs> so have a good night, y'all. May God bless y'all. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what Y'all be safe now, okay? Be safe. Hey, yeah. Hey, don't even push it. I ain't keep none of y'all here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Y'all choose to be here. So don't get it twisted. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know me. I'm always up. You chose to be here. Now, you better wake up now. You better wake up. All right. <laughs> I'm going to catch y'all tomorrow. Good night. Uh, all right, Auntie. Good night. Thank you for staying and chilling with us tonight. Good night. You have a good morning and night time. Okay, goodbye, Auntie. Love you. <laughs>